What's up, chat? Sorry, I was doing baby bedtime. All right. Yo, the plan for today... We're gonna watch... Uh... All the lore ever. Of Guilty Gear. And then we're gonna watch the Guilty Gear Strive story mode, which apparently... I don't even know if we can. Apparently, this, this, you might need permission. We're just gonna YOLO it, dude. I mean, game's been out a week. What do you want from me? Whoever's, whoever wanted to see it has seen it. You know what I'm saying? So a 20 hour stream? It can't be that, that can't be that much. I know the story mode is like four. There's like four hours of this game. And then, there must be like four to five hours of like YouTube videos we can watch that is like, hey, here's what you missed. Woolies GG Law videos? That's what I was told. Yeah, I was told we could watch Woolies GG Law videos. As long as you comment on the story, it should be fine. Yeah, we'll be talking over it. Shouldn't be an issue. So what's the channel? Is it Wooly? Wooly Guilty Gear. Let's see. Wooly versus. Okay. Plugged my camera last night. I forgot. <laughs> okay. Okay. I thank you, Conroy, for the five gift bombs. Um, all right. <laughs> okay, so it's the Guilty Gear Law Heaven or Hell series, right? That he made with five videos, and they're all 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, cool. I might, do you think I'm okay to be in the Guilty Gear Strive category for this? Should be fine, right? Streams of Plus videos have been getting me through stuff isolation. Thank you. No worries, dude. Let me, um, I'm gonna queue this up. I'm gonna go grab some of that fucking cough med shit. And then, uh, and then we can start. Okay, I got it queued up, ready to go. All right, I'll be back in like, uh, I'll be back in like 30 seconds. And we're gonna start with, uh, Woolies Heaven or Hell series. Uh, looks like the total runtime for this stuff 
is like three hours. And then we've got the four hour story mode for Strive. So this is going to be like up nearly eight hours of movie watching. So uh, while I'm getting these meds, make sure you go grab, grab some snacks or something. Uh, this will not be on the test, no. I'm excited though. I've never even looked at Goody Get Law. I, I feel like uh, it would be a cool way to feel more attached to the characters and stuff. So we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll watch it. I've also heard it's a bit of a hot mess in a good way. We're going down the woolly hole. That's right. All right, I'll be back. Can't you see I'm blazing? Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me, I don't need a new Okay, so this is... <clears throat> Alright, Octo told me that I'm good to, uh, to stream this story. I wish Willie would have gotten the series finished before Strife came out, but it's a lot of work, so I can see why it's taking so long. Oh, okay, so... So, is there gonna be, like, a gap that we have to look up elsewhere? <clears throat> is this not gonna be all of it? It's only missing... Rev? Or XRD? XRD. Just Rev stuff? Okay, we can just look that up. Oh, he hurt his back. Does he stream? We're probably like, I'll probably go drop him like a bunch of gift subs after this or something for watching that video on stream. He does stream? Okay, cool, yeah. 
I'm gonna, I'll go give him some gift subs after. <clears throat> Alright, you guys ready? Let's do it, dude. Movie time. Get cozy. I I don't have... Get a little blanket or something. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, we're ready. Guilty Gear is a badass, beloved fighting game series that's been keeping it metal since 1998. The gameplay, music, characters, and album cover stages are blazing with style that can be best described as... Heavy, does it? Over the years, each new game gave us a glimpse into its world. But if you're like me, at some point you probably had this moment. <laughs> this is the coolest shit I've ever seen. I have no idea what's going on. Nope, it's not just you. With the newest game Guilty Gear Strive just around the corner, the desire to catch up on the lore before the next chapter begins is real. There is a crazy amount of things happening in this story, in so many bits and pieces. I have no idea who like most of these movies, characters are. Manga, light novels, drama CDs, and yes, even pachinko machines. That it's an almost unreasonable task to put the pieces together. As you know me, I'm a 25 year currency trading veteran. By the you're a fucking idiot, is second. what you're doing. Uh, All right, chat. I'm I'm buying YouTube Premium right now for this. I'm not doing this. How do I buy it? The Pachinko Machine's canon? Oh my god. How do I buy the fucking thing? Purchases and memberships. Here we go. Premium. Learn more. Try it free. Buy. Oh, they give me three. Welcome. You are a YouTube Premium member. Oh, I, I didn't realize it was that easy. Uh, okay. There we go. <clears throat> Where were we? <coughs> Drama CDs, and yes, even pachinko machines, that it's an almost unreasonable task to put the pieces together. Almost. I finally finished. I've done the legwork, and I found that one untranslated overture art book page containing that short story with the one important detail so that you don't have to. I put all my findings together into this timeline of events, double checked it with the lore masters, and triple checked it with that man himself. But before we strive to understand revelations, signs, accent cores, midnight carnivals, and the missing links by your side, we first have to understand how the world came to an end. Welcome to Heaven or Hell. Dude, this video is so well done. This is so well done. Heaven or hell. Get ready, Get ready to, rock. to rock. Mankind has succeeded in achieving the dream of a natural, limitless energy supply. It was the dawn of the age of magic. It was the end of history. 1221 AD, the end of the Fifth Crusade of the Holy Roman Empire. An army of crusaders is massacred after failing to take Jerusalem. One knight almost escapes on horseback, but is hunted and killed with a volley of arrows. Awakening suddenly in a mysterious cage of mirrors and birds of prey, his body is pierced endlessly until he experiences the maximum human pain threshold before blacking out. What the, the knight fuck? reawakens in the world mm -hmm. of the living, reborn in a pool of his own blood, rejected by Valhalla. He finds that he can no longer age and no longer die. 1945 AD. After World War II, the United Nations is founded. 1956 AD. The International Police Force is founded. 1998 AD. A descendant of vampire lineage named Slayer exists in this world as the last of his kind. He creates a secret society known as the Assassin's Syndicate. Its primary goal is to punish those outside of the law and to maintain social order by removal of corrupt leaders. They live by a code. 
自らの生死を臨機分かたず思考の拉致外と置く必殺の意志2つその必殺の意志を形とする練り上げられた技術とその誇り3つ真に戦いを支配するのは意志誇り勝敗、okay. 生死でもなく<笑>基地にあって人を動かし、優位に立って人をとどめる。いいよ。<笑>それがダンディズ。Bro, I literally had, I bought premium. With Ali Alexander, Demi Lovato, Trixie Mattel, and many more. Did this, does this happen even if you buy premium? What the fuck? Code. I'm after refresh the page. Okay. 自らの生死を臨機分かたず思考の拉致外と置く必殺の意志。ファキンスカムデュー。その必殺の意志を形とする練り上げられた技術とその誇り。三つ。真に戦いを支配するのは意志、誇り。Brick made muffins. They carry muffins. I, I'll let you know. 基地にあって人を動かし、優位に立って人をとどめる。それがダンディズム。Nineteen ninety nine AD, the dawn of revival. On December thirty first at midnight, there was concern that a Y two K bug would lead to problems with old computers. What wasn't expected, however, was all technology suddenly becoming erratic for hours, followed by an unknown entity attempting to manifest itself into reality. What was being birthed at this time is unclear, but all of humanity felt the coming of a divine will. Before this god could manifest, however, it suddenly and inexplicably stopped. What the fuck? Stricken with an innate fear that this was a near extinction event, humanity would never trust in technology again. With this sudden technophobia came the decline of civilization. But in its darkest hour, mankind was saved by the arrival of the apostles. Emerging from parts unknown, five powerful mages arrive and bring hope in the form of knowledge. Humanity is introduced to the concept of magic, a limitless, clean. Okay, so <clears throat> everyone's just going about their day, and suddenly, all the technology in the world starts malfunctioning at the same time, and then it just stops. And people get so afraid of technology after this Y two K. I don't really, I don't know what Y two K is. I think that's just from a Will Smith song. Just the year two thousand. It was just the year two thousand. Okay. The year two thousand happened, and all the computers went fucking nuts at the same time. Y2K was the fear that when it hit the 2000, all the computer clocks would mess up. Oh. No, Sam was a Zoomer. I mean, I was a kid. I was a kid, so I wouldn't have known. If anything, you guys are Zoomers because you literally know this. Um, anyway. All right, so this is playing off of the idea that the Y2K thing was real and all technology did stop. And it went fucking crazy. <coughs> and then they were like, oh shit. This nearly ended the world. We have to discard technology. We can't rely on it. And so they threw away technology. And then humanity started to decline. But then Major showed up when you were like, you don't need an iPhone. You need a magic phone. Here's some magic. ...source of energy that can be used to replace old reliance on technology. The apostles spend a decade teaching the ways of magic to all nations through their established organization, God damn it, the Sanctus Maximus, Maximus Populi. Populi. This newly formed global authority helps establish magic infrastructure across the whole world and introduces the magic particle theory, or mana, to the sciences. The structure of magic can be assessed, researched, and practically applied to fuel everyday life. The old way of life can not only be resumed, but surpassed. And thus begins the Age of Magic. The UN formally declares that magic is the new standard and hereby bans all analog technology from being used. What the fuck? Black technology. A concentrated effort to dismantle the remnants of old machinery and computers begins under the authority of the International Police Force. Not all nations are in compliance with the black tech contraband, however as China initially rejects, but later joins. 
India, on the other hand, remains in disagreement and partially withdraws from the UN. Oh shit. The theory, theory of, of magical, magical science. science. As the scientific method can be applied to magical phenomena, the continued study of its nature leads to a breakdown of magic into six known types. Fire, lightning, wind, water, light, and ki. Most human beings are capable of using at least one type. Ki magic is notable in particular, as it is raw energy powered by the spirit of the individual. Though it is the basis for all other types, ki is the least understood and most difficult to use. Ultimately, the research of the apostles results in provision of 660 spells fit for human use. Six are deemed unfit and are thus forbidden. With their work done, the apostles take on a less active role by forming an advisory group known as the Conclave. Eventually, they're no longer seen. Oh yeah, or 666 heard spells. In society. 2014 AD. The Gear Project begins. Originally called the Chat, I was about to say it out loud. That's now, and then I realized it's not. That's a long time ago. It's 2021. Ecosystem Evolution Project. A group of scientists in a certain country under Vince McDonald begin top secret research into genetically altering and evolving humans on a cellular level using the theory of magical science to fuse magic with DNA. Oh, it this could only go well. Through this method, mankind can advance to new heights. Though the country is not explicitly named, it is heavily implied to be the US. Moving forward, of course it is. this assumption will be maintained. Three notable scientists are involved with the project. Frederick Bolsara, Aria Hale, and that man. The three met in college and became best friends. Hang on. Is his name just that man? <clears throat> no? Never something call him until they learn his name. Okay. Sometimes discussing <coughs> philosophy, <coughs> Frederick and Aria fall in love. Though he was originally assigned to research a powerful spell known as Saint Oratorio. Frederick was instead transferred to the Gear Project. 2015 AD. The development of Gear Cell Theory is complete. That man submits his findings to the US government under the conditions that 1. All data must be used peacefully and must not be weaponized. 2. All staff must have their well-being guaranteed. And 3. These conditions must be made known to the public to assure continuing government compliance. 2016 AD. Aria reveals that she's been diagnosed with an incurable illness two years prior. Her case is known as a TP infection and is terminal. Frederick and that man divert all attention to finding a cure or a way to preserve her until one is found. But Aria has accepted her fate and- TP infection? Why didn't she just use wet wipes, dude? Okay, I'm sorry. Stops them. <clears throat> she wants to live out her remaining days with Frederick. He continues searching for the cure, but ultimately fails. 2016 AD. The first gear is created. As the project begins to... So, is a, is a gear a genetically modified human? Is that what we're, the gear, what we're referring to here? The gear project, a gear is a person who is infused with mana at a cellular level at birth. Okay. Show progress. Numerous countries develop an interest in the project. It's a genetically modified life form, not specifically a human. Contributing okay. towards its funding. After promising results are seen on animals, the first major human clinical trial begins. Using stabilized gear cells with human cells, a new life form called a gear is created. It is later learned that the first human gear test subject was in fact Frederick, and that the process was carried out by Batman. Upon his awakening, the entire facility is destroyed. Who's Frederick? <clears throat> Soul. Oh, shit. So Soul was the first gear? And the subject escapes. No wonder he's so fucking broken in Strive. This results in the gear project being shut down, with all files being classified A+. All involved personnel disappear. Shortly after, Frederick invents a gear cell suppressor device, allowing him to seal his true gear form. He develops it into a headband that he can wear at all times, allowing him to appear human. 2026 AD. Wait! So Sol's actually some fucking gross monster who's wearing a Naruto headband that makes him look like a human.
India completes secret construction on an ultra dreadnought class airship. In rejection of the Sanctus Maximus Populi, all those who embrace and preserve technology board the ship and formally declare their independence. Thus, the Imperial Empire. All right, hang on. So a bunch of people were like, "You guys are fucking cracked. You are dumb as fuck." They grab their iPhones and all the technology that's left, and they build a giant ship, and they just fly into the sky with all the technology that's left. Empire I love this. Is formed, but it is done on the backs of a slave underclass. I don't love that part. 2042 AD, the Gear Project revived, with the U.S. economy and political influence in steep decline. The government decides to revisit the gear project, but this time expressly for military purposes. They said not to do that! 2045 AD. That man rejoins the project under an alias. The newly revived project quickly tries to produce a gear as a viable bioweapon. This fails due to an inability to control the gear life form. So hang on. That man is the only person who has successfully made a gear, which he then kept quiet. And then he rejoins the project under an alias just to watch them fail? <clears throat> 2065 yes? AD. The first combat-ready gear is completed. At this point, gear science has progressed significantly. While a gear is not a species in and of itself, many variant classes can be created depending on the species used as a source for the gear conversion process. These variations would be classified years later into types such as regular, toxic, flying, large, and more. Of note are city-sized gears, categorized as Megadeth class, which are capable of mass eradication of large populations. Was that just a dog in goggles inside the mouth of a different creature? Let's just... I'm trying to understand this. Which part of it... Is it just a dog with like three heads and one of them is... Just the other two sit in the big one? It's anime man, don't think about it. <clears throat> okay. A defining trait of gears created based on animal DNA is that they continue to display sentience, and in rare instances, sapience as well. Their behavior is animalistic and instinct driven. In accordance with the intended design, they do not possess their own individual wills or long lifespans. Mass production of militarized gears begins. Shipments are deployed to the nation's allies worldwide. Due to espionage and stolen data, other nations eventually begin producing their own gears as well. During this- Hang on. Alright, so... <laughs> so... They abandon technology, embrace magic, then they start infusing magic into things, and they're like, we should only use this for peace. And then, they just one day are like, actually, we should use this for war. So then, they start doing an arms race where they just infuse random shit with magic and use it as a weapon. And then their allies start doing it and then their enemies start doing it. And so now everyone's just mass producing monsters, question mark? Production process, however, numerous research facilities are sabotaged and destroyed by an unknown assailant. Authorities refer to the perpetrator of these attacks as bad guy. This is the exact thing the guy that made it didn't want to happen, right? He was like, here's my conditions. They were like, you got it, champ. And they were like, make monsters. An army of monsters. No, with, it's peaceful. It's for, it's for peace. <coughs> Some years later, Frederick discovers <clears throat> that man's imminent design plans. He begins recovering information on the Saint Oratorio project and uses it to create an anti-gear weapon known as the Outrage. It functions as a magic amplifier with no predetermined limits on the output of generated mana, potentially leading to global catastrophe if not regulated properly. Due to the danger of this power and the difficulty in handling it himself, Frederick subdivides the weapon into eight components for safety, but deems the creation of this weapon necessary to preemptively prepare for the imminent creation of the first perfect gear. The culmination- Okay, so Frederick, Sol, uh, is like, shit, man. These guys are making all these fucking gears. There's, it's all gas, no brakes. He needs a, he needs a Superman doomsday plan like Batman. 
he has to make a kryptonite weapon. He makes a so he makes a kryptonite weapon that he then breaks into eight pieces for the eventual birth of Superman. Of Batman's research and creations is complete. Command class gear zero one, capable of injecting her programming into all other gear life forms and replacing their lack of will with her own. The power to control all gears. The U.S. government names it Justice. Upon activation, for unclear reasons, Justice loses control and annihilates the entire island nation of Japan. Ah, it's just Mewtwo. It's just Mewtwo. Okay. Suspicions of his involvement in the catastrophe, that man is deemed a war criminal. Clearly designated as a threat to the planet, it is determined that Justice must be destroyed. Wait, so Japan's just gone? Justice just yeeted Japan? <clears throat> they, they played God. They played God. They made Mewtwo. Mewtwo got a headache and Japan's gone. Justice defends herself by rebelliously taking control of all gears and declaring war on humanity. Thus begins the hundred year war known as the Crusades. The sacred order of holy knights is founded by the UN as a force representing no country fighting for all humanity. War is declared on all gears. For the next century, most records of world history and events are lost to war. Hang on, wouldn't she get control of Frederick? In this situation? Though we'll watch, we'll watch. Now, the order comes into possession of the outrage components. Each is henceforth referred to as the eight sacred treasures. Okay, the eight sacred the treasures. The fire seal sword, the thunder seal sword, the zesen wind fans, the flashing fan, the dominator, by cow, an unnamed dagger in Slayer's possession, and an unknown eighth component. A secret of so the original cast of Goethe Gears weapons, I assume. <clears throat> government organization that will eventually be known as the Post-War Administration Bureau is created as a deterrent against criminal activity. They are responsible for creating an international bounty hunting system and work alongside the IPF and less publicly, the Assassin's Guild. Though records of what took place during the Crusades are lost, the names of some notable individuals are known. 2093 AD. Cliff Underson is born in Switzerland. At a young age, he's nearly killed by a gear, but is saved by a mysterious stranger. From that day, he's inspired to do the same for others, and joins the ranks of the Holy Order. Through distinguished service, he earns the position of commander. 2120 AD. A Mega Death Class gear, Hydra, destroys London. Cliff single-handedly fights the Mega Death for seven consecutive days and nights. What the fuck? Sword, That's cool. Dragon Slayer. He cuts off three of its heads and defeats it long enough for the Order's reinforcements to arrive and seal it away. Years later, a village is built atop its dormant body. Why? Why? Whose idea was that? Why not? Because it's not dead! So TLDR, a giant, a giant country destroying dragon l destroys London and they rebuild London atop its corpse. It's pretty cool that that guy holds it off for seven days and nights though. 2127 AD. Cliff eventually adopts a son and names him Testament. Despite being okay. a kind- Bro. <sighs> Testament? You named your son Testament? It's not even his actual name because you adopted him, so he had a different name, and then you fucking changed his name to Testament after adopting him. That's even more fucked. Testy for short. And hearted pastors, <coughs> Testament joins the order against Cliff's wishes in hopes of one day becoming a knight worthy of succeeding his father. During an undisclosed mission, Testament is reported killed in action. Though his body is never officially found, it is later learned that the Post-War Administration Bureau obtained the remains and subjected them to a number of experiments, including an unknown gear conversion and revival process. Upon awakening, as a means of testing combat ability, he is forced to- What is with these fucking sexy poses? Kill former Sacred Order allies. Shortly- WAIT! Oh, that's fucked. So they get hold of his dead body, they revive him, they fill him with an unknown gear, 
and then they make him kill his old allies as a test of his strength? After this, like all other gears, his mind is dominated by justice. Oh, and then he gets mind controlled by justice. That's fucked. 2140 AD. Cliff is forced to fight the gear. Oh, is this Cliff? He's like old as fuck now. That was what's his son and mortally wounds him. Wait, this is Cliff? He's just a little old man. <coughs> That's fucked up, dude. Imagine being an old man and you're so fucking strong that you're forced to like just body your son who just wanted to be you. He just wanted to be you, man. Look how ripped he is! Forces the post-war administration bureau to shut down all gear experimentation. Wait, he's so strong? He just walked out and goes, shut it down. And they're just like, uh, uh, okay. Do so. After attempts to use gears against each other ends in disaster, the Post-War Administration Bureau researches alternative anti-gear weaponry using the six forbidden magics. This results in the creation of six parasitic bioweapons known as the Forbidden Beasts. Come on, man. Really? So they didn't learn their lesson and they then just take the anti- the anti-gear weapons, and just do it again with the anti-gear weapons. <coughs> this is, um, this is great. This is just, uh, there's no, no one's, there's no conscience here. There's no, what if we didn't? Gears are noted to strangely respond to them as instinctual enemies, while generally effective. Hang on. Okay, so this is why, at the start of Strive, it says, humanity, uh, blame the beasts. Instead of blaming themselves for making the beasts, they blame the beasts they made. This makes, all right. Active in suppression. The unsustainable nature of these bioweapons requires their hosts to not only sacrifice something great to incubate and wield them, but eventually sacrifice themselves to the beasts, ultimately, once they awaken. During the war, Cliff fights justice 16 times to a standstill. How strong is this one regular ass dude? That he fights the perfected gear 16 times to a draw. When he's old. Imagine young one. He would have just fucked. Their one is able to defeat the other. Built different, man. No, he's like, he doesn't even have gear shit. He's just a soldier. A mother is killed in a gear attack on France, leaving behind a boat. <gasps> Kai! Eight months later, during another gear attack, Cliff and his young partner, Tyr, find Kai wandering the battlefield as a lone war orphan, surviving on instinct. Cliff asks what a child is doing in a place like this. Kai replies that his parents are dead and that he wants to fight instead of running away. He had been wandering alone for nearly six months. Cliff gives Kai an imperative. Survive the next five years. Wait, is Cliff... Hang on, is Cliff young again now? He looks... He's, the youth has returned to his body. Oh, this is the part... It's a flashback. Okay. <clears throat> then return to him, if he still wishes to fight Peters. 2167 AD. Kai Kisk joins the Sacred Order of Holy Knights. By age 14, Kai has quickly become a prodigy swordsman and displays mastery of lightning magic. By age 15, he is promoted to the rank of captain and has earned the respect. Why does anime do this? Why does anime do this? No one would ask a question if they just said 18, 19, 20. Why is it always by 12, he is the commander of men? By 13, he is the captain of the army of grown men. Like, no, he's not. He's not. I don't care how much of a prodigy a 12-year-old is, a grown man would just beat his ass. End of.
He's 15. Still gets his ass beat. ...and admiration of his fellow knights. Sometime later, a mission goes wrong and an entire platoon is killed by a gear, save for Kai. Traumatized and racked by survivor's guilt. Yeah, that's what happens when you're fucking 15. You get traumatized. He etches the word hope into his buckle to remind him... Hang on, that's his coping mechanism. He just writes hope on his belt? That's it? In, in what, crayon? Hopium? What the fuck is he hoping for? That it doesn't happen again? Man, I sure fucking hope that doesn't happen again. Hope. That'll do. I'm healed. So that nothing in this world can be done without hope. 2168 AD. Slayer retires from the Assassin's Guild in disgust as it no longer upholds his founding principles. Hang on. Just to clarify. The guy who's sitting with like a model's boobs pressed into his arm <laughs> is retiring in disgust at his principles because the principles aren't upheld. <laughs> Although you all share my fine taste in booba, stop. The principles of this assassin's guild I've not been upheld. Stop. Rumors spread of an unknown lone wolf <coughs> bounty hunter out in the battlefield, destroying gears ruthlessly on his own. Slayer eventually meets this bounty hunter and finds himself impressed by the passion burning like a sun in his path. Wait, who's this bounty hunter? Ruthlessly on his own. Principles. Rumors spread of an unknown lone wolf bounty hunter out in the battlefield, destroying gears ruthlessly on his own. Slayer eventually meets this bounty hunter and that's so, right? That has to be so. Finds himself impressed by the passion burning like a sun in his path. Slayer decides to give him the nickname Sol. Brash, unrefined, and antisocial. Saul's reputation for destroying gears en masse precedes him. Cliff recognizes this as the man who saved him in his childhood and Okay, so Saul was the guy that saved Cliff when Cliff was a child and hasn't aged. Spares no expense tracking him down to recruit him to the Holy Order. As Saul appears to only be interested in destroying gears, he accepts. 2172 AD. Order Saul joins the Sacred Order of Holy Knights. Despite joining, he often disobeys the chain of command, preferring to do things his own way. Fellow Knights treat him with little more than ill will. Despite initially being impressed seeing Kai in action the first time, their clashing personalities and ideals just aren't compatible. In a symbolic rebellion against Kai and his rigid orders, Saul etches the word free into his buckle. All right. <laughs> Okay, this is the pettiest thing I've ever seen. Other knights, inspired by this, and Kai's hope, begin following suit with their own words. One such example is the word pride etched into the buckle of the young knight, Leo Whitefang. Right. 2173, <coughs> Kai challenges Soul to a duel. Soul accepts. During the duel, it becomes clear to Sol that Kai is holding back, fighting Sol as if he were human. Kai loses. Thinking that he did not take the fight seriously, Sol is insulted. 2173 AD, the Battle of Rome, in response to a distress signal. Why wouldn't Kai think he was not human? He hasn't told him he isn't. He's like 15. He thinks he's fighting just a grown man. Kai commands a fleet of airships on a rescue mission to the blitzed city of Rome, currently under siege by a massive army of gears. Overrun, the knights call for retreat, but Kai remains steadfast, knowing that there's more survivors that can be saved. Sol arrives just in time to save Kai from succumbing to his fate. After their retreat, Sol encounters Justice alone and is soundly defeated. Amused by this reckless human, however, Justice spares his life. Realizing his weakness, Sol decides to steal the fire seal and quit the order. Wait, Sol got his ass beat by Justice and old man Cliff drew with Justice 16 times? 
Kai attempts to stop him in the act, but is beaten again. Before he leaves, Cliff confronts Sol, but sends him off with a blessing, saying that he intended to give Sol the sword anyway. Cliff then tells Kai to keep this incident a secret and decides to entrust the future to these two. Thinking of them and confronting guilt over the child soldiers that have been used in this war, Kai is literally a child soldier. Cliff decides to step down from his position, giving 16 year old. Hang on! Due to the grief of using child soldiers, Cliff decides to appoint. A child as his replacement of the order. Am I fucking reading this? And the Thunder Seal. 2175 AD. The final battle. The 17th and final battle between Cliff Underson and Justice begins. But this time, with the help of successor Kai Kisk and the Thunder Seal, they're able to drive her back. A weakened Justice retreats, but before she can escape, Soul Bad Guy appears before her again, now wielding the Fire Seal. As they fight, Justice realizes that the man standing before her is a gear and attempts to control him. It fails. In rage, she calls him a traitorous flame of corruption. Sol unleashes said flames, incapacitating her long enough for the remaining knights of the Holy Order to flank and use a post-war administration bureau developed sealing spell to lock her in a dimensional prison. Without a command gear, the remaining gear army goes completely dormant immediately. The Crusades are over. Pretty cool. 2177 AD, the post-Holy War era. Global damage has left the post-Crusade world almost entirely unrecognizable. Various areas have become stateless no-man's land. The remains of the EU and Russia consolidate to form the That's United why there's like Kingdom skeletal Amiri. giants and shit everywhere. that was originally mm. the source of all gear production is decimated. There are survivors, but most cities are in complete ruins. What government exists is heavily in the pocket of the Assassin's Guild, which has risen to political aspirations and is also in possession of a number of forbidden beasts. All remaining destroyed or stateless areas are placed under jurisdiction of the UN's International Police Force, with the exception of South Africa. At this point, the post-war administration bureau is officially deployed to undo as much global damage as possible. The surviving Japanese people are placed into colonies protected by magic barriers and guarded by the IPF with a no entry, no exit policy. Wait, why? Wait, uh, wait, why? Why? Cause Japan's gone? Yeah. So why'd they put him in a cage with a magic barrier and no exit or entrance? The Sacred Order of Holy Knights is disbanded. Kai, unable to adjust to normal life, joins the IPF. Cliff retires, leaving Holy Order days behind him for good. He does not stop martial arts training, however, and eventually becomes the first non-Japanese person to use and master key magic. 2180 AD. The Missing Link. Okay, so at the start they said there was eight pieces of the anti-gear weapon and the last one was a question mark. So I'm assuming that's what this is about. Five years after the Crusades, a rumor starts going around the population. Justice will return. World leaders determined this to be a credible threat, evidenced by the unexpected erosion of the walls within Justice's dimensional prison. With great concern, the UN announces the second Sacred Order Selection Tournament, an event to find the most capable recruits for the second Sacred Order of Holy Knights, those that will stand ready should Justice ever return. There are strange rules to the tournament, however. Incarcerated criminals and even children are permitted entry. Bloodshed was allowed, but strangest of all was the champion's prize. A single wish, any wish at all. The tournament begins. Many of the strongest fighters of the post-war era are attracted to the event, each in search of their own truths. Dr. Baldhead. When a little girl dies on his operating table, a disgraced doctor from China snaps and becomes a serial killer. However, once he learns that the patient was killed in a conspiracy to steal his research into resurrection healing, he takes on a new identity to save as many lives as possible. May. So he's Faust. 
a secretly Japanese sky pirate and her crew are reunited with their jailed captain, Johnny Sporty. They soar the skies in Mayship, a stolen black tech airship from Zep. Attempted. A powerful slave warrior of Zep is freed by his sergeant, Gabriel. Together, they successfully rise up and overthrow the oppressive noble class in full revolt, bringing democracy to Zep. Chip Zana. An American war orphan and dealer for the Assassin's Guild. When his drug dealing turned to drug abuse, the guild sends a ninja, Suyoshi, to kill the boy. Unable to do so, Suyoshi, actually a double agent for the IPF, trains Chip to escape his demons by turning to the way of the ninja. When his master is in turn assassinated by the guild for betrayal, Chip is nearly consumed by his desire. Look at them fish nets, dude. Hmm. For revenge, but finds solace in the teachings that saved his life. Milia Rage. From Russia, a trained assassin from childhood, found and forced to wield the forbidden beast Angra after escaping from an abusive relationship with Zato One. And Wait, so she's a wielder of a forbidden beast, but it was like forced on her? <clears throat> Deserting the guilt that forced this life upon her, she is determined to destroy both, but is wounded during her fight with Zato. Zato One loses control of his power and escapes. Zato One, from Spain. The new ruthless leader of the Assassin's Guild strays from Slayer's original Assassin's Code in favor of money, political influence, and manipulation. Responsible for the death of Dr. Baldhead's patient, he <gasps> sacrificed his sight for the Forbidden Beast Eddie. Oh, that's why he uses shadow magic. He's one of the Forbidden Beast wielders, and that's why he's blind. And he also stole Faust's research! <coughs> what an asshole! Who has now consumed him whole. Oh, okay. So, Zato doesn't exist anymore, it's just Eddie. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm understanding? Axel Lowe. An English pacifist born in the 20th century that suddenly finds himself slipping through time from 1998 to 2178 for unclear reasons. Forced to leave his girlfriend behind, Axel searches for- <laughs> No, babe! No! For a way home, but has no idea where his next time slip will lead. Baiken. A Japanese swordswoman raised in the colonies. She lost an arm, an eye, and both parents to a gear attack at a young age, but remembers the image of that man surrounded by flames and his gear creations on that night. From that day, she sought vengeance. Though she does not enter the tournament, she uncovers the truth about it and is currently wanted for escaping from the colonies. Soul Bad Guy burns his way through all the competition to the finals, where it is revealed that the entire tournament is a lie orchestrated by Testament, Cliff's adopted son. Somehow, he is survived by an unseen hand. Unlike most mindless dormant years, Testament recovered his memories after confronting his father, but his mind was still under her influence. He needed one final sacrifice of the strongest warrior in order to break the seal and reawaken justice into this. Oh, that's sad. He became a justice simp world once again. Soul defeats him, but in his defeat, Testament realizes that he may still serve her in the end by using his own blood as a sacrifice to open the dimensional prison. Justice is once again unleashed upon the world. Soul and Justice fight. During the battle, Soul's headband is ripped off, revealing a magical seal on his forehead that is identical to the one shared by all Gears. Justice, seeing this, is perplexed as she once again is unable to control his mind. Soul reveals that the reason he cannot be controlled is because even though Justice is a Type 01 Command Class Gear, he is the Alpha Gear. He's the Alpha Gear. Soul is the Alpha Gear. He's like, you can't control me, bitch. I came first. I'm the alpha. Prototype gear that all others were based on. He was Frederick Bolsara. With a massive explosion, Justice is defeated, leaving <clears throat> nothing but a shell behind. With her dying words, <coughs> Justice says that she wishes the three of us could talk again one last time. Realizing that Justice is connected to his past, Soul Bad Guy swears that he's going to kill that man. Betrayer of his own kind and slayer of his own kin. Soul bad guy is the guilty gear. Oh my god. No wonder he's so fucking OP, dude. He is the guilty. He's the guilty gear. 
He's the first gear that feels guilty because he's been spending his whole life killing all the other gears instead of the man responsible for everything. <clears throat> Alright. <coughs> That's the end of episode one. So the whole fucking game is named off the salt. That's crazy. Hey Octo, do you like my uh like my starting screen? Anyway. Hello and welcome back to Guilty Gear Lore, Heaven or Hell. I've received a tremendous amount of helpful feedback on episode one, and I want to thank everyone who reached out. The excitement to learn more about the world of Guilty Gear is real. Thanks to those of you that sent in corrections as well. Keep your eye on the description below, where we'll be listing extra notes pertaining to each episode from now on. Thanks again to Arc System Works for sponsoring the video and verifying every detail. And remember, the latest chapter of this story is coming soon, with Guilty Gear Strive arriving in April 2021. So without further ado, let's keep this thing moving. I love how nice he is. Like, his video was literally verified by Guilty Gear, but there's still a fucking keyboard warrior that's like, THIS IS WRONG! And he's like, hey, I'm gonna put what you said in the comment section, but I really don't fucking care, and, uh, Arxis said that I'm right, so it's okay. <clears throat> he's Canadian? That explains it. Heaven or hell? Get ready to <laughs> run. The year 2180. Justice is defeated. Many of the remaining gears, now leaderless, have become dormant. Others are hunted down and eliminated. Mankind was finally free from the catastrophic menace brought on by the gears. Before Soul destroys Justice, Kai Kisk confronts her about her evil ways. With a simple rebuttal, Justice explains that she was made by man to kill man, and thus she is merely fulfilling her moral purpose while surviving. From the perspective of a gear, her actions are utterly unclouded. They're all those of Justice. Unable to respond, Kai's rigid sense of righteousness fails him for the first time. Lol. The idea that perhaps there was no single truth that governed <clears throat> everything would leave him questioning his convictions even many years later. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have been a captain at 15, you fucking clown. Twenty-one eighty AD. Cliff Underson no! during the second Holy Order tournament. Valiant to the end, Cliff's final return to battle shows his mastery of key at such a degree that it could temporarily de-age his body, allowing him to fight in his prime. His death is mourned by those closest to him. Dude, I barely know him, but I feel so attached and sad at his, his death, you know? A Japanese man named Crow Kuruwaba works as a branch oh, chief this guy of the post-war administration bureau. Operating in the shadows, the organization has been gathering deep intel on everyone and everything it can. Using combat data from Kai Kisk, Crow creates an imitation series soldier unit known as Robo Kai. Oh god, this is the Robo Arc. The Zesen Outrage component. Hang on. Isn't technology like no no? Did he make them with magic? Or did he just. Uh, do they just not fucking care anymore? Or did it. it they're magic robots. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Magic, definitely not tech robots. Got it. It goes missing. The Zesen Wind Fans, a relic of the Crusades, had been located inside of a Japanese colony until their recent disappearance at the hands of Anji Mito, a now missing Japanese colonist. He appears to be only motivated by sheer curiosity and wanderlust. <laughs> it's just a fucking, like, happy go lucky guy was like, mine? And then just left. <clears throat> After the Crusades, a group of surviving years that were able to exist independently of justice secretly gather away from human eyes. They isolate themselves on an island known as the Ganymede Archipelago. Uninterested in humanity, but entirely interested in research, 
the leader of this group, manages to access and observe an alternate world parallel to our own. It will come to be known as the Backyard. Bro, the shit they call stuff is actually wild. It's actually wild. They do not think long and hard. It's like, what's the first thing you can think of? Go. And then one guy goes, backyard. And they're like, all right. He's like, hey, what should we call this war? This like war against the gears. First thing you can think of, go. Crusade. That's right. It's the crusade. 2181 AD, the Placard Company incident. Near London. The what? The what? The Placard Company incident? What do you mean? London, in the village built by the <coughs> Hydra, rumors of gear related homicides independently attracted both Kai Kisk and Soul Bad Guy to investigate. With help from a peculiar village doctor named Faust, Kai uncovers a conspiracy involving the Placard Corporation, a pharmaceutical company experimenting on villagers with a drug... They really do not give any thought to the names, do they? The Placard Corporation? ...called Vitae. Company president Sebus pushes Vitae as a miracle curing elixir but its misleading healing properties are due to people actually being dosed with extracted gear cells oh, to destroy fuck. the body. <clears throat> Soul's investigation is interrupted by an enigmatic watcher. The resurrected immortal knight from a thousand years prior. Oh shit. So this is this is this the person right at the start when they were like uh, a soldier dies in a medieval war but he comes back to life. <clears throat> now known as Raven appears before him. Bored of life and obsessed with pain, Raven's current mission is to retrieve gear resonance data and return it to his master, the gear maker, also known as that man. Oh no, After he's still alive! After being incinerated by Soul's tyrant rave, Raven's body rejuvenates and he expresses disappointment at not feeling any warmth. He then ambushes Faust, retrieves the data, and takes his leave. Sebas' true aim is exposed as an attempt to create his own command class gear for military purposes. Using a pair of test subjects- Wait, is Sebus that man? They, did they just, did he just slip up? No, Sebas is someone else? Okay. <clears throat> Who's Sebus? Sebus is the drug guy, okay. As a catalyst, <clears throat> he resurrects the Hydra, which destroys the village. I want to say we didn't see this coming. I, I, I want to say that building a village on a dormant Hydra gear was a mistake. And we shouldn't have done it, but we did. And the Hydra came back to life and it destroyed the village. And I want to say, I don't think anyone could have seen this coming. Personally. I didn't. No one who lived there saw it coming either. It just really just snuck up on us. With recruited help from Johnny and the Jellyfish Pirates, however, most villagers are evacuated aboard Jellyfish the Jellyfish Pirates is such a Kai, bad name. Kai, Soul, and Faust handle the threat mm. and use a last resort orbital satellite weapon to annihilate the Hydra. Cornered, Sebus O- How dare you? They're called Jellyfish Pirates, but they're Sky Pirates and have no affiliation with war. Tell me how Jellyfish Pirates is a good name. They fly over deserts. Jellyfish are cute, that's why. <clears throat> Overdoses on Vitae and becomes a gear. You just don't get it. He is quickly it. destroyed by Kai. You fucking weeb. <clears throat> the discovery of the golden... You're called Shriven, but I've never seen you strip. Doesn't mean I don't. Discs. Johnny and May. When an ancient site of old world ruins is uncovered, many opportunists and hustlers flock to it, including Johnny and May, hopeful to get rich on treasures from the pre-crusade world. 
They accidentally cross paths with Kai Kisk and his fellow IPF officers, however, on site confiscating black technology. Kai thanks Johnny and May for their help during the placard incident, but cannot allow them to go as criminal pirates at large. A fight ensues, causing part of the ruins to crumble and reveal an ancient golden data disk. <gasps> The disc activates a hologram explaining its purpose. A full record of old world technology, culture, and scientific world knowledge created in 2014. In the stunned commotion, Johnny performs a mist finder, cleaving the disc in two, and makes a break for it with May and one half of the disc as the rubble comes down. The jellyfish pirates later get a lead on the location of another full disc, but end up baited into a trap set by the assassin syndicate and Zato One's loyal and infatuated subordinate, a man known as Venom. Mm. His attempt to steal the disc fails to the full power of the pirates, however. Johnny, now understanding the danger of the disc, slices it into unrecognizable pieces, giving a shard to each jellyfish pirate as a pendant. Kai and Potem... Just to clarify, <clears throat> just to clarify, the Assassin's Guild is after the disc. And so he's like, shit, I'm going to break this disc up into 15 pieces and give it to all these little girls. And that way, nothing bad will happen. <clears throat> okay, just so we're all on the same page. Just, I just figured I would just pause here and reflect on that because it was kind of glossed over. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kai is en route to turn over his half-disc to HQ. After a brief encounter with Chip Zanoff, Zep airships surround Kai, threatening military action if the relic is not surrendered. Oh, I guess, yeah, Zep would want the disc because they are the technology country. He <clears throat> feigns compliance by handing it over, but then sneaks aboard the ship. He is soon caught by Potemkin, who respectfully greets Kai, politely asking that he withdraw. The two discuss the nature of bearing the responsibility of protecting man from itself, but ultimately come to an impasse and choose battle. Hey man, remember when uh, humanity destroyed itself twice and we were all there, you were there, I was there, and that disc is, is gonna just happen again. And he's like, yeah, but I don't agree with you and we should politely fight each other. Kai barely triumphs using his ride the lightning technique, staggering Potemkin long enough to grab the relic and flee. But Potemkin and the Zep soldiers give chase. Kai, cornered, points out the dangers of history repeating itself and calls attention to the empty crater they're flying above, an area destroyed by black tech where no life will grow for another century. Potemkin calls it a sin of the past, but cannot concede, because letting him go will result in the IPF simply using the disc to obtain power for themselves. Kai swears to prevent this, even if it costs him his life which elicits heavy laughter from Potemkin. Oh, 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 oh. An IPF rescue ship suddenly closes in, and Kai is able to escape. As they speed away, Kai requests permission from HQ to destroy the disc, but they deny, ordering him to return with it at once. Thinking of Potemkin's words, Kai hesitates. The ship is then attacked and forced to land. Waiting for Kai in the middle of the crater, his sole bad guy. Oh, all right. What? Hang on. There's. It's just a small data disc that has what? It's. It's just got all the, and it. it the idea that all history and technology is just on a single disc. Firstly, what the like Final Fantasy VII was around the same time, and it was four discs long. Like, maybe? Okay, anyway. But it's golden. Okay. Uh, 
So then Sol brings down. Oh, I guess Sol left. I guess Sol left. Sol's not on the part of the IPF anymore, right? So he's just brought down this fucking ship. Okay. Sol and Axel Rowe. During this conflict, Sol had been drinking in a bar when Axel Lowe crashed in with cops on his tail. A bar fight starts, which Sol bad guy ends with fire. Axel explains that he was overheard uttering E equals MC squared, a phrase that only people exposed to black tech would know. Sol, concerned about this dangerous development, tracks down the disc. E equals MC squared is a phrase that only people who knew about black tech would know. What the f- I'm trying to think of a situation. I'm trying to think of a situation where Axel is saying out loud, E equals MC squared in a world without technology and someone overhears him and goes, what did you fucking say? That must be black tech. What? What? If you don't know what it is, how would you know it's black tech? Which it isn't. to a restaurant where it was pawned off as a decoration did he say mc squared to a live illegal math named jam cradberry she helps fight <coughs> off the final group of axel's pursuers yo she's Soul fucking him up the disc and operates it to reveal the locations of any functional backup copy he operates half a disc am i hearing this He got a full disc. Where did he get a full disc from? Did I miss something? Sol, concerned about this dangerous development, tracks down the disc to a restaurant where it was pawned off as a decoration. What? Did they just gloss over that there's two discs? What? When Axel Lowe crashed in with cops on his tail. A bar fight starts, which Soul Bad Guy ends. No, he with this fire. Wooly never even Axel mentions the second he disc. He just suddenly goes, e Oh, he MC tracks down squared, a second. A phrase that only people exposed to black tech would know. Soul, concerned about this dangerous development, tracks down the disc to a restaurant where it was pawned off as a decoration to a lively waitress named Jam Cradberry. She helps fight off the final group of Axel's pursuers. Soul activates the disc and operates it to reveal the locations of any functional backup copies. Okay. It points him to one partial copy. So he tracked down a second disc on the wall of a restaurant. So they're clearly not that hard to find and pretty common. Right. This is some Nintendo shit. This is artificial rarity. The story starts with, there's only one. We've sliced it into half and then 15 more pieces and spread it between all the pirates. And then it quickly goes into, nah, there's one down the road hanging on the restaurant wall. Held by Kai Kisk. Sol and Kai face off in the crater. Sol gets the upper hand, but before anything can be settled, an IPF captain with reinforcements arrives, wielding black tech firearms. What? Soul is gunned down by bullets. Kai is shocked to see his superior already using the forbidden technology and realizes Potemkin was right. They can't be trusted. The captain notes Kai's refusal to play along and takes aim at him as well, but he's interrupted. Oh my God. Soul activates his dragon install. An ability allowing him to surge with power from his inner gear beast form. Soul melts through the soldiers, but Kai stops him from killing them and takes them into custody. 
with a cl- Ah, that's the form he takes when he does his fucking supers in the game. Uh, that's fucking cool. Clear understanding. They each destroy their own golden discs entirely. Testament, Testament and the Maiden, Maiden of the, the Grove. Grove. Through unclear means, Testament survives the end of the Second Holy Order tournament. What? What do you mean? What do you mean? Through unclear means, this is the second time this has happened with this guy. The first time, it was like, through unclear means, he survived the eradication of the beast. Through unclear means, he survived killing himself to resurrect justice. What do you mean? You can only, you can only resurrect justice by dying. Someone had to die. Gone. <coughs> This is like a- is this a play on the second testament? Wait, is there even a second testament? I don't know, religion. Though he finds himself free from justice mind control, he remains a slave of the weight of his sins. He finds his way to the grave of his father, Cliff. While reminiscing, he meets a priest and a young orphan girl named Josephine. She is blind, but hopeful, as she has recently become a patient of Dr. Faust. Without warning, Venom ambushes and takes Josephine hostage. His term is demanding Faust to join the Assassin Syndicate. Dude, so far all I've learned about Faust is he is just unfortunate story after unfortunate story. People just keep hurting and kidnapping his kids and patients and research over and over again. And he's just out here like curing the blind kids. Testament fights and saves her, fleeing deep into the nearby grove known as Hell's Forest. There, Josephine introduces Testament to Dizzy. Innocent and pacifist, Dizzy was found and raised- Yeah, there's nothing innocent about this outfit, by the way, just saying. ...by an old couple in Josephine's village, unaware of her true identity. A man class gear and daughter of justice. What? <clears throat> Justice just had time to make a kid somehow, somewhere, at some time, with whomst? With whomst? Tell me. Well, it's unclear. <clears throat> Wait, no, if it, it's not, it can't be soul. When she grew to adulthood in three years with wings and a tail, the village grew fearful of her, forcing the old couple to abandon her alone in the grove. Her only friend was Josephine, who cannot see, but believes Dizzy to be an angel after touching one of her wings. Hang on, Dizzy's three years old? Three? FBI? <clears throat> yeah, you're gonna wanna see this. Yeah, right here. Uh-huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Venom attacks again, causing Dizzy's shape-shifting wings to awaken. With personalities of their own, Necro, the Blackwing, and Undyne, the White Wing, will attack to defend Dizzy, whether she wills it or not. Venom gets struck while aiming at Testament, and accidentally hits Josephine. What? Venom retreats, <clears throat> and they turn their attention towards getting her to a doctor immediately. Faust heals not only Josephine's wounds, but her sight as well. That's my man right there, MVP. That's my boy Faust. But, seeing Dizzy's body for the first time, she becomes confused. The priest and the villagers, however, upon learning that Dizzy has returned, set fire to the area, yelling, burn the demon. Dizzy begins to panic and cower as her wings lose control and the mob closes in. Testament, feeling a deep connection with Dizzy's pain, steps in between her and the villagers and uses his seventh sign attack, non-lethally. <laughs> I fucking love this shit, dude. Testament, 
shows up again using his most powerful move, but non lethally. <laughs> if I declare it out loud that it's non lethal, it means it won't kill you. <clears throat> With just enough power to stop Negro, Undyne, and the mob. In the shadows, Milia Rage convinces Venom to help save some villagers from the fire. Dizzy approaches Josephine, but gets slapped. <gasps> Angry and fearful, Josephine calls Dizzy a demon and tells her to go back to the forest. The rest of the villagers join in, Did chasing them out. Testament swears to Cliff in this moment that he will choose to continue living to protect Dizzy as his sole purpose. Oh, man. All right, so... The guy who's like Jones in because uh, he was simping for justice and she died. And he's like, oh man, now what's my purpose? And then he finds Justice's daughter and he's like, I have a new purpose. It's literally that wolf from Twilight who sees like the, the daughter, the baby, and is like, I've imprinted on the child. That, it's that situation. Guilty Gear X, by your side. Okay, so now I know all these characters, right? This is the waitress lady. That was the pirate, Venom. There's Kai. Sol. Within a matter of days, word spreads far and wide about the mysterious humanoid gear living in Hell's Forest, somehow still functional in a world without justice. As information spread, so did panic. A report stated, This gear is functioning properly, even though its activity should be inhibited by its lack of leadership. There are no signs of abnormalities or physical damage. It is also noted that no civilians have been harmed either intentionally or accidentally. We've made several attempts to eliminate the gear, but due to its tremendous combat abilities, we've been unsuccessful. The number of casualties has yet to be... Just to clarify, like, five seconds ago, they mentioned that there'd been, like, no casualties accidentally or purposefully, right? And then, in the next line... <laughs> said that they went in to kill it and they all fucking died <laughs> no civilian casualties right that's what i'm saying they've noted they've made a note that this thing doesn't hurt people and then sent an army in and died got owned <coughs> we're currently keeping the gear under surveillance a gear exerting its own will without justice terrified mankind at the possibility of the emergence of a second command class gear. Furthermore, rumors were spreading that nations were still somehow intent on possessing military purposed gears. The people were having none of it, however, and took a stand. Is this Biken? With the coming of this an anti-gear right? movement, an announcement was made. Whoever brings about the demise of this dreadful gear shall be rewarded with the lofty sum of 500,000 world dollars. Dizzy is described as an impossible being and the strongest gear on earth, descended from man and demon. The power to rend the earth, burn the heavens, and destroy mankind. So that means that whoever had sex with justice was a guy. Was a human. It's probably a testament. The powers that be seek her strength, but all she longs for is contact. Bounty hunters from around the globe begin to con- Oh no, that guy! Oh no! Congregate in the forest she calls home. A number of familiar faces from the second Holy Order tournament cross paths in search of the bounty. Some, like Potemkin, are sent in officially on secret orders to escort the target back to Zep. Others, like Kai Kisk, choose to intervene, not on behalf of the IPF, but as a civilian bounty hunter. Or Angie Mita, who simply wants to learn more about the world. Each intends to resolve the situation in their own way. 
but no matter who approaches Hell's Forest, a testament stands ready to greet them. None are allowed to trespass on her holy ground. Years must die. Dizzy once expressed to Faust that she regretted being born to cause suffering. Faust later comes across Soul Bad Guy and asks if he intends to save Dizzy by ending her life. Soul simply replies, Gears must die. Faust then asks Soul whether his statement is directed at her or perhaps himself. Soul eventually makes his way through Hell's Forest to Testament, through Testament, and then to Dizzy. She asks him if a Gear's life has any value. He replies that Gears are weapons, and so are their hearts. Necro and Undyne awaken and attack Soul, ever protective of their host. As they fight, Necro charges a Gamma Ray, which Soul immediately recognizes as the same kind of power he faced when fighting Justice. Soul defeats Dizzy, and she asks him to finish her off before she hurts anyone else. Before landing the fatal blow, however, he hesitates. In that moment, Kai steps between them. He expresses that he felt conflicted since the defeat of Justice, but now he is certain. Not all Gears are truly evil. Soul accepts Kai's resolve and leaves him to decide. As Soul leaves, Kai is shocked that Soul acknowledged him by his name. Hey, Mike, you earn Soul's blue. respect, boy! Kai tells Dizzy that he believes there's a place in the world beyond that grove that can accept her for who she is. He also tells Dizzy that she, if she wants, can wear um, a full item of clothing, like a sweatshirt or some form of jumpsuit. Dizzy is still fearful, recalling the way villagers treated her, but decides to trust Kai. She asks if he can teach her what it means to live as a human, and he accepts. Testament, whose soul also did not kill, is distrustful of humans, but accepts Dizzy's choice to leave the grove. He chooses to remain, to ensure that she can live life off the grid, away from those that would hunt her down. Kai entrusts her to... Hang on. So Testament's so bummed out that she left the forest, he stays in the forest? As a decoy? Okay, okay, I was gonna say, was he just trying to, just wants to sniff her clothes or something? Join the jellyfish pirates aboard the May ship. Notably, the crew which is named for each month they joined finally gets its final member. Jam Cradbury, who witnessed the conclusion of these events while hiding, then went on to claim the bounty for Dizzy's defeat and used the money to open up her <laughs> own Chinese restaurant. That's fucking epic. For inexplicable reasons, it burns down shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> I like this character, dude. Debt for repairs. <laughs> the Assassin Syndicate. Shortly after the events of Hell's... Hang on, did Soul burn down her restaurant? For claiming the bounty? No one knows. She did. She's a ditz. <clears throat> she didn't look like a ditz when she was whooping people's ass. Unclear. Unclear. Yeah, unclear. Forest. Zato 1 is killed by Milia Rage. Her complicated feelings of simultaneous admiration and hatred lead her to decide that she needs closure through vengeance. Why can she do that with her hair? Can someone fucking elaborate? He never explained why. He he never told us why. She's... Oh, is she the one with the Divine Beast in her? Uh. Venom, who would give his own life to save Zato One, is unable to do so. When Milia finds and kills Zato, she is left feeling hollow inside, unaware that the Forbidden Beast Eddie was now fully in control of the dead body. With Zato dead, Venom becomes the highest ranking member of the Syndicate. Why is why, why does he keep flip-flopping between Zato and then Zato-1? Are they different people or are they the same person? 
<clears throat> Same guy? Okay. The leader of the isolated independent type gear colony in the Ganymede Archipelago continues his research. Known as Dr. Paradigm, his ability to absorb information and understand world logic is almost unparalleled. After his successful contact with the mysterious reality known as the Backyard, he discovers an isolated structure within it called the Cube. This man found the Cube in the Backyard. And while it isn't clear at this point what it is or how it works, it appears to have been built by that man. So the same guy that made gears then made a cube and stuck it in the backyard, aka a parallel dimension. Is that, is that, am I, okay. Elsewhere, a servant of that man finishes a report on the incident in Hell's Forest. That man, now covered in robes, remarks to himself that it is interesting that there was a daughter and assigns his servant to monitor her. He then thinks aloud that this has truly created yet another reason to be killed by him. Okay, that was episode two. Okay. Five minute break. <clears throat> All right, sounds good. Let's take a five minute break. Uh, grab snacks, grab water. Uh, when we come back, we will get into episode three, which is Guilty Gear XX to Guilty Gear Overture. Based on the Pepe laugh, uh, it's going to get crazy. All right. I, I love this so far, dude. This is great. All right. <coughs> Let's play some music.
All right. All right, you guys ready? All right, it's two minutes tight left on ads. Okay, we'll just hang out until ad time. All right, man, this is uh, it's crazy, huh? We we've seen a lot. Of... <laughs> Story is fucking wild, man. And it is cool though. I like it. <clears throat> Thoughts so far? There's a lot of really cool characters that uh, you know. Probably, I it, I feel like after watching all these, I'll be able to be like, these, these are the people I want to see in the game, which will be fun. <clears throat> or at least, at least when they introduce people, I'll understand who they are, where they came from. It's cool. It's cool because like, I thought Faust was a bad guy. But I'm realizing he's like one of the goodest guys. He wasn't serial killer for a while. Yeah, but he was sent insane, right? By, by Zato. But then there's other things. Now I'm like, uh, how is Zato alive? Because I just watched the video where he died. So you'll see. I know, I know I'll see, but you, you guys are asking me my thoughts currently. Justice is throwing me for a loop, alright? Test this testament shit. This testament shit is bad, okay? Testament was not he was an afterthought, I feel. There were holes and they were like, we need to fill this hole. Use testament. Testament bracket unclear end bracket. You actually missed a bit about justice. I did? Well, I mean, I didn't. I, we watched the whole thing. What did I... Are you saying there's a bit about justice that wasn't in the video? It's spoilers. Okay, so I didn't miss shit. All right, don't one guy me. <clears throat> Ads are completed. All right, let's fucking go. Saga continues. Welcome back. As we put these pieces to... Okay, this is weird. Uh... How do I... How did this happen? ...together to help you understand the last two decades of lore. It's awesome to see how many of you... Imagine calling me a boomer because I don't know how to navigate like YouTube, the YouTube cog. Why are Magic you attacking me? As we approach Guilty Gear Strive coming soon, the information density is getting amped up. But everything we've learned of the story so far means we're ready. No brakes on this train. No brakes on this train! I got cookies. Heaven or hell. <laughs> Heaven or hell. Get ready, Get ready to, ready to No brakes on this train, chat. In the world of Guilty Gear, time can be convoluted. Alternate timelines and parallel realities are not foreign concepts to consider. Sometimes events are depicted that differ from the main path that we know. But observing these events can give an insight into the motivations that shape the world. 2181 AD, Guilty Gear. All right, chat, my prediction is one of the six banned spells in the 666 approved spells is like some kind of time fuckery, okay? Double X, The Midnight Carnival, Reload and Accent Core. Ooh, I like Oh! Oh! Oh, I like this! 
There's Eno. You know. Bridget. Slayer. Testament. Dizzy. Kai. Soul. So, it, would it be safe to assume that Kai and, Kai and Sol, Sol probably to a lesser degree Kai, are the, the protagonists, plural, of the franchise, right? Everything kind of revolves around those two specifically. Sol is the protagonist? Sol's, I don't know if Sol is the protagonist, because it's more like Sol shows up whenever he wants, and he's kind of the protagonist, but they need someone else when Sol walks away, and so that's Kai. It's the Ken and Ryu, right? Soul is the anti-hero, exactly. Yeah. So if anything, Soul is Ken and Kai is Ryu. But I'd say I it's more like in Street Fighter you'd say like, oh, it's maybe 70-30, but it's closer to a 50-50 hit. Soul is Ryu and Kai is Ken. I was thinking more from like a like a personality standpoint but sure yeah shortly after dizzy leaves the grove a collection of disruptive events occurs outside of the main timeline the common denominator in all of them is the being known as Eno. incredibly powerful with magic and time manipulation Eno is a musical outsider that doesn't know where she comes from, but is drawn to the concept of tomorrow. Without knowing why, Eno witnessed a dull, gray future awaiting humanity, and now she's obsessed with changing that future by any means necessary. <laughs> Alright, hang on. So she witnessed uh, peace, and she was like, that's fucking boring. I need to fix this. In most circumstances, this means stirring up trouble and creating conflict with her guitar Marlene and altering major events for historical figures. No small feat, but made possible due to her ability to meddle with causality by slipping freely to and from any timeline. She does so in a similar manner to Axel Lowe, the main difference being her ability to control it. But no matter how many times she repeats history, the future always converges on a single point. The dull gray future awaiting humanity remained unchanged. She becomes one of that man's closest associates and frequently takes it upon herself to eliminate anything or anyone that she believes stands in his way. But her methods frequently upset him. <laughs> 2173 AD, the Battle of Rome another reality. In one previous instance of her time traveling, Eno is present in 2173 AD, just before Kai's last stand at the Battle of Rome. Eno pretends to be a helpless victim when she's found by Kai, but Holy Order Sol senses danger and immediately swings at her. Baiting Kai's sympathy, she later tricks him into searching hopelessly to rescue her instead of retreating as over 200 large class and three mega death class gears descend upon the city. Though Sol arrives to help, this time he's too late. Eno laughs to herself as Kai dies in Sol's arms. This causes a oh, domino shit. effect, leading to a damned world where Sol becomes commander of the Sacred Order, waging a lost war against Dizzy, who never meets Kai and chooses instead to inherit the will of justice. With Johnny killed, Captain May leads the Jellyfish Pirates into battle, alongside Sol and Potemkin. But after 10 years of conflict, humanity is about to be wiped out. Eno roams this apocalypse, and after putting an end to a roaming, murderous Dr. Baldhead, she eventually makes her way to the center of the Gear Stronghold and meets that man for the first time. To her disappointment, he is shackled, enchained, and completely powerless. 
but his words and vision for a different future pique her interest. Curious to see what the world he hopes for would look like, she uses her powers to revisit 2173 AD and save Kai, thereby correcting the timeline. Witnessing the result of her temporal change, he asks her to lend her strength to his goals. She accepts. <clears throat> Through the reflection of Eno's timeline disruptions, we see glimpses of alternate reality scenarios. Eddie, dying, lashes out at anything it can, desperate for a new host. Zato One's corpse can no longer provide sustenance, and time is running out. At one point, it attempts to possess Slayer's wife, Sharon, but the light emanating from her immortal body melts the forbidden beast away. Robokai, setting fire to Jam Kuradoberi's restaurant. <gasps> it was the Robokai! reveals the testament that his nearly extinct race of vampires, the Nightwalkers, used to be humanity's greatest enemy before the Age of Gears. Axel Lowe's time-slipping condition is diagnosed by Faust as an affliction caused by the existence of another Axel. Biken. Wait, there's just two Axels and that's why he always gets fucked through time? Finally confronts that man. She asks if he would prefer to die quickly or die slow and painful. Before effortlessly stopping her, he answers. Death is not a choice. Death is giving up. He chooses to live slowly and painfully. For now. Angie Mito meets that man and gets to ask his ultimate question. If gear technology allows... So this entire game is what ifs. This entire game is like, Eno has made this possible. What if? Right? And it's like, what if... Angie met that man. What if, uh, you know, this guy did this, or this happened, or this guy died? So it's kind of like not canon, but gives you an insight into their characters more. Or it is canon, but it doesn't impact the world. I, right? It's canon in the sense that Eno actually did it and caused it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But it, like, it doesn't, it's not changing the outcome of the main timeline. It's human life to be extended and saves the environment. And the discovery of magic has already solved the renewable energy crisis. And the Earth's population has the ability to expand outward to space if needed. And we have all these clear solutions to all of our problems. Why? Why did it end up like this? To this, that man answers, divine punishment. Angie asks him to be more specific. That man extends his hand and invites Angie to come along if he's prepared to defy both heaven and earth. That man appears before Saul, not to fight, but to warn him of a coming threat that will make the Crusades seem like a dim memory, a time that will require men to become more than men and gears to become more than gears. Eventually, Raven and that man capture Eden and stop her time mischief. They put that bitch on ice. <laughs> Literally. These timelines also introduce us to a number of noteworthy individuals. Zappa. An ordinary young man from Australia who one day becomes cursed and possessed by supernatural spirits seeking Dr. Faust's help. He is prone to often losing his memory when he's taken over by Esco, the vengeful spirit of a dead woman with a grudge against any happy couples. His body was chosen because of his resemblance to the lover that abandoned her, causing her to take her own life. Zappa's contorted body is also host to a number of minor ghosts, an enchanted blade, a ghost dog, and a powerful lightning manifestation. Dude, this poor fucking guy. This poor fucking dude just looked, he just looked like her ex-lover. And then he's like, gets possessed by like 15 ghosts. Named Rao. Unlike Esco, however, these other spirits are more outwardly protective and caring of their host. 
Bridget. Born the youngest brother from a set of twins to a multi-billionaire family, Bridget's town superstitiously believed that male twins bring misfortune and were so committed to this idea that they insisted that the youngest twin be given up for adoption or put to death. Neither of these options appealed to Bridget's parents, however, so they chose to raise him as a daughter instead of a son. Despite a kind and loving upbringing, Bridget saw that his parents felt guilty for what they did and tried his best but couldn't convince them that he was truly happy. He decides to leave town with his possessed teddy bear weapon named Roger to become a bounty hunter, hoping to return successful and wealthy as a man to prove their extreme superstitions incorrect. Abba. Okay. Abba. A shy homunculus created in a mountaintop laboratory named Flask by a scientist experimenting with artificial life. When Abba awakened, her creator was nowhere to be found. So it's Frankenstein. After 10 years of isolation and imprisonment, her yearning for freedom led to her becoming a key collector. After escaping Flask, by chance she encounters Flament Nagel, a living demon war axe that was once wielded during the Crusades. Seeing it as a giant key, Abba names it Paracelsus and takes it as her husband, vowing to find him a real body. 2182 AD. Yo, that character's that character's lore is kind of crazy though. I hope that character gets put in. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. The butterfly and her gale. Chip Zana is reminiscing on the lessons his master Siyoshi taught him when he happens across an assassination attempt on Erica Bartholomew, the 75th president of the United States. She ran alongside Vice President Colin Vernon. After Chip intervenes and saves the president's life, she explains that the U.S. government is currently being puppeted by the Assassin Syndicate and that she's being targeted for her attempt to pass law in Congress that would sever their ties. As the Syndicate is also responsible for Siyoshi's death, Chip wants to see them ruined and agrees to become Erica's bodyguard until the bill is passed. The Assassin Syndicate persists in its hostilities, attempting to blackmail congressmen and frame Zep while sending an assassin named Volf to infiltrate and finish the job. After luring Chip into a trap, Volf shoots Erica with a black tech gun, but she survives and continues addressing the public. Chip later intercepts Volf and recognizes him as the man responsible for killing his master. Volf tauntingly insults the deceased Tsuyoshi and exposes Chip to the same drugs he was once addicted to. Chip manages to overcome Volf's tactics and defeats him using key. With support also coming from Zep and the IPF, Erica passes the bill, dealing a significant blow to the syndicate. Later, Kai del <laughs> The fucking subtitles are killing me, bro. The Sydney kid. <laughs> delivers an IPF intel report to Chip, revealing that Tsuyoshi was actually an undercover agent embedded with the assassins Ooh. before escaping and taking Chip under his wing. Erica then asks Chip if he still intends to be president someday. He replies that he'll have to ask his master first. 2183 AD. The United Kingdoms of Illyria are officially recognized by the UN. Post-Crusade reconstruction efforts progress a gathering of different city-states, philosophies, and religions that came together for survival reasons eventually give way to a new melting pot culture. The nation's capital is built atop the ruins of Rome and quickly becomes the largest metropolis of the post-Crusade world. The massive state not only includes Europe, but much of Asia as well, splitting the continent with the Federation of China. Illyria is divided into three kingdoms, through popular vote, Kai Kisk is elected first king. First Holy Order soldier Leo Whitefang is elected second king. And the third king is named Daryl. Hang on. God damn it, dude. We have your first king, Kai Kiske. Your second king, Leo Whitefang. And Daryl for whom there would be justice. In secret, Kai spends more time with Dizzy, 
and before long, they fall in love. Despite the fact that they could not legally be married within the system due to her being a half-gear, Kai proposes to her anyway, and they begin living together. After a year of bliss... Chat, she's not three, she's like five in this. They were expecting a child. Come on. Kai suppressed his latent feelings of guilt and immorality with newfound joy. But the reminder of his sins returned seeing the inhuman pregnancy his wife had to go through. A doctor that knew of their situation assessed that Dizzy appeared to be halfway through her second trimester, but only three <coughs> weeks had passed. Oh, come on! Furthermore, the magic-based equivalent of an ultrasound was unable to see the fetus because it was encased in an egg. At some point... I'm sorry? I think I misheard. Uh, an egg? Gears lay eggs. <clears throat> All right, good, good talk. During the nation's founding, Kai accepts an invitation from the Conclave. They point blank tell Kai that they want him to become king of a new nation due to his popularity and status as a hero. Kai had previously considered that doing so would give him the power to create a better world for those who are suffering and for his wife and unborn child. But to suss out their motives, he politely dismisses his record as that of a military officer, unsuited for politics. The officials are blunt in their reply. That's fine if you don't do politics. You just have to keep your mouth shut and sit on the throne. Realizing that they want a puppet king, Kai excuses himself and asks to postpone the decision. They agree, but as he turns away, they pay their compliments. By the way, your secret wife is quite charming, isn't she? She seems awfully familiar. Anyway, we look forward to your response. Monka W! Unparalleled confession. Kai is worn down, praying desperately before a statue of the Virgin Mary when Sol arrives at the church. Sol notices a child hiding behind Dizzy's skirt named Sin, while he appears to be the... I told you about the kid that I actually knew in real life called, uh, <clears throat> God, what was he called? Oh man, what was his name? Mistake. Yeah, his name was Mistake. <clears throat> regret. His name was Regret. It was Regret. It was Regret. <clears throat> his name was Regret. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, uh, his mom was really religious and, uh, she had four daughters and she named them all like grace, chastity, uh, like, like names from the Bible. And then she had a son and she was like, I must have sinned to have had a son. And so she named her son regret. <laughs> yeah. Virtue names. Yeah. She named him regret. Dude. It's fucking actually wild. Anyway. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> as fucking stupid as this is, it, I, it, it, you know. The let's, size let's of a three or four year old. Is, is he, he okay? Probably not. Mentions that it's been six months. Gears not only mature at an advanced rate compared to humans, they also develop superior cognitive abilities at a faster rate as well, essentially reaching adulthood in three years. Soul notices the child's right eye is covered by an eye patch and feels as if something sinister is. So half gears reach adulthood in three years. Does that mean they just like age faster and rule or do they just reach adulthood in three years and then they're immortal? Like what, what's the rules here? Both physically and mentally, they reach adulthood in three years. But they live for what, 5,000? They're immortal, okay, they're immortal. So they age quickly and then they're immortal once they hit a certain point, got it. He's being hidden. Gesturing to Kai, Dizzy asks Sol to please help him. 
The man Saul sees praying is a shadow of his former self. Pai has pale, thin cheeks and bags under his lifeless eyes. Saul smirks to himself as he notices Kai's right eye, covered by an eye patch as well. What did you come here for? Your god sent me because your confession was taking too long. Soul <laughs> Wait, did Saul say that? Dude, Saul's so fucking cool. Fuck. <sighs> your god sent me because your confession was taking too long. Can you turn closed captions back on? They're on, dude. What do you want? Did I click them off? Soul picks a fight, but Kai's energy is that of a man who's already defeated himself. Pushing Kai to his limits, Soul drags what's left of the old Kai out to the surface, showing drags what's left of the old Pi out to the surface. Some signs of life. But before things heat up, young Sin grabs Soul's leg and says, I hate Dad, but if Dad gets hurt, Mom will cry, and I won't forgive anyone who makes Mom cry. Soul asks the child if he's scared. Sin says that he is, but it doesn't matter. Sol then turns to Kai and says that his son is already tougher than he is. <laughs> Dude, Sol's so good. Kai asks Sol if he can take care of Sin for a while, knowing it's an unreasonable request. Sol asks if this is the answer that Kai found. Kai says it's not, but with a little time, he can make a safe world where his wife and child can smile. Sol then accepts without hesitation. Well then, no complaints on what kind of man he becomes. No complaints on what kind of man he becomes. Is Sol's literally Piccolo. <sighs> 2184 AD. Chip Zanuff travels to a lawless area in the southern part of Africa and declares it the Eastern Chip Kingdom taking thousands of families under poverty and criminals under his wing. As this area has seen little aid following the Crusades, Chip manages to re-establish some stability, earn the people's respect, and is working towards UN recognition. He chooses a ninja businessman named Answer as his right hand, and appoints himself president of a kingdom. 2185 AD. Young Sin decides it's time he learned how to fight, and wonders about using Soul's weapon. Sol doubts it. Noting his affinity for lightning, Sin says it needs to be something that he can charge into battle with that's manly and stylish, and most importantly, eye-catching. Sol sarcastically tells him to go wave a flag. Guilty Gear 2. Overture. So his weapon is a flag. His weapon's an actual flag. <clears throat> Dude, the music in every game is so fucking good. Why don't they like, just like re-release a bunch of these tracks for Strife? Or did they do that? They did? Oh, nice. I guess I have to fish to gum, right? Long dormant gears begin to disappear without explanation. Based on the date of the first recorded occurrence, these events are later referred to as the Baptisma 13 incident. The Backyard. <laughs> the Backyard is an extremely mechanical and autonomous world of information that creates all possibilities and determines all events. Consider infinite potential occurrences being reduced to a single outcome by an automated process of discards and selections. So it's the backyard is the internet, got it. The results are determined calculations and thus they could be described as destiny. Despite the astronomically low probability of occurring, the phenomenon known as the Big Bang could be considered the result of all other outcomes being discarded. In other words, the backyard is a programming language and the universe in which we live is the software. If any normal human were to enter the backyard, they would instantly be crushed to death by the density of information contained within. All right, but they already said that that man went in there and left some left a cube. So they're lying. The first one. A being is created within the backyard at a point in time that would be impossible to discern using our world as a reference point. The template of a specific human woman is used to create the body and the soma is provided so that it may gain consciousness but some irregularities occur due to the intervention of mother. 
As such, Valentine is born. After performing a self-diagnostic, Valentine... This is Ram? Valentine concludes that she is not someone named Arya, but queries who Arya is, oh. as excess memories and emotions mm. appear to be present, containing feelings for someone named Frederick. With no way to interpret this residual data, emotional process... Way, okay, so... This... This place called the Backyard, which is a programming language, randomly creates a copy of Sol's old lover for no reason, and then releases them into the world called Valentine. Got it. ...is are put on hold until she can complete her objective to find a key for Mother. But there appears to be no exit. She wanders aimlessly for an undetermined period of time until she encounters a talkative, sleazy, black sphere named Lucifero. It follows her. Somewhere, an autonomous troublemaker, only referred to as Mr. A to protect his honor, accidentally and unconsciously causes a gate to appear, allowing Valentine to exit the backyard. Octo, what did you do? What did you do? Hmm? Explain yourself. Not your fault? It clearly is your fault. I'm watching the fucking video. She steps in through and arrives on Earth in the year 2186 AD. Forty dormant gears have vanished without explanation. Sin, who has grown into a cheerful but unrefined youth, travels with Soul, collecting bounties. They spot a wanted poster for Soul, which she interprets as a tasteless call for help from King Kai Kisk of Valyria. Once they arrive at the castle, however, they notice the area is abandoned. Sol feels a severe headache and is suddenly attacked by Valentine and her army of creatures called the Visuel. Sol initially loses his composure as Valentine's face is identical to Arya, but he regains it upon determining that this is in fact a stranger. She states that she's after the key and fights Sol to a stalemate before escaping, as she too begins to feel a headache. The Visuel army fights using Can a relate, familiar powerful chat. form of magic that uses tuning outside of the 12 steps. Sol and Sin are initially unable to fight at all, until a mysterious fox-eared yokai arrives and unlocks their ability to defeat this new enemy by optimizing the cords of their summoning magic. He introduces himself as Izuna, originating from Underworld Hill, a pseudo-space dimension close to the backyard. It is home to other magic-based life forms called yokai. Signs seem to suggest that Underworld... Okay, hang on, this is starting to get a little bit... I was like following it, and then it's like... It's gone like this, and then it's like, boom. It's fucking... It's taken off. So... <coughs> just to clarify... The backyard, which is just a world with a coding language, creates a villain called Valentine, who is looking for a key, and then Axel accidentally lets her out, and then, uh, they, because she came from this other place, they use different magic, so Sol couldn't fight her. And then a rabbit comes from a different place, which is also an alternate dimension, and then just gives him the ability to fight them by a fox. It doesn't. Who fucking cares? He has ears. Uh, by making them also be able to summon things. Is this canon? Hill is actually man-made, and that Izuna is the guardian yes. spirit. Yes. Pain. Incarnation of an island that used to be known as Japan. Rare irregularities in the backyard can result in this kind of phenomena. Hang on. Did I just hear that he is the reincarnation of uh, Japan, end quote? As in, the entire country of Japan. Okay, good. 2187 AD. Inside Illyria Castle, the bodies of King Kai's convict hammer guard are strewn about and the king himself is sealed with a powerful spell. Next to him, Raven, the undying disease, is inexplicably present. 
He observes that Sol has now acquired the backyard's abilities and vanishes, asking Sol if he has a message for that man. As the seal holding the king is an advanced encrypted cord, Izuna suggests that they get help from one of the world's foremost magic experts, Dr. Paradigm. They journey to the Ganymede Archipelago using Izuna's teleportation magic. Sol's hatred of Gears causes some initial tensions, but Dr. Paradigm's observations about the ongoing crisis provide unparalleled insight. He correctly identifies Sol as Frederick, the scientist from a hundred years ago. Sol reveals that the usage of limitless energy without knowing its source was an alarming prospect to scientists and scholars at the time, but humanity was too desperate to look a gift horse in the mouth following the dawn of revival. It was then hypothesized that the source of magic was a superior dimension, thus creating the backyard theory. Dr. Paradigm explains that the cube he discovered appears to be a control interface where man could manipulate this world, and that the survival in dense information space could be made possible with the original gear cells specifically created by that man. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> we've established that that man can literally live inside the coding world and change history and future present as he sees fit with this fucking command block. No, only soul? What do you mean? What when you mean no only soul? The other that man was the one that made soul. What do you how you're assuming that he just couldn't do it to himself as well? Dr. Paradigm frees King Kai. Sin immediately asks if his mother is safe, but when Kai can't say for sure, Sin chews him out as a king incapable of protecting anything and leaves. <laughs> Kai then explains that a few days ago, Dizzy began to fade away like the other vanishing gears. So to save her, he used up the Thunder Seal's magic to create a temporal barrier, holding her in stasis mid-disintegration. Dr. Paradigm, suspecting Dizzy had been kept alive as another weaponized gear in the hands of the government, explains that she is a complete backup of justice, so she too contains the special gear cells that would allow one to enter the cube. Valentine must thus be absorbing gears in search of these cells. Dr. Paradigm moves to destroy Dizzy to mitigate all risks, but Kai stops him, openly proclaiming that he has fallen in love with a gear. Dizzy can still be saved if Valentine is defeated, but Valentine abducts and mind controls Sin instead. Since he too is a descendant of Justice, she retrieves the key from his gear cells and leaves him behind to deal with Sol. I don't give a damn about your family problems, but Kai is honest with all when it comes to righteousness. This is a manga? <clears throat> After defeating a brainwashed Sin, the group chases after her, but she's already accessed a dimensional <laughs> just kicked the show. gate to the backyard. Fighting alongside his father, Sin begins to respect him slightly more, but none are able to open the gate until that man appears. I told you, Chad, you don't fucking listen. The gear maker himself appears before Sol, who immediately prepares to engage. 
Sol remarks that his appearance has really fallen, and that man accepts it, as well as the blame for the Crusades, and turning Sol into a gear. Damn, son. However, he explains that there's no time to deal with any of this, because Valentine, the Universal Will's offspring, needs to be stopped. Before any answers can be given, Batman casts an effect on the group that allows them to pass beyond the gate and sends them off. With this spell, they can survive the information density of the backyard, now that they've spent some time attuned to it. Soul, Izuna, Dr. Paradigm, and eventually Sin enter the gate and arrive at the edge of isolated space. Valentine has begun the process of unlocking the cube, but okay. is interrupted. <clears throat> Soul rushes ahead while the others keep her busy. Unable to understand why she keeps failing, Valentine wonders if the emotional processes she put on hold are the cause. She suddenly gets furious and changes into a larger armored form, loosely reminiscent of justice. Due to the similarities in the programming of the cube and Soul's own gear cells, he is able to understand the unlock process, but short on time, he simply breaks it completely. <laughs> Valentine loses her purpose and prepares to self-destruct while closing the gate. Soul stays behind to stop her final form with his dragon install while the others escape. Shit. So well, similar if you'd have done this from the beginning. Valentine is destroyed. With no way out, Soul thinks of Arya. That man appears and tells Soul he needs to survive to face the universal will in the coming merciless apocalypse. He then tells Frederick to live on as the flame of corruption. Sol asks if he was behind Valentine resembling Arya. That man says not at all, because Arya had already been killed by the two of them. Sol swears to kill the gear maker next time, and corrects him on the name as the gate opens to send him home. He isn't Frederick. His name My is My name Sol. is Sol. Sol bad guy. <laughs> Did he, so he gave himself the surname bad guy, right? <clears throat> With the crisis averted, no? Dr. Paradigm begins the process of saving Dizzy. Kai offers Dr. Paradigm was the government? in Illyria for Gears to live in the open for the sake of his wife and child. Soul thinks back on that man's words and wonders. Asuka, <clears throat> what are you thinking? All right, this one, this video was a little messy. Okay. This one was a little me This one was a little messy. Compared to the other two, it was harder to follow. Okay? Didn't make it didn't make that much sense. Overture. The first half was fine. The second half of this video, the overture stuff was kind of fucking weird, okay? Let's jump into the next one. A world separate from our own, yet somehow controlling it. The backyard. Hidden behind its gates are the eternal truths of good and of evil, of creation and destruction. 
of chaos the likes of which mankind has never seen. In a time long past, a philosopher entered this other realm. He returned, and through shuddering breaths, he spoke. No evil should touch this place. This philosopher sealed all that the backyard was into a single tome. His hope was that mankind would never stumble upon its power. With that, the path to the backyard was forever barred, and peace once again blessed our world. Until someone found the book, but right? Followed, right? 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 sage could never have predicted. For evil came not from a human who discovered the book, but from inside the backyard itself. <gasps> Gasp. Heaven or hell. Get ready to rock. Can we give Vost Edge XT? The memories of Aska R. Cruz, Isotope and Isolation. In a time long gone, before the end of friendships and a century of war, Frederick Balsara, Aria Hale, and Aska R. Cruz had a philosophical discussion about the nature of creation, evolution, and the guiding influence of something in between. Aria, at the start of her workday, notes that the other two had not slept and that she was entering a discussion in its fifth hour. As a thought exercise, Aska asks Aria if she believes all products of the natural world are accidents of low probability. Aria concurs that this is stochastically correct. Aska hypothesizes that though we have never identified and measured the existence of a creator, something theoretical could exist that defines the outcomes of all natural events in minute detail. Arya thinks it would be reasonable enough to call this theoretical thing God. Aska then points out that within a given evolutionary model, there sometimes exists a missing link, where species A becomes species C, but evidence of step B is missing. This might be caused by a number of factors as identified by the theoretical God, but he finds the idea of a third-party interference in the process to be a compelling consideration, as it is entirely possible that an outside factor could force species A to become C by rewriting DNA. Aska dubs this factor Apocalypse. Okay. Arya considers the theory. Apocalypse already has um, a meaning, multiple meanings. Uh, I'm not sure you should take that word and just apply it to something else willy-nilly when you are a super scientist. That's just my thoughts on the situation. But deems it too wildly impractical. Aska notes that throughout history, considerable numbers of species with missing links have gone extinct and that the intervention of apocalypse could lead to ruin. Frederick interjects that Aska's statements are in fact absurd and Arya shouldn't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so good, dude. You should be the one that chooses your own path. No one else's hand should decide for you. It's that simple. Good, says Aska. I feel the same way. Aska awakens in a dark room, inside a coffin-like device overflowing with colorless liquid with hundreds of superfine metal threads connected to his hippocampus. Raven, who is standing nearby, presses a switch, removing the lid from the device. Aska sits up. His body's been rejuvenated once again, and he feels restored. Asuka is that man. <clears throat> Am I just... Wait, did they did they reveal that before, or did I just... I missed that part? Okay, yeah. Stored. However, <clears throat> the permanent memory loss associated with this process continues to be a complication of extending his life. Thus, Asuka is in the process of backing up his memories, and notes to Raven that this one in particular has elicited some nostalgia. Baptisma 13 Epilogue Aska and Raven stand in the backyard after the destruction of Valentine. Aska feels that things will not go as smoothly next time, as there's no telling when the next Valentine will appear, or if there will be tens of thousands of them. He wonders if the flame of corruption will be the one to end things. Raven remarks that the dragon install has started to encroach and vows his protection. 
but Aska says that won't be needed. History will write its own course, and it'll be Raven's responsibility to witness it. The time of apocalypse approaches, and Arya won't wait any longer. They have explained, like, every single character except Raven. <laughs> like, there's a reason. <laughs> every character has had a reason that they... They didn't. Don't say they did. They said he got shot with a bunch of arrows in a medieval war and just woke up immortal. They didn't explain fucking anything. He's just vibing. Everyone else, they're like, yeah, he's got B cells. She uh, was the baby of a gear. Like, he's got gear cells. He can channel key. This guy got fucked in the medieval era and just woke up. And now he's he can't die. And people are like, why? And they're like, unclear. <clears throat> Twenty one eighty seven AD. In the aftermath of Baptisma thirteen, the UN holds an emergency session. Kai Kisk, first king of Illyria, proposes human coexistence with Gears. The proposal is defeated and never mentioned to the public, but as a result, many heads of state begin to distrust Kai. World powers begin to develop their own countermeasures to provide humanity with defense against the unknown. The Conclave initiates the Cypress Project, a weapons development program for magic-based firearms usable by those without magical aptitude. Furthermore, magical constructs called Opus Units are developed. Effective in traditional combat as well as magic support, they're designed to obey without question. Production output for both the Cypress and Opus projects takes place in a secret research lab named Frasco II, overseen by Leon Mining, a nefarious founder of the Post-War Administration Bureau with political ties to the Assassin's Guild. Starting with Illyria, shipments of Opus units are soon deployed to every major city globally, as per the orders of the Sanctus Maximus Populi. The Sanctus Populi organization is not technically a religion, as they have no doctrine and require no faith but they're nonetheless treated with the same devotion and trust by the general population. While vast amounts of knowledge have been lost to time, after the dawn of revival, humanity never forgot those who they relied on amidst the chaos. It was only natural that the apostles that saved humanity would soon be surrounded by devout followers. These followers became the founding body of the Sanctus Populi organization. Okay. Currently, though the Conclave holds decision-making power over world governments, the Sanctus Populi's leadership position, Sanctus Maximus, holds the true final executive decision. For eight years, from 2169 to 2177, the position of Sanctus Maximus was held by Happiness the 27th, a beloved, gentle, and fair man. But in Just give him a normal name, man. Just give him a name. Just give him a fucking name. Just... Just name him. Uh, names are really easy. Daryl was great. Just... Why is he called happiness? <clears throat> I... In his final days, he deteriorated... He's called Happiness the 27th. That means there were six, 26 other people called Happiness before him. That's even worse. Deteriorated both mentally and physically, eventually dying of fatigue. He is succeeded by his appointed cardinal. Ariels. Ariel is known for being calm and virtuous. However, the Sanctus Maximus is not the only one preparing countermeasures in the wake of Baptisma 13. 
She's a font. Guilty Gear. God damn it. Fast Edge XT. God damn it. Is this the is this the pachinko machine? Nearly a century ago, in anticipation of justice, Soul created the outrage. Now, with the emergence of Val- The Pachinko game is- They added canon lore to the Pachinko game. It's a legitimate part of the timeline of this game. What do you mean, obviously? Take that back. Valentine from the backyard, <clears throat> and Asuka insinuating that there are more to come, Soul seeks the outrage components, also known as the sacred treasures, to upgrade his fire seal sword into something capable of handling whatever else comes from the backyard. Dark Even though this is fucking, like, this lore is just obscenely ridiculous, right? Even though it's this ridiculous, and they even attached Canon Law to a pachinko machine, it still makes more sense than Kingdom Hearts. Dr. Power, just think about that. Prime introduces Soul to a gunsmith dog capable of helping construct weapons according to Soul's designs. In homage to Junkyard, the unrefined slab he used during his Holy Order days, Soul has the fire seal encased in another magic amplifier and christens it the Junkyard Dog Mark II. Soul and Sin receive intel from Dr. Paradigm, detailing that the Conclave is made up of four sages. Axis, the first. Libraria, the second. Baldius, the third. And their leader, Cronus, the fourth. They currently possess the Flashing Fang, an outrage component that amplifies light magic. May has additional intel, saying that they actually have more than one outrage component, and that they might be kept in a secret North European location called Hardened Fort. The Conclave appears to have also put a bounty out on Sol's head, resulting in a number of bounty hunters gunning for him, from unknown soldiers to a few familiar faces, such as Bridget. Soul also crosses paths with Milia Rage, who's seeking truth surrounding rumors <clears throat> that Zato's body has been stolen. Through Cronus, we learn that the Conclave have appointed themselves the only true leaders of humanity, and they're awaiting something called St. Elmo's Fire oh, got to become gods. <clears throat> they possess three outrage parts, the Flashing Fang, the Dominator, and Baikal. They believe King... So Soul made the all eight part. Soul made the anti gear weapon, right? Because he was a scientist, and then he broke into eight parts. So it's technically his. Kai knows too much, and will need to be put down, but it's too early to do so. Soul, however, can't be allowed to be an obstacle to them any longer. Soul and Sin infiltrate Hardened Fort and encounter Baldius, who taunts them and attacks using forbidden magic allowing him to fight with a power closely resembling Eddie, named Cerberus. It is unknown whether or not this is made possible due to the Conclave research into Zato One's corpse. Despite Baldius's taunting, he reveals nothing of the Conclave's intentions. Though he's able to absorb Sol's Fafnir attack, he's ultimately outmatched I and melts away into a puddle to footage, dude. I... His injuries prove to be <clears throat> fatal, however, and he dies shortly after bolstering the resolve of the remaining sages. A teacup is placed <sighs> upside down in his memory at future Conclave <laughs> They killed him, so now he gets upside down teacup. retrieves the flashing fang and integrates it into his sword, finalizing it as Junkyard Dog Mark III. When activated- Wait, so he's got two, two pieces of the anti-gear in his weapon? Yes? Oh, it's just greedy.
No wonder he's so fucking busted. The outer casing opens up to reveal an integrated fire seal, alongside parts that resemble Bridget's revolving yo-yo. The combined usage of two outrage components allows its original purpose to be fulfilled. A portable weapon capable of firing the all-powerful spell, Saint Oratorio. Guilty Gear Exert. Sign. Here we go. <clears throat> We haven't met Bedman yet. Buckle up, it's time to rock. October 21st, 2187 AD. A being called Ramlethal Valentine announces her existence to the world publicly, broadcasting a declaration of war on humanity. October 23rd. The Conclave meets in a location known as the Tea Room <clears throat> to discuss their secret negotiations with Ramlethal and their intentions to rewrite the history of mankind. They assess all particular persons of interest who might interfere with their plans. Eno reflects that though she's gone through the integration point and killed Ramlethal many times in many timelines, it does not change the outcome of a dull, gray world. Babylon, five years in the future, with humanity nowhere in sight. However, bringing that man into this time cycle has finally caused some change as she realizes that Sol has become much stronger than usual and that she's unable to kill Ramlethal. She's ecstatic at the prospect of no longer being obsessed with this world's outcome. Suddenly, a time slip track that she set goes off, bringing Axel Lowe to 2192 AD. <laughs> Axel Lowe time slips to 2192 AD to the city of Babylon. So does Axel, does Axel like, how does Axel work? Like, does, is it, like, does he fucking just sneeze? And he's like, oh, fuck. Like, does it sneak? Does he know it's coming? Like, or is it literally just like, basically, he just like sneezes and he's in a different time? Man, poor guy. Five years in the future. A voice reaches out to Axel and the man. Every single day for him is just a fucking trip, dude. He just wants to Netflix and chill, but he accidentally sneezed. And Netflix doesn't exist anymore. Now what the fuck is he gonna do? Oh, he sneezed again and Eno's trying to kill him. Calling himself the original, asks him to deliver a message to that man. Axel then time slips directly into a dream world in which he's almost killed by an immensely powerful enigma called Bedman. But he's pulled out at the last second by a time slip trap set by Eno. Shocked that Axel knows about the existence of the original, she agrees to let him deliver his message, ignoring his request to instead be sent back to his home in Cotswolds, England, 1998. 
Is he originally from 1998? I thought he was born and then he like slipped back to 1998. Nine ninety eight is when he started slipping. Wait, so he's actually just from the normal world. Everyone's got nine to fives. He fucking supports England Football Club. Like, you know, Netflix is like on the horizon. He's chilling, man. Will Smith has got a new album out. Poor guy. Then you just get catapulted into a future. Potemkin is assigned to investigate <coughs> Gamlethal on behalf of Set. However, due to Bedman's interference, he spends three days trapped inside the nightmare theater of Bedman's slumber, delaying Zep from acting without intel until it's too late. Bedman reveals himself to be a clandestine operator and an agent serving an unknown client. Possessing an acute intellect and expansive vocabulary, he excels at identifying weaknesses and exposing them. He appears to always be silent and asleep, carried by his magically weaponized bed frame. His silence is only apparent to those in the waking world, however. In the nightmare theater of his permanent slumber, he is a braggadocious, condescending, and long-winded individual. それに聞いていた通りってことは単独の輩じゃねえ。バックは言語員だから。ハハ、面白いな君は。僕のクライアントが気にかける<笑><笑> I'm resident sleeping. No, you don't do test long conversations. <clears throat> he appears to be intimately aware of the nature of the world, and with this knowledge, frighteningly powerful, especially to those trapped in his nightmare. It is unknown whether or not anything can wake him up. Chips Enough sets out to establish his kingdom on the world Chips stage enough. by defeating this new global threat. <clears throat> On the way to confronting Ramlethal, he runs into May and decides to escort her. <laughs> In the ruins of Japan, Ramlethal refers to May as Japanese girl, a word which May doesn't understand. Ramlethal says that it means she's still somewhat useful, but it's also something that the rest of humanity considers a disease. Wait, Millie being Japanese is a disease? Venom, who <clears throat> informs her that Zato One has been resurrected by the Conclave. Venom has been assigned to guard Zato's location, however, so they agree to meet again on the battlefield as enemies with the same goal. In a secret lab known as the Conclave's Opera House, Zato-1 floats in a dimensional prison with Forbidden Beast Eddie, trying to recall his existence. He chooses to stay contained. The Conclave's stolen resurrection experiment has worked, resulting in Zato being the first human to have his soul returned to his body. However, his mind and personality have been wiped clean, with only trace words and concepts remaining. While Zato's return to life has zero significance to the Conclave in specific, the circumstances of him being host to a bonded life form are the true reason why he was used as a test subject. Oh, uh, okay. Suddenly remembering the name Milia and sensing her nearby, he exits the prison, where he's reunited with her, Venom, and later on, Slayer. While Zato no longer has his former personality or complete memories, his desire to protect Milia remains strong. Faust receives an invitation to Slayer's Manor, Villa Vampire, 
Slayer tips him off that the death of his young patient was staged malpractice orchestrated by the Conclave and executed by Zato I, who somehow lives. Faust then confronts the recently freed Zato at the Opera House. Zato's behavior is surprisingly... <laughs> Faust said, I'm quite frank, I feel an urge to slaw you. He <clears throat> tells Faust to kill him if he wishes, as he has every right to, but he asks for a bit of time first. How come he's like... How come in x he's like actually in shape? Like he's got some muscle definition. He's got his fucking shit together. And then in fucking Stripe, he's literally a corpse. <clears throat> he then explains that Faust's research led him to the ultimate procedure, resurrection. Not only was this discovery integral to the con- uh, no, look, he literally has normal hands, but in XO, he's got like claws. Claves ultimate goals. They also he's like super. He's like a. He's like a fucking anyone. ghoul. Thus, a conspiracy was hatched against Doctor Baldhead, and that soon they intend to use this power. King Kai Kisk of Illyria gathers intel on Ramlethal and puts a plan into action. He's suspicious of the timing of her appearance alongside the recently activated Opus units as well, and concludes that the government can no longer be trusted. Kai prepares 300,000 world dollars and contacts Soul Bad Guy to hire his services. Soul demands one million. Together, alongside Sin Kisk, they journey to the ruins of Japan to confront Ramlethal. World dollars, dude. <clears throat> Oh, the foot thing was so much worse in Exod. October 28th, 2187 AD. Ramlethal is defeated in the ruins of Japan, but Seoul catches on to the fact that they've been baited. Who declares war <laughs> on the world and then sits waiting in the middle of nowhere? Ramlethal concedes that the outcome of this battle was irrelevant as she was only a distraction. Oh, is this the fire that the Conclave was talking about? No? Suddenly, a tremendous floating fortress known as the Cradle appears above the city of Babylon for a brief moment, then disappears, emitting a massive information shockwave. 
all living beings in the city are atomized in the process. Holy shit. A monumental black sigil appears in the sky, identical to the one seen above the ruins of Japan, and the one seen when Dragon Install's soul activates the true power of the Fire Seal. Contact has been made with the backyard. Kai, Soul, and Sin observe in horror as countless innocents are killed. Kai exclaims that everything is happening just like she said. Could she have been telling the truth? Who's Soul she? Oxen. Oh, my bad. What the hell he knows. But before they can react, Ramlethal grabs Soul and flies upwards beginning a self-destruct sequence. I think it's time we died. Let's go together. That's it. That's the end. Guess they died. All right. Uh, the next one is the final video in Wooly's series, I guess, currently. And then maybe we'll have to watch something else to fill the last gap. I don't know. Um... The next one is called uh, Events of Guilty Gear Exerd Sign. Ramlethal Valentine has been defeated only one week after her declaration of war. In Babylon, strange gray ash is raining from the sky, and the once bustling city is now a deserted wasteland. With no survivors found, but all structures still intact, the world watches on in confusion. Some believe it to be Ramlethal's doing. Others say it's caused by a change in St. Elmo's fire, but only a select few realize the truth. The Conclave has finally played its hand. The Cradle has awakened, and the Last Dawn has begun. They I just got... Shook. I just got a message from Dyrus that says, I just started playing Faust today if you want to play sometime. I'm like, dude, I started playing Faust yesterday. <coughs> Heaven or hell. Get ready, Get ready to run. Guilty Gear Excerpt Sign Story Mode. Moments before Ramlethal's declaration of war on October 21st, she meets with the Conclave to see if they're mentally prepared to proceed with the common goal of activating the Cradle. Libraria has doubts because of the projected casualty count, but Axis chides her, emphasizing that there isn't enough time to make humanity understand. Libraria concedes that the Conclave only exists because of what they intend to do today. Cronus then signals the beginning of the Last Dawn. Days later, following the destruction of Babylon, King Leo Whitefang is scrambling to get search and rescue efforts underway when he's contacted by King Kai Kisk, requesting approval for temporary release of Elfelt Valentine. Leo Who? declines, so <clears throat> Kai decides to act alone to authorize her release. Elfelt's constraints are removed, and she immediately deploys from Kai's Royal Fleet One airship. Within seconds, she's able to nullify. So I'm trying to understand. That every all the people that are made in the cradle, or the all the sorry, all the people that come from the backyard have the surname Valentine. Is that like the takeaway? So you got like original Valentine, FL Valentine must have come from the backyard at some point, and then Ramlethal had also come from the backyard when the fucking thing went off. <clears throat> Ramlethal self-destruct attack on Saul and subdue her. I 
れどうしてエルアルフェルト、like her sister Ramlethal、are creations beholden to mother、just like the original Valentine of Baptisma 13。Unlike the so the female scientist at the start is technically mother, and they're all made in her image. No, mother is the universal will. Oh, okay, <clears throat> unclear. All we know is that this one's got great booba. Okay. The others, however, Alfelt was born with no knowledge of her true mission up until her memories were unlocked on the day of her wedding. Finding herself at odds with her programmed role to bring about human omnicide, she decides to leave her fiance, a death metal vocalist, at the altar. She then finds Kai. Her fiance is a death metal vocalist. Oh, wait, of course, of course she is. I. He is. Chooses to warn him <clears throat> of the coming dangers instead. We flash back to a research lab in 2014. Arya、It's、asks、Dice、Frederick、Games. if he's ever wanted to be a bird. He says no. But flying would be cool, so why not a cockroach? Arya calls him unromantic. Aska arrives, and the conversation shifts towards human experiences. What would you do if the world was going to disappear tomorrow? Frederick replies, "Stop whatever's ending the world, or die trying." Arya then says, "You mean spend it with someone you love?" A year later, in 2015. Frederick celebrates the creation of Aska's stabilized gear cells, and the end of human illness. But Aska is concerned about them being weaponized. They agree that they'd rather destroy the research than allow that to happen. Aska tries to tell Frederick something about Arya, but the moment passes. Another year later, in 2016, Frederick discovers Arya's terminal illness. She doesn't want him to drop everything and find a cure, nor put her in cryo sleep. She just wants to not be alone, and spend her time with Frederick. Ah. In Bedman's dream world, he analyzes the history of Soul Bad Guy, and reports to his unknown client that he finds him fascinating. Shortly afterward, alone, he ambushes a gathering of Slayer, Milia Rage, and Venom. Who have decided to report their intel on the cradle to Illyria? Bedman's client notices that he's having fun fighting assassins, and notes the similarity between him and his sister, Delilah. Bedman is displeased at the topic, but reiterates that his sister is the reason they must create an absolute world. Aboard Royal、okay. Fleet One, Sol, <clears throat> Kai, and Sin hear the radio reporting a Babylon cover story crediting the Illyrian forces. Keeping the existence of Elfelt a secret, some of the public believe the catastrophe might have been caused by Saint Elmo's fire, a naturally occurring giant lightning bolt that strikes once every 13 years. It's celebrated for once saving several members of the Holy Order during the Crusades, as it struck a group of gears, giving humanity the upper hand. To prevent it from causing massive casualties in a populated area, Illyria Castle itself was built to be a massive lightning rod. To attract it, that's cool. Elfelt further explains the truth about the conclave to Kai, Sol, and Sin. Ramlethal escapes her interrogation room and threatens to destroy the ship itself, but Elfelt once again nullifies her abilities, as they are sisters with similar programming. Without any ability to fight back, all Ramlethal can do is talk. Sin, who quickly becomes friends with Elfelt, attempts to reach out to Ramlethal's emotional side as well. And gives her a mage hound, a magical puppy that keeps biting her. Soul warns Sin that these Valentines aren't human, aren't to be trusted, and to expect betrayal. Sin doesn't care and points out that Soul's just projecting his own insecurities. Hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, King Leo Whitefang debriefs U.S. President Vernon on the captured Valentines. Not long afterwards, the cradle is detected reappearing over the Black Sea. A transmission comes in from Major Lyle of the Istanbul Battalion, en route to Babylon. They're near enough to have a visual on the target. King Leo commands him to approach cautiously and only provide intel, 
but Major Lyle defies the order and goes on full offensive. The cradle activates again and its energy sphere engulfs the area. Johnny contacts Foss for help with May's unknown ailment, which appears to only be affecting Japanese people. Faust looks at her patient record and realizes that Japanese colony residents have been receiving a placebo instead of correct treatment. Oh, that's fucked. May, in the meantime, distraught mm. after Ramlethal called her a disease, decides to leave home to keep her friends safe. But Chip convinces her to return. As they reunite with the jellyfish pirates, Bedman appears, having defeated the assassins single-handedly. Wait, Bedman's hella strong. But Chip stronger. <gasps> Zato. Johnny and Chip are about to lose when Zato interferes, saving them. Bedman escapes. Oh shit. So he hurt Milio and just pissed Zato off and then had to run. Eno brings Axel Lowe to the backyard, where he meets Asuka and delivers a message from the original, as it can only be heard by the intended recipient. What? Ha so, so Axel was like, yeah, I'll deliver this message. And it was that. And then he just replays what dial up sounds. What was that? Octo help us out, man. Unclear. To be honest, though, to be honest, if he is from the Cotswolds, that's basically what they sound like. It's indecipherable noise, but Asuka understands it and thanks Axel by offering some sweets to go with his tea with flavors that can only be experienced in the backyard. Axel, fearful, politely declines and asks to leave, wondering how the man behind Justice and the Crusades could be so polite. <clears throat> Bonding over their unusual parental situations, Al tells Sin if he ever feels like calling Kai dad someday, he should do it. She then explains that her mother is not a real person, but actually an implanted concept she's programmed to obey. Her abilities allow her to find people with the right code, like Soul or Sin. But when she ran away from her mission and used it, it somehow led her to Kai instead. 2074, the day Justice awakens. At a relaunched gear project facility, Asuka looks on during a test activation of Justice when something goes horribly wrong. An entity from within the backyard attempts to make contact. It was identical to the Dawn of Revival, except this time, the manifestation of a divine will now had a perfect vessel to birth itself. Oh, okay. So I see where this is tying in. So, the events that caused all of the electronics and technology to malfunction in Y2K was the backyard. They, humanity had brought technology so close to the backyard that it could almost make the leap. I see. Into, no longer confined to electronics. Suddenly, the information density detected within Justice spikes to the equivalent of a galaxy cluster. Mm. Within seconds, using DNA mm. data acquired from Justice, the being begins replicating additional bodies by the hundreds, simultaneously manifesting them into reality in her immediate surroundings, floating above Japan. 
Aska realizes that at this rate of replication, within the hour, humanity will be lost. Calling out to Justice as Aria, he tells her that he's switching to manual override, charges her gamma ray to maximum output plus 40, and gives the command to fire. His lab tech says this will vaporize the entire country and can't bring herself to do it. Aska apologizes for asking her and fires it himself. Hang on, so Justice isn't making the other bodies? It's just the... There was so much energy involved in the creation of Justice, the awakening of Justice, that... It just started creating life. I think Tribbin just missed reveal who Justice is. Is Justice the lady scientist? Yes. I miss... I... Her to Kai instead. It's Soul's wife? Does Soul know? The day Justice awakens. <clears throat> At a relaunched Gear Project facility, Asuka looks on during a test activation of Justice when something goes horribly wrong. An entity from within the backyard attempts to make contact. It was identical to the Dawn of Revival, except this time, the manifestation of a divine will now had a perfect vessel to birth itself into, no longer confined to electronics. Suddenly, the information density detected within Justice spikes to the equivalent of a galaxy cluster. Within seconds, using DNA data acquired from Justice, the being begins replicating additional bodies by the hundreds. Okay, so it... Yeah, okay. Simultaneously manifesting them into reality in her immediate surroundings, floating above Japan. So it's just making... It's just cloning her. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Pen. And because it basically... So when they activate justice, the back got the backyard manages to possess justice because the level of technology lets it make the jump. And then while possessing justice starts cloning itself to make an army that could wipe out humanity. So panicking, he reaches out to Sol's wife and says, blow up. Because otherwise the world's going to end. Aska realizes that at this rate of replication, within the hour, humanity will be lost. Calling out to Justice as Aria, he tells her that he's switching to manual override, charges her gamma ray to maximum output plus 40, and gives the command to fire. His lab tech says this will vaporize the entire country and can't bring herself to do it. Aska apologizes for asking her and fires it himself. Arya screams in confusion as a blinding light engulfs everything. Kai receives a secret data log from Leo. It's revealed that Major Lyle's battalion inexplicably survived the cradle, and that their attacks were deflected by Absolute Defense Felion, an extremely specialized spell that repels everything physical and magical that can only be performed by the Sanctus Maximus or a Conclave member. Oh shit. Kai decides it isn't safe to discuss further plans. So the Conclave is protecting the fucking weapon. Until they're out of reach from Conclave surveillance. In the one place off the grid. Zep. Sol disagrees with Kai's methods. To which Kai then asks Sol bluntly if he's only after revenge. And if he sincerely doesn't care what happens to the rest of the world. <laughs> あの男に復讐を果たすためだけに私たちと行動を共にしているのか。なんだ急に知りたいな。お前は本当に世界の運命に興味がないのか。つまらないことを聞くな。つまらなくなどない。確かにお前はあの男に改造を施され、人間では
それで心や魂まで変化が起きてるわけではないはずだはあだからなんだお前を信じたいんだ最後ならきっと人々の剣となって戦ってくれるのだと何を言い出すのかと思えば笑わせるな Sol says he exists to kill all gears and that man. Kai asks what makes his wife and child so different. Why not destroy them? Sol says the conversation's over, but Kai tells him that he can't run、Aww. from the truth. Sol's just the Sundae good guy, dude. <laughs> Sol threatens Kai. Kai tells him to try. He then asks him what comes next after revenge. Sol says he doesn't think that far ahead. Kai tells Sol that he knows nothing about his past or even his real name, but tomorrow always comes. And when it does, Sol has a home with his family. He still got his fucking headband that says, w a s it say free or something? <laughs> Sin and El spend more time with Ramlethal in the interrogation room and eventually get her to open up by introducing a hamburger from fast food Danny Missiles. <laughs> Over time, they grow closer. Hell thanks Sin for what he's doing. He asks why he's attempting to befriend an enemy. Sin explains that he empathizes with the feeling of being thought of as a tool or a machine that has to suppress its emotions to not be abandoned. President Gabriel personally receives Kai and Sol as they arrive at Zep. He informs them. That an unexpected guest, Zato One, arrived earlier and is currently waiting to speak to them. Zato One explains that he's only alive due to the machinations of the Conclave, and thanks to that, he can shed light on their motives. They control the cradle, and inside the cradle is the body of the God of Destruction, Justice. Oh my、Evidently, god, okay. Since the Conclave <clears throat> aren't satisfied with already covertly controlling the world politically, their goal must be a world. Where they control all free thought as well. The resurrection of justice, who has already demonstrated the power to globally mind control an entire species, might allow them to accomplish this. The resurrection experiment with Zato and Eddie taught them how to bind their own soul to her body and assume full control. The possibilities of this plan strike Soul, Kai, and Gabriel as dangerously plausible. But just then, They receive a report that Bedman has infiltrated Zep by his lonesome. Send Potemkin! Send Potemkin! Oh shit, he's gonna do it himself. <clears throat> Holy shit! Gabriel tracks down Bedman, who's startled by the strength of Gabriel's bare hands. He attempts to escape, but Gabriel physically stops him, slamming him to the ground. <laughs> He is brought in for questioning, but ultimately to no avail. 
これほど無意味な尋問は類いはあるまいな。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>キャラクターに言うのは、キャラクターに言うのは、キャラクターに言うのは、キャラクターに言うのは、Explaining that things have not gone according to plan, but he still succeeded in reaching her. He explains that she failed her mission and did not self destruct, so it's mother's will that she be erased to stop any further info from being compromised. Ram explains that it's because her and Elle's powers cancel each other out, but she accepts mother's decision. She asks if she can take her dog with her as a last request. Bedman is startled by this blatant display of emotions and becomes immediately upset with his client upon realization that Ramlethal showed signs of a personality. Cute puppy sound. <clears throat> Suddenly, he hears Sin entering the room and hides. Bedman watches as Sin has a heart to heart with Ram. To help her understand the new feelings she's experiencing. Sin making moves dude and all the hot chicks. What? <laughs> Bedman interrupts and drags them both into his dream world. He then decides to teach her the meaning of the word replacement. <laughs> Apologetically, he kills her mage hound puppy, then creates a new identical one with a summoning spell. When the dog doesn't bite her, she realizes something's wrong. どうして同じ犬なのに何が違うのそうだこれが代わりということだでも君は前の犬が好きだったんだよねみんながそれぞれ違うの私も<笑> I don't understand. Is Bedman good or bad? I can't figure it out, dude. He's like, why the fuck didn't you blow up, bitch? You should die. And she's like, man, I don't know about that. I like this dog. Then he's like, I killed the dog. And she's like, man, that's really sad. And he's like, yeah, see, the dog's unique. And she's like, so I'm unique? What the fuck does he want? What's he doing? Bedman goes off on his client, forgiving Valentine's emotions, asking her what the hell she was thinking, then tells her that she can finish the show on her own. She apologizes, admitting fault, and reassures him that he's necessary to complete the absolute world. Bedman. Oh, so he's pissed off at his client for giving what he thought was. Mindless creatures' emotions because now he feels bad killing them, I guess, right? And accepts her apology. In the Illyrian War, well, room, psycho. Leo introduces President Vernon to Kai's requested help, Dr. Paradigm. Immediately, Paradigm begins a complete analysis of the cradle events so far. He concludes that first, the cradle is not only carrying the body of justice, there are other life signs as well. Furthermore, the attack on Babylon was not an attack, but actually a means of transportation. 
Lastly, the remains of the victims of Babylon left behind gray dust, which is exactly what happens when normal life enters the backyard. But Lyle's unit survived their encounter, due in part to being one of the forces that fought alongside Kai during Baptisma 13. They all received special blessings of protection against magic tuning from the backyard. Oh, okay. That the cradle is hiding. So everyone from that city didn't die. They got teleported to the backyard. In the backyard, but must reappear in our reality once every 26 hours to come up for air. And that presents the perfect chance to turn the tables. Vernon is thoroughly impressed. No, they dusted. Then proceeded to die. Well, yeah, I mean, the information in the backyard is too strong for humans, so they would die, but they went to the backyard, right? Impressed and remarks <clears throat> that he may have been too quick to judge Kai when he spoke of coexistence with Gears. Dr. Paradigm also casually reveals that the Opus units deployed worldwide are mostly Gears. <laughs> which appropriately panics Vernon and Leo. By the way, all the soldiers you use for your, your entire police force, by the way, Gears. I know you hate Gears, but, uh... Together with a joint coalition of forces from various nations and Soul Bad Guy, they plan to intercept the next appearance of the Cradle, projected to be above the Northern Black Sea. With 420 tracking beacons, hundreds of international airships, Dr. Paradigm's secret weapon, and a half-magic, half-black tech, intercontinental ballistic missile named Vagilanda. Vagilanda. Named what? I'm sorry? Oh. <coughs> Vagilanda should be the destination of the missile. You know what I'm saying? So? Is he riding it? <clears throat> With Soul Batman <coughs> riding on top of it. The counterattack operation commences. Suddenly. Bedman appears and wastes no time as he begins destroying tons of beacons in the projected area. Leo attempts to stop him and falls short, but Johnny joins him and together they're able to stall Bedman for time. I'm still trying to think, is Johnny uh, the one male member of the jellyfish pirates yeah he like he's like looks off the may right he's the captain oh cool he just has a harem of hot pirate ladies then right and then like a grandma faust with help from the may ship manages to use his teleporting door to get a backup beacon placed just before the cradle appears. Let's go Faust! Allowing the air fleet to immediately surround it on all sides. Before Cronus can get his bearings, Paradigm's secret weapon that man appears before the cradle. Yeah, 
The missile. <laughs> After a quick greeting, that man tells Cronus to not waste any time attacking, and explains that while Absolute Defense Valiant can't be dispelled, it can be destroyed with the force of a spontaneous micro force. <laughs> Is that what the walls in Strive are built upon? Is it the same concept, do you think? Like the side, because the side walls are technically just like energy barriers, right? They're not actual physical walls. Unclear. <clears throat> Just a gameplay concept? You never know, man. The people writing this are fucking crazy. So, I mean, I'm, you know, discount nothing. Soul destroys the cradle's barrier, opening the way for all airships to open fire, vaporizing everything until the only thing left when the smoke clears. Wait, are they? Oh, they're inside it. That's where their tea party is. Mm. <laughs> is the corpse of justice, full-sized and stripped of her outrage armor. The tea room itself is physically located inside her body, and from there, Cronus begins to directly shift her into the backyard. That man moves to stop the escape, but Bedman suddenly jumps between them and teleports that man away. Sol is still recovering from his last attack, but stands to chase after Justice. Alpha flies in and pulls him away before he can, explaining that even if he won, it would be a suicide mission to leave him trapped in the backyard. At this point, he still must not know, right? Back in or the war room, does he know everyone meets to do who Justice is? Dr. Paradigm considers the operation a failure, and Vernon confirms that Justice looked just the same as she did he knows. when he saw her last during the Crusades. Al teaches Ram that it's okay to like yourself. Sol and Kai discuss the effect these recent attacks will have on the people. Kai laments that humanity is still healing scars from the Crusades, and that with magic they were working towards an overall improvement of the human condition. Sol says, yeah, things are stable and people have nice lives, but that comes at the cost of their freedom of choice. Kai asks if he then advocates for anarchy and chaos. Sol says no, but eventually people go from appreciating what you give them to expecting it, and then they get scared of losing it. Is that how we should live? Kai replies that not all people have the strength to stand on their own.
何もかも破壊しろと本能が指図してくるこれを止めるにはあの男を見つけ出し全てを聞き出すほかねえもしそこにも答えがなければその先にまっとうな生き方なんぞありがし Eventually, with Ramlethal's help, the group discerns based on the date that the Conclave plans to harness St. Elmo's fire, the massive lightning bolt at Illyria Castle, to channel mm -hmm. enough energy into justice to bind Cronus' soul to her vessel. Leo calls for a full evacuation of the city surrounding the castle, leaving only the Opus units behind. Oh, so the e evil mage guys are going to use the lightning bolt to bind them, their souls to justice. Paradigm proposes a plan. Amplify the- Why is justice so big though? Like, justice was like 80 foot tall. The energy from St. Elmo's fire and overload justice and the conclave. Coincidentally, Dizzy, free from the Thunder Seal, reunites with Sin and Kai for the first time <clears throat> in two years. ずいぶん飛びましたね。ええ。ここのところ切っても切っても <laughs> he said it, dude. He said, Dad, dude. As the time draws near, Cronus, Axis, and Library. Where are the windows? Injustice. Why are they in this room? Why are the windows always there? What part are they looking out from? I don't fucking get it. I... Where is it? I... Share a final moment to reaffirm their resolve. Knowing they won't meet again, they vow to reunite in the next life and share some tea with Baldius. <laughs> Commencing the operation, Justice appears above the West Tower of Illyria Castle and connects energy tenders to the lightning rod. Cronus preemptively begins the soul binding process, <clears throat> allowing him to command the gear cell based opus units to attack the castle plaza. Oh shit, yeah, he could command all of the fucking Kai and opus Leo units. Reminisce about the old days on the battlefield and intercept the opus army on the ground level. With reinforcements from Sin and Elfelt, wielding her Cypress Project magic weapons. All right. Eventually, they get. When I see a spade, I call it a spade, and when I see a gun, I call it a gun. Okay. What up? And while Kai mm. is distracted. It. Huh. <gasps> <gasps> It's a real ass gun. Kimio Kurus no, I show show Kokoro Gurushi. Ishkashi Mamonaku, whatever no Ara Tanaseka in a Hajimar. Kimino Yonajim, the Tuba Dona Kyo in a Rukawa Karanai. Warina Jinri no Mira in no Tame. Koko de Taijo Stemura. 
Axis executes Kai point blank with a fifth shot, holding a black tech revolver. But as he turns to walk away, so Wait. It was Soul? Wait, I understand. He shot him five times? He just gets up and ties his hair up? One of his eyes glows crimson red. Axis, confused by Kai's new gear like power. Wait, is it because he's been putting his dick in Dizzy all this time? Is that why? If you remember when Soul first met Sin, Sin and Kai both had an eye patch on. Yeah, but I don't, I don't get it. He swapped one of his eyes with Sin's? Why? Why? Oh, I get, no, I get it why. Because... If his kid had two gear eyes, he would never be safe. If he had one human eye and covered the gear eye, he could live a relatively normal life. Okay, I get it. It wasn't because he had his dick and dizzy all the time. Okay, right, let's move on. Staggers backwards as Kai destroys him in a single blow. <laughs> As St. Elmo's fire strikes the tower, justice comes alive. From his nerve center, Cronus proclaims victory. Dizzy charges and fires a gamma ray into the already charged electric conductor, causing a massive energy overload. As justice begins to malfunction, Libraria returns to Kronos, saying that this loss is retribution they deserve. Kronos tells her to go find the Gear Maker, as only he can preserve the future of humanity now. Libraria mm. refuses, saying that that should be Kronos' duty, and that she wishes they talked more. She then casts a spell, teleporting him away. 
リブラリア何をするつもりだやめろ行けフレデリックおおWhile justice is weakened, Sol attacks from atop the tower, landing a critical strike that detonates her core. She doubles over, collapsing the castle tower as she falls. Kill Hours wife. later, <clears throat> the sun rises as everyone recovers from the rubble. They all appear to be all right, though Dizzy has passed out from exhaustion. Suddenly, as Sin finds L, she attacks him. With a cold, emotionless demeanor, Elfelt says that her job was to monitor Soul, to make sure he didn't destroy justice, and to ensure that he didn't wake up. Her true mission was even concealed from her own self until now. Sin is in disbelief, but Soul sees this as just another betrayal. He says that all the Valentines had emotions, even if they claimed not to, and that there's clearly a boundary separating the current Elfelt from the one they know. He demands that she bring her back. Wait, but can't Ram steal her powers too? We literally touched on this. So surely Ram can just be like, stop it. Alpha goes into attack mode, casting her reign of judgment. But Soul closes the distance, destroying her summoned attack apparatus. Oh, but Soul is overpowered. Let's not use someone else. It might be a good plot point. Let's just have Soul do it again. Bratis. From Bedman's dream, <clears throat> Kill he wife. and his client observe the situation with satisfaction and initiate a sequence that teleports the corpse of justice away. Soul approaches Elfelt, but is stopped by her barrier, absolute defense failure. Nonetheless, Soul keeps punching at the barrier, demanding that the inner L prove her words that people shouldn't be alone. Words that echo those of Arya. For a moment, his words get through and the old Al Felton emerges, apologizing that she can't fight Mother's will. In her brief moment of clarity, she apologizes and begins a self-destruct sequence. No fucking sad face. Just as she does, it's stopped by Ramlothal. Wait, so Elfelt's getting pulled into the backyard? As Elfelt vanishes, Sol immediately starts walking away. Attack. 
so good guy, dude. So good guy. <clears throat> Elsewhere, in the rubble of the central organ tower, Cronus survives alone. As he takes a step, Faust appears behind him, asking where he plans to go now. There are many questions to be answered, in particular, what he planned to do with the Japanese colonies. Cronus tells Faust that he can carry about whatever revenge he wishes, and that he has no idea what colony situation is being referred to. If the Conclave was not orchestrating the mysterious events in the Japanese colonies, then those orders must have come from someone with even more authority. <gasps> but who could possibly Jet! have more influence? It's the fucking, it's the fucking lady who's a font. It's the font lady of the fucking church order. Then the leader of the Conclave. Ariel! This comic sans looking bitch. Hey, that's awesome. Okay, so what are we missing? What are we missing? Rev and Rev 2 and Stripe. Okay, so. Uh, these videos don't have the last game. Watch the last half of the video. They go to get X on story in 40 minutes from Brendan Mushi for the final part. Okay, Brendan Mushi. Brendan Mushi. Yo, what's going on, guys? This is. Yo, what's going on, Brendan? Uh. Go to get X on story in 40 minutes. This Yo, one? what's going on? Yo, what's going on? Dude, is he. Hang on. Wait, what? Yo, what's going on, guys? Yo, what's going on, guys? Yo, what's going on, guys? Does he use, like, a... a... Why is the intro, like, identical in every video? What's happening? Hey, guys, this is Brendan. Oh, okay, that one changed. Thank fuck. I was, I was in a... I was going crazy. Yo, what's going on, guys? Okay, this one, right? And you say use the second half? Like, from here? Revelator. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yo, Chad, that was from uh, all those videos were from Wooly Wooly Versus. Um, so definitely check check him out, man. That was cool. Yo, what's going on, guys? <laughs> okay. Who this? This is Jacko, right? Ohayo. Yote yori jotto hoyaku okoshi chatta kedo. Joshi wa dou? Hmm. Atama mo karada mo jotto bonyari shite ru kana? Sato no kuki o shite kuru ne. Bye bye. Mate. Abe, Jacko ga bakureta. So basically, Jacko Valentine, a creation of that man, which is the other half of Arya's consciousness that that man saved from justice, is a. Can someone just break that down, what he just said? <laughs> Re listen? Okay. All right, we'll be listen. Hi, honey. Hi. 
Good so far. We watched Wooly versus. He get, he broke it down really well, but he's yeah. missing one game. So now we're trying to watch that one game's lore from someone else's perspective. And the first thing he said actually like floored me. It was like ridiculous. So basically, Jacko Valentine, a creation of that man, which is the other half of Arya's consciousness that that man saved from justice, is awakened early by. What the fuck is he saying? So basically, so Jacko basically, Valentine, Jacko a Valentine, a creation of that man, which is, which is the other half of Arya's consciousness, that man saved from justice, is awakened justice, early by Eno, and, 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 and because of this, she's a little bit incomplete. What? <laughs> I'm going to bed. I love you. Love you. Can someone else? Can someone translate? It makes sense. Jack of Valentine's a creation of that man. Which is the other half of Arya's consciousness. We can ignore that the second half of the sentence, right? Jack of Valentine is a creation of that man. Full stop. That man saved half of Arya and turned her into Jacko. She was woken up early. So this is Sol's wife. This is half of Sol's wife. This that that man saved from justice is awakened early by Eno, and because <coughs> of this, she's a little bit incomplete, and that's why her personality okay. can switch between that of a child and a mature woman. Jacko runs off from Eno, which prompts Eno to call Raven and let him know what's going on. Eno is actually able to catch up with Jacko before the others, and that's when Jacko explains to Eno exactly what she is. Jacko basically explains that sometimes an object can obtain a consciousness. Jacko basically tells Eno that during the Crusades, humanity's will to fight and see a brighter tomorrow converged on a single point in the backyard and gave birth to an organism. This organism would take on a human form known as a magical folky or a witch, and that is Eno. Eno feels upset that she's just now learning this information, but Jacko reassures her that that man only wants the- So Eno was supposed to be like something to save humanity and ended up being a mega bitch. Asked for Eno. You know what we're gonna do, chat? Maybe we just slow it down, hmm? Seven five. And Raven, and that there's a crucial reason why he didn't tell her. It's heavily hinted that Eno is incomplete or unawakened, and this might explain her hungry lust for power. After Jacko returns home, Raven scolds Jacko for telling Eno the truth before she was supposed to know. Jacko says there's a method to her madness, and there was a reason why she left Eno, and a reason why she told Eno the truth, and that she believed she did the right thing. Raven says while well, you might have done the right thing, that doesn't mean it was the best course of action. After Raven leaves, the other Jacko, who seems to be a backup copy or contingency plan to deal with Eno, can be heard in the background. ハッピーケオスはまだ完成していない。万が一の時は、イノの剣を優先するということか。Happy Chaos.
Before heading on his search out for Alfelt, Sol has a conversation with Axel and where Axel tells him about a problem he's having. Basically, Axel has the ability to slip between timelines. He's originally from long, long, long ago in the past, but he's currently stuck in Sol and the other's current timeline. You see, he could choose to go into the past and live his old life with his girlfriend and friends, but if he does that, it would destroy the current timeline that he's in. So Axel is basically tasked with the decision to choose if he wants to stay in the current world with Sol and them or go to his past life, destroying their world. While Soul and the other search What the f I didn't realize Axel's responsibility was that significant. That if he if he tries to force the time jumping, he just destroys time. <laughs> Poor Axel, dude. He's never gonna get that puss. For Elfelt, Dr. Faust and the extremely intelligent Zappa, yes that Zappa, attempt to warn everyone in Illyria about what's going on in Japan. You see, ever since the day when the Universal Will took control of justice and attempted to turn the citizens of Japan into antimatter gears, where that man was forced to override the controls and hit Japan with a gamma ray, that incident left a lot of the Japanese citizens with a disease. The way this disease works is that essentially when these Japanese citizens come into contact with a lot of energy from the backyard, they turn into antimatter gears. And this is a weapon that the Universal Will intends to use against humanity. Cronus, the leader of the Conclave's bomb ass, is still alive. Okay. So, <clears throat> when Justice got possessed by the backyard and started mass cloning, and they had to gamma ray nuke the planet, the survivors got left with a disease. And the disease is when they're exposed to matter from the backyard, they turn into gears. So that's the disease that all Japanese people have. He pays a visit to that man and asks that that man defeats the universal will once and for all. Suddenly, Sol and the others get a distress signal from Elfelt showing exactly where her location is. Everyone knows it's very obviously a trap. Ramlethal volunteers as she said that she would be the one to save her sister. Ramlethal shows up and of course it's a trap. The Universal Will actually left a child intentionally on the battlefield because they knew that Ramlethal's emotions would take over and that she would attempt to protect the child. That's fucked up, man. I st I'm- Hey! I'm a- I'm- we're a Ram main again, chat. Alright, Ram's cool. Wait, what's happening? Uh-oh. What's going on? Oh, this is Ariel? Is this Ariel? How is she in the backyard? <clears throat> Wait, mother? Did this guy skip a bunch? I'm really confused. He might go over after. The next thing that happens after that is Cronus is able to free that man from the- No, he didn't. He live. he didn't even- he just glossed over it. Where's Wooly? Where's Wooly? <clears throat> In the earlier video, the Ram Luther Valentine and Espel Valentine were explained to be created by an entity known as Mother. Yes, I know that. And then when asked what Mother is, they said that Mother isn't a thing, it's a concept that they're implanted with when they are created.
Maybe watch Octo's VOD? Honestly, just play the rev and revealed story on stream. Okay, and we- Will I not need explaining other than that? This? <clears throat> Wait, what does it say chapter one? Oh no. Oh no, it's gonna be like eight hours long. It's okay, like, alright, this guy missed this one thing, but if you guys explain it to me, I'm sure we can just keep going, right? So, the universal will is, um, god, how do I describe this? Universal will is the will of the backyard, right? And it has possessed the head of the, the, ch the church cult thing. Semper Pog. So, she's a creation of the universal world. So she's a Valentine too? Or is she an avatar the universal world created so that she could travel to the human world? It could travel to the human world. He explained briefly in the first part of the video which we skipped. Yeah, because chat told me to skip it because it's about sign which we've already watched. She's the human form of the universal will. Okay, and she's been the human form of the universal will the whole time. And her whole plot was to rise to the most powerful position in the world. So that she could exert her influence as the universal will. And be a supervillain. And she created... Ethel and Ram. And Jacko. And not Jacko, but the others. She created all the Valentines. And Eno. Not Eno. But they just said that Eno was the backyard manifesting all the human will during the crusade to create Eno. So is the universal will not the backyard? They're different things? They're different things. The universal will is just a thing from the backyard that wants to destroy humanity. The backyard is just a place where crazy things happen. All right, I, f I think I got it. We're on the same page. Let's go. Prison that Bedman put him in. Cronus and that man actually have a history together in that they both co-ed studied under the original. After the incident with Ramlethal, Sol and the others regroup, but they're confronted by that man who tells them that it's time to let them know of the truth. He explains to them that the Universal Will's goal is to merge Elfelt with justice in order to create the first actual perfect human being that will wipe out all the other fake human beings on Earth. He explains that this was always the goal, and that even back in Guilty Gear 2 Overture, the original Valentine was trying to achieve this goal as well. And that specifically the Universal Will's goal is to merge a Valentine with justice. He then explains the true meaning behind what the absolute world actually is. So in the backyard, all of the information that's contained within the backyard can be defined as one of two informational bodies, Adam or Eve. And these two basically function as the yin and yang or core to the entire backyard. Adam and Eve are located in the backyard and they will often flicker one at a time. But should Adam and Eve ever appear at the same exact time? At that exact moment, for just an instance, the real world and the backyard will blend for just a moment, causing an extinction. He explains that this is literally the cause of what killed the dinosaurs. More specifically, it will kill anything that can't handle the pressure of the backyard, which the universal will would deem as an inferior human. But what gets even crazier than that is he explains what actually created the universal will, and what actually created it was the original himself. Oh god, alright, so there's a guy, th there's a, <laughs> there's a that man, of the that man, who made it a, and that man made the universal will, and then his student, that man too, made, Gears? There's a that man, 
who made some crazy shit, and then his student, that man, made some crazy shit. So is Absolute World a product of them flickering at the same time? So they flickered at the same time, Adam and Eve. They destroyed all, most life on Earth. And the universal will was created as a result. Which is like a being that decides what is and isn't worthy. Let's say yes, it's easy to understand. I'm fucking bro. What the fuck is going on, man? No? Yes, they appear at the same time and it's an extinction event. I get that the original is the guy that went to the backyard first. That makes sense. I'm trying to figure out what the fucking universal will is, dude. Okay, so as a result of the original guy separating Adam and Eve, the universal will was created to correct the anomaly. It should be playing shortly. Alright, well, okay. <gasps> so that man put the seed of Adam inside Sol. Which is why he's referred to as the flame of corruption. Kind <laughs> 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 Backyard rules in the universe from within it, one could understand any truth or even bend the world as he pleased. The philosopher thought that in this place the single dream may come true. That was for the peace of mankind. He wished for it to last forever. To understand how that may be done, the philosopher created a single robot. The directive was clear. Find a path of eternal happiness for mankind. And no matter what the outcome, mankind was not to be harmed. Okay. Okay, so the original guy found the backyard, created a robot, and left it in the backyard. So it could attain the knowledge needed to give humanity perfect peace. That is the universal will. One day, the robot reached a block. What is mankind? Upon further studies and research, the robot discovers the complex nature of humans. It believed it could not complete its directive until the definition was set in stone. Unable to define the definition, it came up with an interpretation. Humans do not yet exist in this world. On this day, we got a quest to create a life form with a soul that can never be forfeited. Where it believed fit its own definition of human. At that moment, mankind was no longer under the protection of its directive.
That man continues to spoil the entire series for Soul and explains to him the reasoning behind everything he did that I explained in the first video. Soul retaliates as he's finding it extremely hard to believe that the person he was hellbent on killing had actually been helping him and trying to do the right thing the entire time. Soul yells at that man letting him know that he killed Arya as Jacko chimes in saying that Arya is not dead and in fact she can actually be brought back to life. Jacko is a valentine that was created by that man using the other half of Arya's consciousness that he took from Justice. That man's goal is to take Jacko, half of Arya's consciousness and fuse it with justice sorry i got rid of the closed captions i definitely need them he's talking too fast let's skip back <clears throat> That man continues to spoil the entire series for Soul and explains to him the reasoning behind everything he did that I explained in the first video. Soul retaliates as he's finding it extremely hard to believe that the person he was hellbent on killing had actually been helping him and trying to do the right thing the entire time. Soul yells at that man letting him know that he killed Arya as Jacko chimes in saying that Arya is not dead and in fact she can actually be brought back to life. Jacko is a valentine that was created by that man using the other half of Arya's consciousness that he took from justice that man's goal is to take jacko half of Arya's consciousness and fuse it with justice thus creating Arya whole again if they did this Arya would actually come back as a human not as a gear and so is of course hang on so the universal wills intention is to find a valentine combine it with justice and end the universe this guy that man's intention is to combine this valentine with justice to create a wife what's the difference i'm confused So if Jacko plus Justice, Jacko plus Justice equals Soul's wife, FL plus Justice equals end of universe? Even though they're both a Valentine. Okay, because the ma because that man created Jacko and she wasn't made by the backyard. She's technically not an official Valentine. She's like a, a second-rate Valentine. She's just a Valentine in name only. Okay, I get it. I get it. It's kind of fucking... I don't know why they just didn't give her a different fucking surname. Like, honestly. Sometimes, you know, Daisuke, just fucking think for a second. Of course, processing this information just about as good as you could guess. <laughs> That that's how I feel. That's how I feel right now. Things that in order to complete the process of fusing Jacko with justice, he'll need an immense amount of energy. He explains that he'll use Saint Ontario, which is basically a dangerous magical spell that has an immense amount of power. Leo and Kai confront the Sanctus Maximus Populi while she's on the job, and she no longer can keep up the act, and immediately starts attacking everyone and summoning gears to attack Illyria. So naturally, everybody just start boxing. All right, I do kind of like he's talks, this guy speaks quick. But he does say shit like, naturally they start boxing, which I like. Dude, Potemkin's so fucking cool. Elsewhere, Venom takes it upon himself to rematch Bedman, even though he washed all three of the assassins. Of Chat is the is the actual. If I watched, if I watched the Revelator actual story, all fucking eight hours, is it worth it? Or should I just watch this? Just watch this. How long, all right, how long is just Rev 2? Four hours. 
Okay, so if I watch this up to like Rev 2 and you tell me when. Rev 2 is unimportant? I mean, that's your opinion. There's a ton of filler in Rev 2. Same okay, time. let's just watch this, but and this then we'll, we'll watch the story mode in the game. Because Bedman is able to read people's movements, but because Robokai is a robot, he won't be able to read his movements. Robokai is pushed to the point where he has to use a move to sacrifice himself in order to defeat Bedman. Alright, can someone explain to me, one, who the fuck is Robokai? Two, where he came from. Three, why is he now a good guy? And four, why is he fighting bad man? Because this guy just forgot to tell me. He was in the second vid. I didn't forget about Robokai. I remember that there was an army of Robokais. There was an army of Robokais, but I don't think they ever mentioned... Rogo Bakai was all the way back in X2. Venom. What? Will Willie told you? Do you understand how much information I'm trying to process? I don't think you get it. I didn't know any of this. Okay? I've had to learn 50 new characters. There's fucking five dimensions. There's two people that walk through time. Okay? There's people that are named Happiness. Okay? It's- f I'm fucking losing it, man. Nothing makes sense. And I forget one thing and you're like, IT WAS IN THE VIDEO! I- Bro! I'm failing the test! Someone give me the backstory on Robokai. Okay? I- I fucking- I- I forgot about him. I guess. Robokai was made by the government. I Yeah, but I remember that, but there was a lot- there was a bunch of Robokais. There wasn't just one. Robokai was evil, but he turned good and was living his best life in Kai's kingdom. He's a robot made of copy Kai, but he's a uh, reject. He lives his days walking around doing nothing until he meets Venom and then they pal around a bit. This is the last Robokai that was hired by Venom to fight Badman, because Bedman can't read hum can only read human minds. He's a hobo, cool dude with Venom. This one was a bum and he's a side character, and this is unimportant. Alright, chat. I think this is a great time for us to take a, sh a short break. Uh, I'm gonna get some water and maybe I will cry in the mirror and when I finish crying we will come back and we will continue with our Lorathon. Um, I will see you guys shortly, okay? Let's have a little short break.
Dude, I can't believe that Wooly carried this story so hard, he fucking broke his entire back. That's fucking crazy. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're currently on Guilty Gear Rev. Some, uh, uh, what was happening? Oh yeah, Robokai is fighting Bedman right now. Let's, let's continue. I need to close the door, hang on. Is he going to wake up for the first time? The Universal Will visits Bedman while he's dying on the ground, and she explains to him that he was simply a pawn and that she had planned for him to die the entire time. Bedman thought that the absolute world was a dream world where anyone's dreams could come true. He thought that everyone he killed would be revived and be able to live all of their dreams, which is why he did everything that he did. Wait. Hold up. Hold up. This fucking 300 IQ bedman baby bitch legit thought that everyone he killed just came back to life in Magic Fairyland? And he didn't question it. He was like, yep, that seems good. How can you have, th I mean, 300 IQ, zero common sense, right? They go hand in hand. High end, low whiz. <laughs> The only thing Bedman ever wanted was to be able to see his sister again. My man didn't even let the video play out. He just skipped to the part where he was stoned. Who's make? Who's the guy making this video? Brendan, did did you have somewhere to be, Brendan? Were you pressed for time? What's fucking going on, man? I'm assuming Bedman was going to pop off and it was going to be really cool, but he just cut to the part where his knee turned to stone. <laughs> Brendan's trying to condense 12 fucking hours of law into a video short enough for you to fucking click it. True, true. And even then I started halfway through. <clears throat> The Universal Will leaves and goes back to Elfelt in order to enact her plans to fuse her with justice. Sol and the others are traveling through airship on their way to the Universal Will. I'm to not giving him enough credit. And while on the way, they discuss that technically, since Dizzy is Justice's daughter and Sol and Justice are lovers because it's Arya, then that means Dizzy is Sol's daughter, which means Sin is Sol's grandson, which means that Sol is Kai's father-in-law. Sol and the others arrive via airship and let Elfelt know that they're there to rescue her. Meanwhile, Jacko goes up to where Elfelt is and attempts to switch places so that she can fuse instead of her. Sol and Kai have a fight with the Universal Will in order to prevent her from stopping Jacko. Dude, this seems really fucking cool to watch. I might go back and watch it, like, on my own time.
Jacko gets in position and ready for the St. Ontario beam to be fired at her so that way she can properly fuse with Justice. However, just before they can do that, the footholds that are holding Justice begin to break and Justice begins to fall. If they were to fire the beam now, the beam would miss. Sin and Kai attempt to hold Justice up straight but are struggling to do so. <laughs> Wait, who's the guy behind her? Oh, it's Raven. Target. Shusei Kanryo. The St. Ontario beam is fired as the Universal Will attempts to block it from hitting Jacko. So is is the universal will a fit a, an actual robot like that Ariel is the robot? Yes. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah, that, she's short circuiting right there. She's dead. So like, you know that whole plan that they had, you know, where the St. Ontario would hit Justice and then they would fuse and everything would be great. So um, there's a slight problem. So part of Arya's consciousness does not want to fuse with Justice because she's still traumatized from the time that that man made her. blow up Japan so she's rejecting the fuse. Jacko says that she can override this but she's gonna need even more power than the St. Ontario blast. That man says there's no way he could possibly produce more power than that and the third king Daryl gives up and says fuck this I'm blowing justice the fuck up because this is a failure. Soul immediately requests <laughs> my boy Daryl we've come full circle he's back dude and he's had enough much like me he doesn't know what the fuck's going on he's just gonna blow up. I respect Daryl and his choices right now. The Dr. Paradigm fire the St. Ontario at him. He wants it to hit his junkyard dog so that way he can use its abilities to amplify it and then hit justice with it. Even though this plan is crazy, it just might work, but it doesn't seem like they'll have enough time to do it as Daryl's cannons are just about to fire. <laughs> this motherfucker, dude. ここで起きることは全て一瞬だ。旦那が変身しても世界に異変が起きる前に決着がつけられるかもしれない。ぶつかわせ。だぞ。Holy shit. Dude, imagine if there had been like, 
so yeah Sol transformed her back transformed his wife back to normal but then the guns killed them all uh, and uh, she immediately died save wife dude Sorry. Oh, okay, so she, t bro, what? <clears throat> he is so obsessed with villains turning good. He is so he is. It's just twenty years of bad guys becoming good guys. Wife, 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 wife. What? What? Wife back. Frederick. Corre de Kiki wa honto ni sata. Arigato. Aria wa kimi ni makaseta. Dakara atwa.僕たちの決着だけだね。は？え？なんでだよ。もう二人が喧嘩する理由なんてねえだろ。確かに。もうギアメーカーもあの男もこの世界には必要なくなった。よく見ておけ。あれが男の目だ。喧嘩を売る野郎の目だ。ああいう目をしたやつには理由なんかいらねえ。答えてやるのが筋なんだよ。俺が売られた。いいだろ。アスカールクロイツ。その喧嘩
Right, wife. Life good. <laughs> Wife gone. Think about wife. Wife fight back. Kill wife. Wife gone. Think about wife. Wife fight back. Kill wife. Wife gone. Think about wife. <laughs> Regret. Wife. Kill. <laughs> all right so now it's time to watch the actual story for strive right let's fucking do it i'm ready <clears throat> watch the strive opening first what do you mean today yeah we're watching it right now it's four hours right we're good it's movie time baby let's go Yep, I, I've got permission. Okay, that isn't how it's supposed to look. Guilty here. Strive. Uh. <laughs> Help? Watch the opening first. Stop! Tell me what to fucking do. I will, of course, watch the opening, man. Fuck. Wait, the opening isn't in the game? What? Guilty here. What do you mean the opening isn't in the game? What do you fucking mean? Is it on YouTube? GG Strive Story Opening First 7 minutes of story mode plus opening movie Is that what I'm supposed to watch? No Story trailer? No Opening movie? Movie. Go get Strive opening movie. Okay. It's two minutes long. Uh... with wife You see I'm blazing Still my heart is blazing If the words kill me I don't need a new world Although you My job is my world Your words will never let me Just 
Time for a big, big movie night chat. All right. Are you watching dub or sub? Uh, I think we should watch it dub because my good friend Octo is the voice of Axel. And I think that would be cool. I'm so high versus me too, dude. Emo only for movie night? Um, I trust you guys. What do you think? <laughs> Someone said you can't even spoil it if you try, it's just too crazy. Look, Zero, just shoot spoilers, dude. Shoot them dead. This, this might be a long line in video game movie nights, chat. All right? We could do this with other games, too. Were you going through Willie's recap vids? Oh, my friend, what do you think we just did for five hours? I'm, I'm, we're ready. It's time. This whole VOD is going to be one big journey from start to finish. If we could actually get into the fucking game. What is this? Why is it taking so long? Must have a controller somewhere. Uh, are you plugged in? What's the OK button? You? OK. So we just click play story, right? And then just wait, I need to go. How do I go back? Settings. Story of this game progresses a magazine and requires no control. Would we like to rest between each chapter chat or do it all at once? Take some rests. We'll do some rests. Alright, let's do it. How can this be? Mankind's emotions have overtaken the world. And one girl Forgive gives me to show the world tore itself from its origin. Her godhood is Forgive mine. Me. The only solution is to rid her of humanity's humanity. hope for the future comes at the cost of her own. Forgive me. All I can leave her is her name. It's Eno! Eno's here! She's here! Eno! It's Eno! It's Eno! Eno's here! It's Eno. It's Eno. It's Eno. It's Eno. It's Eno. Eno's here!
Why is everyone scared, dude? I'm kind of horny. Pregnant. Do any of you really think? What was that sound? Wow, no idiots in your little room, I see. If you turn back now, we can all stay that way. These days, chivalry's worth as much Just as. Playing that fucking shit again. Because it may be there our country's flag. We're not afraid to step in it. I feel for you. Really, I do. You dick, Kraken. XCOM's cancelled. You, you wet. Our first idiot. Whoa! Overkill. Is that the universal will? <clears throat> you wouldn't have ended up like this if you just gone and died when you lost your war against humanity. <laughs> and you believe you won? Witches have such vivid imaginations. Better than not having one at all. I'm not the one who had to give up my crown and castle. Be careful now. That rug under your feet is a lion's mane. You might be on the other side of the cage for now, but you won't get away with it for long. I could stop if you'd like. Ooh. So long as you return what's mine. Yours? <laughs> You think it will obey you just because you put a leash around its neck? That power needs no master. Today it does. And once you see someone wielding it, you'll know who the master really is. You may think you know everything, but you can never foresee your mistakes. You're just a child excited over a new toy. No, you're the child here. What the heck? <clears throat> Someone once said that if mankind's endless want to be sated, inequality and conflict would come to an end. Or, to look at it another way, if you were to rob humanity of its desire, you would bring peace to the world. But who wants a world like that? And what is the peace people desire? Asking that is to ask what humanity is. Okay. <clears throat> Team Red presents.
Is everything all right? I can hear tires screeching. These windows have great visibility. Wouldn't you agree? It's that man. <clears throat> you wouldn't even know they were there. Indeed. Sin? No, that's not sin. They're millimeters thick, too. A hundred percent words, I just as fast on land. Can as you hide your car. camera or something? Case scenario, she can even move no. without wheels. And our drivers more than her good looks. She's got 42 manuals worth of emergency protocol committed to memory. Not bad, huh, Mr. Oscar? No need for a mister. Oscar, then. Anyway, this car you've chosen for your little hitchhike could put any tank to shame. My only complaint is that I can't find an insurance company to cover it. We're not allowed to do direct restreams. It has to be like yes, content do. where you talk over because and Because you are the 76th president of the United States. And this is your personal car. A little flashier than I would have chosen on my way to propose demilitarization at G4, but nonetheless. I agree with you there. <sighs> I do apologize for forcing my way in like this. I had considered alternative approaches, but... Save the explanation for later. For now, we need to get all these eyes off us. <laughs> Our intrepid reporters can confirm firsthand that the gear maker is currently seated in the president's that car. That is correct. It seems that the most heinous criminal in history, commonly known as that man, may have surrendered himself into the United States. Well, we haven't been able to get a clear view of the situation. Witnesses are reporting that he was speaking with the, the mastermind president. behind. Now there's a possibility that this may be a copycat. The monikers that man and the Wait, Gio's the driver? Ever opened his don't know. Some speculate that he may be involved. <coughs> Citizens have started to gather in protest, resulting in confusion. Are you wary of the recent spread of unfounded incidents. speculation? As of now, we don't have any confirmation. He's a man of many names, but perhaps we should call him by the one most familiar to us. The devil. Vultures, all of them. They can spot prey from a mile away. Oh, actually, I leaked the story to them. You don't say. Wait, huh? I hate to say it, but you heard that right. It was a necessity. I want my actions to be just as transparent as the glass of this window. I know that my request is unreasonable, but... You call it a request. With all those eyes on us, this is a demand. You might not realize, but if the pen is mightier than the sword, then the microphone's stronger than a cannon. You're supposedly the mastermind behind a hundred-year war. Whether that's true or not, it's what the people believe. If the victims of that conflict or their families are nearby, they aren't just here to get a look at you. Huh? Get down! Oh, shit. So it is you. That's a negative, boss. Looks like the other one is in Illyria. Skies sure are clear. We're going to need a 43rd manual, Mr. President. Worry about that, Mr. After Asuka, they say that there's nothing you can do. So what could you possibly want from us? Confinement. For you? I don't think there's a cell in this world that can hold you. No, not for me. For the tone. Oh shit. He's got the tone. The tone? You mean the tome of origin? To be more precise, I need a place that cannot be accessed by any outside force. One that cannot be forced open by any weapon or spell, no matter how strong. Now I see. So, like Alcatraz? No, Mr. President. He is referring to an even safer location. The Presidential Emergency Operations Center. In other words, the White House. <laughs> oh shit, son. Oh, 
this ain't good. Soul bad guy. I saw you in the newspaper, you know. You can read. Shit. You're smarter than I thought. How about you read this for me? Ooh, who's that handsome devil? Come on, read it. Says you're worth two months' worth of meals. Two whole months? Figured a big world-saving hero would have more extensive tastes. <laughs> Shouldn't you be putting up your feet at the castle right now? What are you doing out here, bounty hunting? Do I look like I got any table manners? Come on. Uh, hold on now. Hear me out. I get it. Between the name and the look, I can seem a little scary. But you make the right choice here, and I'll show you my softer side. Don't screw with me! Yeah. That was the wrong choice. No, 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 no freaking way! Bro, that would just absolutely kill anyone else. <clears throat> Who the f <clears throat> I'm with him. Wife, 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 wife. Wife strong to you. The army didn't burn their morals and budget a hundred years ago to make someone you could disrespect. You mean Asuka, right? Huh? It wasn't the army who made you. It was Asuka. This guy sure as hell doesn't need to know that. And I'll settle things with him in due time. Citizens have both freedom of thought and freedom of speech. They may voice their complaints to the government as they see fit. This is a democracy after all. In short, Kai, our administration is not a popular one. You're telling me that someone came to complain about a top security containment cell 300 meters underground? You catch on quickly. And you chose to leave the comfort of the castle and come take a look for yourself. I didn't plan on doing so until I heard that the first king himself was inspected. Is this guy Daryl? <laughs> Are you really so desperate for supporters? In terms of pure accomplishment, people say I should be the third king. Lines like that are why you keep making enemies. What are the damages? 32 injured, and the sturdiest door in the castle kicked down. What was stolen? Nothing. Nothing I could include in a report, at any rate. The culprit took something from Ariel's. Whether that's a weapon, a power, or something else we should be afraid of, I couldn't say. It's as if we're cursed. How has it only been three weeks? Three weeks between the end of the war and our culprit deciding to shake things up again. What did you say her name was? Eno. You know. If you're planning on becoming a detective, you chose one hell of a first case. Leo! This is an extensive criminal record. If even half of these accusations are true, then ten life sentences wouldn't be enough. And she's a combat genius with the ability to move through time? It's no wonder the police and the military have thrown in the towel. Spare us the barbs and read. Barbs. I like to think of them as staples, holding the pages together. Otherwise, it's an endless list of excuses for why Eno's running wild. But on that note, Leo, I do have one question about all of this. What is her goal? All of our info's on those pages in your hand. She's the strongest performance criminal in history. Other than that, we don't know a thing. Even where she came from? We don't even know if Eno's her real name. Saves me the trouble of looking her up in the registry, at least. She's been known to work with the gear maker. Though again, we can't say why. Or at least she was working with him until recently. 
What makes this time any different? She's never made a move this big before. Not to brag, but I'm a video surveillance fiend. If I caught it on camera, I could track a flea to the end of the world. But Eno destroyed all the footage from last night. Of course. That's criminal behavior 101. <laughs> Not He's a fucking her. voyeur. Usually she <laughs> wants the spotlight. <clears throat> but this time, she didn't want to be seen. She was hiding something. Which can only mean... She's got a sequel in the works. Cool line, Kai. Cool line. How grateful I am that we have your brain. But what is it about this that has you so rattled? The timing. It's too close to the G4 summit for this to be a coincidence. And we've got two troublemakers in play here. The Gearmaker and Eno. They may have different motives, but I can't imagine their actions are entirely unrelated. When two tornadoes collide, they create an even bigger storm. Good pun, because he's a lightning guy. The timing couldn't be worse. We need to put an end to all this. Or rather, we need a tornado that can snuff out the other tornadoes. Daryl. Soul bad guy is still a bounty hunter, is he not? The man <laughs> spent a hundred years trying to get his life back. It's not that I don't appreciate what he's gone through, but heroes are put on a different pedestal. My guy's had his wife for three weeks, dude. Give him a break. As we expect them to risk their lives. Making sure he won't fall off? Just about done. Okay. Hey, Jacko, careful with that. I just put it together, so it's not stable yet. What? Is it gonna blow up or something? Yeah, and take the whole damn mountain with it. And that's before I even got batteries in the thing. Well, that's terrifying. You really want me to carry this around? You ever get an entire century to tinker away at a hobby? You'd be amazed at what you can make. Huh? You call this a hobby? That's a little aggressive. No different than brand name clothes or jewels. Think of it as a bouquet of roses and handle it that way too. Maybe I'd know how if you ever gave me any. Ha! By the way... Don't pull a stunt like that again. Huh? You're a regular human now. Biologically, you mean? You know what I mean. Wouldn't you rather stay back at the castle? Arya's still in here. I'm nothing more than a temporary replacement personality. Just an AI put in place to steer this body. Save that question for when your real girlfriend is back. I'm asking you. I have no desires beyond fulfilling my role. And your role wants you here with me. Am I the one who was at your side for ten years? I have a thousand years worth of knowledge of my role. And not even one year's knowledge of this world. I haven't seen you, Yalta. Besides, what would you do if I did say I wanted to stay at the castle? I tell you too bad. You need a royal decree just to open the damn refrigerator. Even a rat wouldn't last two days there. So. Yeah? I need you at the castle. Hey, Rob, thank you very much, buddy. Mm. You smell that? Dust and plants everywhere. And uh, you're happy about that. You try spending all day locked in a windowless room, then you'll get it. I was stuck in one for a hundred years. What'd you pull me out for anyway? It's my fault you lost your power. You want it back, right? Look, I know it sounds cheesy, but... It'll make you a god. Does that intrigue you? Does it matter? Sure does.
purely personal question. Just shot her in the face. There's a reason behind this world. Things only ever start to exist when there's a reason for them to. Even me. As long as you exist, you are needed. By something. I was wondering if, for me, that something was you. Fallen for me, have you? Your power, at least. What else is there? I realize this may sound a bit contradictory now, but I've never been big on the idea of fate. So even if we only know, I don't know, 4% of what makes up the universe, discovering the remaining 96% doesn't really interest me. Neither does wealth, honor, influence. The most important thing for me. It's the power is drama oh okay that's different what kind of story are you about to she literally pulled live stream fails out of ariel's body as a human personification the made me did so with the tequila in hand if he could do that i can do anything but what i want is simple a future That is interesting. Happy Chaos. Oh, happy? My name. This is Happy You're Chaos. Boss. Oh shit. And I'm gonna be your sacrifice. Man, no, I'm gonna kill Chaos Meme. Sure came at a good time, right? Let's get some of these Sour Patch Kids in here. Babylon, this is Firefly 3. Special patrol complete. Requesting permission to RTP. Avalon Clay confirming Firefly's patrol log is complete. Return to base, Firefly. Mr. Asuka, hmm? I won't ask you to walk with your eyes closed, but try to save your curiosity for the guided tour. Oh, right. I really don't mean to be so uptight, but this is a highly restricted area, which is, to be fair, exactly what you asked for. The most difficult room in the world to enter. Though I hope you don't expect five-star luxury. Doesn't seem that hard. So it's just through this door? No, that room's just a room. You could just open the door and walk right out for a coffee. Oh. Oh. Okay. I got owned. I got actually owned. isn't it? The White House hasn't changed since the Crusades. It's got little shelters and hideaways all over the place. I'm rather used to this sort of environment. Meanwhile, I don't even know what's safe to touch. Good. It hasn't changed. Oscar. Coming. This should suit me perfectly. <clears throat> Do you have many friends? I'm afraid that all private communication from this bunker is strictly forbidden. Signal blocking, I presume? That's right. Communication's less forbidden than it is impossible. This room uses 13th generation AES Dude, has anyone told him he's got something in his eye? standard of security in the universe. So, make your personal calls now, before your friends start to wonder where you've disappeared to. Oh, uh, thank you, but... 
I don't believe that will be necessary. Like, dude, you've gone eyelash. I'm assuming for the dupe. Yeah, I'm almost disappointed, to be honest. Oh. What are you? Don't panic. Also, I'm some of these secret service guys. Haha, -ha, I hope they die. <laughs> what? I want to hear him scream in anguish. Are you this guy? Now I'm listening. I want to know who this guy is. What are they up to in there? Chief. Secretary Dickinson has already arrived. That's why we're in such a hurry. Honestly, I'm not sure if this whole exercise is really worth our time. I mean, the That's, secretary is stronger than- This is you people. right here! Yeah. He's been pissed off that we let the gear maker into the compound. Being late may cost us some trust. Sure, but skipping this training would cost us our lives. Tell that to Geo. A little early for moon watching, isn't it? It's too gloomy indoors. It'll get a lot gloomier if you piss off the secretary. Come on, we've got a training exercise to get to. You recommended me for the Secret Service, remember? I read the brief. I know what I'm doing. Oh? Did it say anything about paying you to take a nap? You're so much stronger than I am, yet you still haven't earned this badge. Why is that, Giovanna? Because it looks incredibly stupid. I like to agree, <laughs> but don't go around saying that, got it? This was designed by the president himself. Did he design that ugly shirt, too? Enough already. Just prepare for your training. <clears throat> and button up your shirt. But then how will I catch a good man? <sighs> sure didn't work on me. How <laughs> will I catch a good man? Now, Oscar. Oh, that's why she's so horny for I Leo. It makes sense. Read on you. I've seen that you're a good man. The people who don't know you may say you're the devil, but it doesn't seem like you're looking to cause trouble. That's why I opted to grant your request. That's Ram. No, they both now are. They both so. are. Mind telling me why you're really here? <clears throat> You said that you wanted to protect the tome. Do you intend to remain within these walls forever? We aren't idiots. We realize that your surrender coincides with the G4 summit, and you'll be right under the representatives from the four most powerful nations in the world. So what exactly do you intend to do? Rather than protecting the tome per se, I want to erase it from mankind's history. It's been done before. Are you familiar with Project Tir Nanag? Possibly. That's just an urban legend. Fill me in. <sighs> People say there's a massive strategic weapon hidden somewhere within the White House. But that's a completely unfounded rumor. As the former president, Miss Bartholomew, you would know. It is indeed mere gossip. But what makes it a rumor of note is that the truth is far more surprising. The Crusades may be over, but many sad relics of the era remain, lying dormant and undiscovered, some of which are extremely dangerous. I consider it my duty to eliminate them all. Huh? And you intend to raise this issue with G4? The blame for the Crusades rests solely on my shoulders. I put humanity on the brink of extinction. 
There is very little difference between a good statue and an evil bystander. For too long, I've chosen to avert my eyes. Aye. There are two things I truly One. need to erase from this world. They are the Tome of Origin. And Soul Bad Guy. <gasps> he actually just he actually just whipped out the tome like willy nilly uh save and continue we'll take a break off the next one There he is! Axel Pimp. This is where we could finally see each other. Just one last time. What was all that? <laughs> was it real? Was it the past? No. Maybe the future? Huh? Oh well, does that mean he's gonna show up here? Oh well. <laughs> Claps for Octo in the chat, everyone. Well, you said you hated the castle. If you have royalty in your family, you get it. What sort of treat is the king dangling in front of you this time? I'm not a dog, you know. But you are a son of a bitch! Oh, like you're one to talk. Well, but you're not a dog. I guess we don't have to worry about food. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not be hasty here. The king's got a male train, too. He wouldn't go to the castle when I asked him. Still, we get to skip the bounty processing fee and turn it into the castle anyway. <laughs> Listen, Kai accepted my terms. Terms? Uh, I'll tell you later. You really like chatting that much? Yeah. Then save your questions for this evening. We've got a whole day before we reach the castle. Just how often is the world in danger wow. anyway? Evening already? Time flies. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick? Yeah? You're smiling. Hmm. So what? <clears throat> we talked with our friends. God, dude, at least call him Fred. Frederick is such a fucking oof name. And my answer was different than everyone else's. I may have a human body now, but my role, protecting the world, is all that's left to me. So, maybe the human one here... is you. You still haven't realized it yet?
Hey, Freddy! Freddy bad guy! Come over here! You'll be kissing on the cheek of Freddy bad guy! <clears throat> the wife's haunted. Oh no. I'm not certain about this room just yet, but everything else is just as I remember it. Finally. I'm finally here. Asuka R. Kreutz. For the first time ever, you exist. So that's the infamous gear maker. I never imagined I'd get to see his face. Looks awful young to me. You sure he's the real deal? His power is, at the very least. He even offered us a little present. A historical record written by that man himself. Christmas came early this year, I see. Assuming he's only here to talk, that is. Oh, I'd be the first to tell you that Asuka's no Santa Claus. But he came on down to Chimney <laughs> and entered our home. He actually doesn't like Santa Chad Octo. I'm afraid I can see <laughs> he him does. I'd like to believe Asuka's being honest with us. He understands the purpose of the G4 Summit. In my purpose. Fucking hell, dude. You mean taking out Soul Bad Guy? The man who saved the world? Well, I must admit, I couldn't get Asuka to reveal his true intentions. So we'll all be keeping our cards close to our chest until the day of the summit. It's undeniable that Soul poses a real risk. Perhaps Asuka intends to subvert our plans for him. Could well be, but let's just table this issue for now and move on. Wait. There's more? Based on this morning's report, it seems we got ourselves two Santas. Our second Santa's name is Eno. She's an internationally wanted criminal. The Illyrian government has designated her a potential terrorist as well. A terrorist? Then what's she after? It seems they have no clue. She's a total unknown, from her motive to her plan to her whereabouts. I'd say she's a ghost, but we'd probably have more intel on her if she was. All we know is that the Illyrian army, the strongest military force in the world, have got themselves a name for her. The Calamity. And she's chosen Ooh. this moment to make her move. They haven't said so outright, but Illyria might be hoping that we'll cancel G4. We don't even know where this woman is or what she wants? That's the problem. We don't know just how dangerous Eno could be. Or how the gear maker might respond if the G4 summit's canceled. That's true. He seems peaceful enough now. <clears throat> but he wouldn't have to come to the table just to have it overturned. We're between a rock and a hard place. Dickinson. Our demilitarization promises aren't just some vote-grabbing scheme, correct? We're building a new generation, a new era of peace. People will only follow a leader if that leader's moving forward. Oh god, this guy's so great. I thought you'd prioritize security over all else. I don't trust the gear maker as far as I can throw him. If he's so innocent, then who's responsible for the scars that have been raked across our history? Is that man somehow two different people? All that being said, protecting our country means protecting the ideals and people our president believes. Useless chaps too. I know, dude. Besides, how could I say no to those eyes? It's not like we have the time to be squabbling amongst ourselves anyway. Still, Erica, what are we gonna do about Soul? We can't exactly mosey on up to him and ask him to take a comfy seat in the electric chair. I know how the president would respond, so I've already made a few arrangements. Even if they did involve a little white lie. <laughs> Chat, please calm down, dude, all right? Stop ogling the former president's booty. Kai. <clears throat> Leo. I heard the news. So the US sent us a summons letter for Seoul. That's right. The presence of a gear maker has done nothing to slow their plans to hold G4. They're asking Soul to come as a knight. A 
Americans don't even know how to make sausage right. <laughs> Eno is on the move, and they're holding a party. It doesn't take a genius to see how this ends. President Vernon is quite passionate about making G4 a success. Between that and his demilitarization plan, he truly does hope to change the world. Which means our only course of action now is to capture Eno. Just like Daryl said. I almost forgot. You may look like an honor student, but you're a hot-blooded fool. Why does this always happen whenever I'm about to go home? I must be cursed. <laughs> what? What is it? <sighs> it's just that the word cursed coming out of your mouth is starting to sound all too familiar. The hell's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Leo's 22. Dude, they just have no concept of like how old a character should be to look and sound the way they do. <clears throat> so it's my birthday. You asked me to spend some time with you. And it's for work. Sorry, work's all I'm any good for. Is that machine code? <laughs> what year is it? Hey, magic machine hybrids are plenty modern. This is Rose. It was a popular programming language a long, long time ago. Here. I'm going to call an undeclared variable. Won't that result in an error? That's normally how it works. Oh, is there something hidden in the error message? Could you stop being so perceptive? Could you stop being so mysterious? Fine, fine. I'll wait till you're ready to pull the curtain back. Well, shit. Now this is just awkward. That's what I get for trying to be clever, I guess. A ring? Well, yeah. A digital one? Yeah, sorry. The real one wasn't quite ready in time. Aww. Did I screw things up? <laughs> it's the Elden Actually. Ring, honey. If I were to vanish from this world, what could I leave behind for you? What <laughs> NFT you like ring. That? It's bad luck. Oh my god. I promise you, no matter what happens, I'm never going to forget this day. But I want to leave you something to remember, too. All right, then. Let's see. How about your hat? My hat? Yeah. The forecast said it was going to be overcast the whole day. You've got to be some kind of eccentric to wear a hat on a day like today. Wow, way to kill the mood. <laughs> <laughs> but sure. If it can help you remember this moment, you and me, together, under the cloudy sky, then my hat is all yours. And maybe that way, I can always be by your side. Wait, why is it damaged? Unclear. <clears throat> Tried to open a comb with the boys and the bottle tree. won. Oh my god, tree. dude. <clears throat> tree. 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 Keep that up for the whole ride and you'll lose your mind. This might be news to you, but I can teleport instantaneously. People these days, it's about the journey, not the destination. You've confused your goals for your duties, and it's stressing you all out. You see, and forgive me if I'm being indelicate here, you're cursed. You were born without something that humans need. Desire. And unlike the common cold, it's not something you can fix with some ginger tea and a nice bath. Oh, no. Yet, miraculously, you still awaken to your emotions. Society granted them to you. 
So what, do you want me to start singing culture's praises? In a convertible? Once you confuse cause for class, you lose sight of yourself, you know. <laughs> Spare the philosophy. I don't even have a self to lose sight of. Oh, come on. You're telling me your pointy head's empty. Not exactly. Problem is, there's too much in here. Isn't it about time you tell me where we're headed? He's not looking at the road. He hasn't been looking at the road for like a minute. Let's start at the very beginning. We need a special book. That's how we can get you your power back. But we've got three problems to deal with. First, Asuka, the owner of said book, is in the White House. And I don't have a clue what's going on there. Second, if G4 gets cancelled because of us, our boy Asuka might run away. I can take care of the first problem on my own. I'll let you deal with the second. The real issue is the third one. Any guesses what it might be? So bad, guy. The flame of corruption. Soul bad guy. Our plan's completely shot to shit if he shows up. Bingo. Which is why we're headed where we're headed. We're gonna pick up something we need. Manpower. Didn't think this would be ready for a while. You sure I can have it? It is a fairly hefty reward just for showing up. I won't ask what you plan to do with it, but try not to cause too much trouble. And by the way, what's up with the new <laughs> Smash invitation? Hmm? Oh, he would be a sick close? character in Smash. It's nice to not be so <clears throat> formal all the time. Besides, right now, King Kai Kisuke is officially out on an expedition. What'd you screw up this time? I merely said that I plan to make my family public at G4. You could at least pretend to play nice with the new conclave. It wasn't an easy choice. Unlike my wardrobe, family isn't something you can put on and take off. This year, even Leo agreed with me. Just think what your conviction will cost you in taxes. They called him Leo? <laughs> What'd you call me? <sighs> There's something I want you to see first. Red, blue, yellow. When you put all these beautiful colors together, it all becomes black. But polish that black surface enough, and it will show you your reflection. Please, stop. Hmm. I don't think that's how colors work. Also, you could have just polished like the red reflection and you would have seen yourself as well. So. <clears throat> All right. Break time. Break time. Gonna have a little break and then we will continue. All right. See you in a sec.
All right. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get into the next chapter. <clears throat> what am I looking at here? Former Sanctus Maximus Populi, Aerials. Hardly looks like the one I know. What the hell happened to her? I wish I knew. The reports say that Eno showed up and took something from her. Eno? Yeah. I'd press Ariels for more details, but I can't get anything out of her in this state. I get it now. <laughs> Listen, nobody out there has a sharper tongue than Eno does. Probably knocked her down a peg. Ariels is still down in the dumps from whatever verbal beatdown Eno dished out. That's all. <sighs> no. What? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no. At least let me... I said no. I haven't even said anything yet. I know what you're going to say. You think I'm trying to put you to work? It's what you've wanted every other time. I wish I could have a word with my past self. Though I have a few complaints for you as well. Whenever people need something from you, they come to me. And what's that? Not much of a segue, but it's the other reason I called you here. A summons for knights. A request for security at G4, huh? The United States has specifically requested you. Aren't they supposed to be throwing away their weapons? I know they know what my alias is. That's not all. They're calling for all countries involved in G4 to help with security. They've also shared confidential information in the hopes of facilitating that. Even after we told them we'd hire specialists. Since when did the summit become a battlefield? You never did keep up with the news, did you? The gear maker will be taking part in G4. And all while Eno's making the rounds. Why is Vernon so in love with this summit? Can he cancel the damn thing? He can't let talk of peace be drowned out by threats of violence. Perhaps that's his line of thinking. In any <clears> case, <throat> I have a bad feeling about this that I just can't shake. Soul bad guy. I know you're there. Stop. Before it's too late. Stop, Eno. The future is coming to attack us. It'll have to wait a few days. This time. I'll tell you later. Then you accepted it, huh? I bet that king was a champion breeder in another life. Ugh. What did she say? <laughs> I told you, I'm not some damn dog. Sounds like someone doesn't want her present. Tell me it's roses. Izeo inspection permit. Izeo is in the level. Oh, of she's implying that he's a lap dog. Okay. <clears throat> Huh? Why? We're going on vacation. In a military zone that's been abandoned for 20 years? Don't think too hard about it. Work or vacation? Say it. Huh? Not huh. Work or vacation? Work or vacation? I can't hear you. Work or vacation? Work or vacation? Louder! Work or vacation? That's more like it. Which would you choose? Vacation? Good answer. <laughs> Can work really wait? 
This one's a real mess. <laughs> Animation, you know, all dude. Mixed up in it. Sounds like she took something from Ariel's. Still haven't found it yet? I... People come here to shop. So it's hard not to notice the same guy showing up every day without even one bag in hand. You're looking for something, aren't you? Ah, uh, yeah, something like that. Name's Axel. Well, hello, Axel. So, the truth is... No, I've got superpowers. I know something bad's gonna happen soon. Here, I mean. I can feel it. So, Mr. Observant, you see anyone suspicious around here lately? <laughs> I'm kidding! <laughs> Can't even bend a spoon. Huh? <laughs> Oh, phew. You really <laughs> Sorry, had me going. <laughs> this place is my go-to date spot, you see. Did you get separated from your girlfriend? Touchy subject, man. Yeah, <clears throat> a few decades ago. Oh, so that's how it is. And plenty of people come here in search of their past. They can't find a new path for themselves, so they just gaze down the one that got cut off somewhere along the way. But really, it's not that their path went away. They just can't see it anymore. They've forgotten how to look for it. Do you think we could remember how? Sure, it's not so complicated. <laughs> this one's on the house. Just don't get so stuck on the past that you miss out on all there is to see in the present. Free apple, Thanks, dude. Mate. <clears throat> uh oh. <clears throat> this again. Scales. A well calibrated scale uses counterweights to keep its own order. Systems. The scale that doesn't move is no scale. That's not allowed. The world as we see it is shaped by mankind's emotions. Manka. Your conclusion is meaningless. Who are you? Axel. Haven't seen you since 2192. Yeah, I think I remember if we met before. Where are you from? Somewhere very deep. Something. Something's going to happen, isn't it? Get hit with the apple. This is bad, Chief. Get hit with the apple. Ah. Oh. Huh. What? In it. <laughs> In it is the English Desu. No. What is it? No. <laughs> Don't want the vacation after it all. It was maybe 30 years it's ago. It's not that. <clears throat> hey, Frederick. With the destructive force that was when we were 12. gone, and Ariels, who tried to use her, captured, who do you think currently poses the greatest threat to the world? What's this all about? Just answer. 
<laughs> huh. Axel, probably? He can stop in reverse time. Science and magic don't got shit on that. Exactly. If he wanted to, Axel could basically become a god. Why do you think he has those powers? Enough with the riddles. What's your point? What if... Eno had those same powers? She doesn't. No way in hell. How do you know? The world's still turning. But her powers are still incomplete. Incomplete? You know something, don't you? Oh. Axel? Hi, Chief. Hello, Jackie. What the fu- There's no time. Just listen. Something real bad's about to happen in that city over there. I've got no idea what it is, but I'm gonna try and stop it. Meet you there, Chief. I'm counting on you. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye, Octavian. <laughs> See you soon. <coughs> Meet you there. <clears throat> oh, wow. This place sure has changed. Back during the Crusades, it was wasteland all the way up to that mountain. Is there something special here? An old friend of mine. We're going up against the flame of corruption, you know. Can they really help? He's more or less immortal. And his weapon works on soul. I can copy it to anything else. I think that covers all the bases. Thought so. Oh, shit. Yeah, these guys definitely don't stand out. <clears throat> Is your friend a celebrity? Oh, the price he's paid makes top floor rent look like peanuts. For more than half a century, he's been stuck underground. Let's work that rust off. I don't know who you are. I have no business with you. Oh, but I do. Business with an undertaker? What an unusual woman. I am your boss now. Assuming you make it through the interview, that is.
not there. What a tepid interview. I've yet to show you what I can do. And what a mediocre show of your true power. Mm -hmm. Look at that! Rusts off. You plan to make me an accomplice to your evil deeds yet again. You could say that, I guess. <laughs> All right, that's one down. Do you remember the next step? I do, thanks to that long-ass car ride. Hmm. <laughs> Axel! Has to be, right? Mind if I take a little detour? We don't have much time. I just want to say hello. There's an acquaintance of mine around these parts. I suppose this will be the last time. But let me warn you now. Soon you'll be so bored that you'll long for our road trip. But after this is all over, you might start longing for that boredom again. Only if I have any feelings left by then. An acquaintance? Oh. I think I get it. Hmm. He's been stuck underground. Oh my god, did he get a girl out? <clears throat> Did he get everyone out? Holy shit. It's really him. He's not human. <laughs> My God. What is he? You've gotten better. You learn fast, I see. You could say I finally learned how to stand. What about you? Trying to run before you can walk? I've seen the Roman Empire fall three times now. I'm in no rush. You sure you realize then? The West fell because they lost sight of themselves. But you haven't seen my face in your textbooks, have you? Well, if you want to erase me from the future too, go ahead. If you can do anything other than eat, sleep, and stress, that is. That's not who I am anymore. I could bring her here, to this era, right now. Oh? Our very existences are the axes of time. 
If I swap my place for hers, I could bring her here. I don't know what you're on about. Wouldn't that just make you disappear? <laughs> Can't say you're wrong. But still, if I could tell her how much she means to me, even once. Problem is, I've been looking down a cut-off path this whole time. But that's changed. Good for you. If you have that much power, I suppose you could erase me. Just stop working with that freaky thing. Keep that up, and you'll never remember how to see your path. Haha! <laughs> you mistook them all! <clears throat> okay, okay. Bye! Octai didn't realize, like, how important a role Axel has in this story. <clears throat> so, Eno's been captured. Police at the scene are taking her into custody as we speak. At the scene, huh? Yeah. Something's not right. Be careful. What does this headband say, chat? <clears throat> Rock something? Rock you? What is this bullshit? Ina wouldn't let herself be captured so easily. Yeah, this isn't like her. Not at all. him to get out of the castle. It's a true anomaly. Materials may have been a shithead, but we're better off if he was trapped inside her. Now that he's free, he's that bad? Bad? No. The problem is, he's too pure. Once you know everything, good and evil cease to exist. This world isn't fit for anything so complete. And he's the target of Biken and Delilah's eye. Oh shit, Biken? Hey, don't get any funny ideas. I told you, we're just taking a look. Yeah, so I'm having a look. Just a look! Oh, damn it. Oh, good. I figured you'd notice me.
might remember you from the victory celebration. Now, this is the first time I've seen your face. Oh, someone's got sharp senses. I'm putting you back in your box. Oh. Oh shit, they know each other? Fucking chip running at the speed of a car. Has no weak spot. He literally looked up and there was no weak spot. Look away from him. Uh And he's just fucking rolling. Advent children shit right there. Nice to meet you. So you're the famous hero. No, I'm just a freelancer trying to enjoy his vacation. Keeps you alive, I wonder. That should be healing by now. What the hell are you? Happy chaos. Uh oh. That's my name. But a name is all it is. I am whatever you see or feel in your feet. Excellent. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? You know the question, but do you know the answer? What? The omelet. The omelet came first. The omelet is the reason the chicken and egg exist. I 
could be anything you like, or nothing at all. But I do exist. He didn't, he wasn't dri- The car's turning! The car is turning around corners! It's not driving! What just happened? Hell if I know, but I bet Eno might. It's a Tesla? No, that's black technology. <coughs> There's no way. What a relief that things settled down before I left for the States. I must admit, my mandatory attendance at G4 had been stressing me out. Did you read the documents <clears throat> I gave you? Eno's never been captured. Still hasn't. She's not sitting on a prison cot so much as our dignity. Well, that certainly eases my pre-summit anxiety. Thank you ever so much. Hey, I'm only warning you out of the kindness of my heart. Oh, I am keenly aware. It's why I called in some specialists for their assistance. They're investigating the security situation in America. I'm sure they've already- It's a dog. A dog? And as they say, it's best to let sleeping dogs lie. You made it. King Daryl? These two are the specialists you mentioned? Seriously? I'm sure you remember them, but allow me to reintroduce you. This is Zato One and Milia Rage. That's Director Milia Rage, Your Majesty the Third King. Director of what? We reinstituted the Post War Administration Bureau, and no one tops their former guild at informational warfare. Sure, because their methods are illegal. They're specialized. I think that's how the government puts it. They're from the largest intelligence agency in the world. It'd be a waste not to recycle them. Does Kai know about this? His response was much the same as yours. <laughs> <sighs> Don't get the wrong idea. You could be reborn as a Buddha, and I'd still hold your every sin against you. You're just lucky we don't have any way to prosecute the dead in this country. Got it? I'll keep that in mind, Second King. Hmm. Good. Now, what was it you were saying about dogs earlier? If I may have your attention. Bruh, he's fucking blind! <laughs> She's typing random shit. <laughs> Checking the security system for G4 and the architecture of the White House for any blind spots. To make a long story short, they're both immaculate. We couldn't interfere even if we wanted to. However, we can only speak to the areas we could get eyes on. While we were inspecting the White House floor plan that the United States provided us, we discovered a black box. A black box? As far as we know, not even the president is aware of it. The file's creation is attributed to a number of military industrial complexes the world over. A it appears black as though at one point, Illyria was involved in the construction of the White House. So what's in the box? It's protected by a non-linear three-way matrix authentication encryption process. Translation? We don't know what's inside. You can't open it. <clears throat> Therein lies our issue. We don't believe that we should. Why not? Milia, what sort of data do we encrypt? The kind we don't want people to see. And who loves encryption most of all? Bad people. Well, most of the time at least. That's why the United States didn't notice it, and we did. In essence, King Leo, if we open this and it's a mere jack-in-the-box, we can all laugh it off. But if it turns out to be Pandora's box, well, 
What, just looking at it will put a curse on us? Don't be so superstitious. It's the 22nd century. Archaeologists and grave robbers have a name for this kind of thing. You're calling it a treasure? Regardless, we were tasked with tightening security. We can't predict whether this black box will threaten the safety of G4 or not. Still, whether we mm. open it up and take a look is entirely up to <laughs> Just you. typing random shit. Do it. What? You can't be <coughs> serious. What? It's outdated intel anyway. The problem's not how old it is, it's where it's from. We should at least check in with the U.S. about it first. I never knew you were so by the book. But all right, I'll leave this matter in your hands. Leaving already? G4 waits for no man. No matter how hard you drag your heels on this. Oh, Daryl. No need to get snuck. Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. Done, post-war administration bureau. This is quite the treasure trove of talent. Did he just hack them from his car trunk? Oh, oh. Tiernanak. Hey, come on. This is too juicy to ignore. Oh, I knew Asuka had to have something fun in the works. Now, let's see where this story who is this guy? Uh, have I, am I supposed to have seen him before? Eno, you say? Yeah. Your former no? okay, good. detained <clears throat> by the Illyrian government. I didn't understand how Chip knew him. It's a real weight off my shoulders. I heard it, we heard his voice and we heard happy chaos. I once promised her a future. However, it seems I took too much. Jacko to named him, right? <clears throat> She By accident. to leave me. So you feel responsible? In part, yes. But... The Eno I know would never let herself be captured so easily. I imagine they're interrogating her right now. So why don't we save the anxiety-inducing conversations for after she's escaped? <laughs> <laughs> Better find one who can take a beating. What do you want to know? Oh, since when are you so generous? Oh. Not the table! Have I ever lied to you? Not the mahogany table! If you don't want to talk, you're welcome to leave. Fine then. What'd you take from Ariel's? Her pride. <clears throat> I had my tongue nice and sharp. Gave her a verbal beatdown. Must have left her down in the dumps. Don't give me that told you so look. She let herself get captured. We're not getting the truth until we bring in that chaos fellow. So you think? I bet I could get it out of her sooner. Oh my. Were you looking to make some renovations to the castle? Enough property damage, folks. This isn't a question I ask lightly. But, do you plan on becoming a god? And here I thought you brought me in just for destruction of property. Don't dodge the question. Do you intend to destroy the world? <laughs> Is the destruction of the world all you ever think about? Would it kill you to get a bit more creative? We'll work on that. Maybe that chaos guy can give us some ideas. Call him over. You want a ticket? You're gonna have to wait in line. You gotta put in the effort to get something worthwhile. This is an interrogation room. Didn't you see the sign? It says, sorry, I can cut the line whenever I want. Sounds like you'd be better off taking that sign with you to the White House then. I bet the gear maker's got a hell of a story to tell you. Excuse me? 
Are you suggesting that Gearmaker's up to something? You think he's not? Really? What was it again? The accumulation of goodwill? Well, it's not like I know much about it myself. I'm not going to be the one setting off the fireworks. Mm. Interesting. <clears throat> Eno's never needed a reason to cause trouble. This is the first time I've ever felt intent behind her actions. That's tripping us up as well. If only we knew what's motivating her. Could her past be the key? Jacko, looks like you could shine some light on this. I thought I could, but now I'm not so sure. Explain. I want coffee. <clears throat> there were originally supposed to be two Jacko units. One of them was me. My role was to make your girlfriend human again. And the other's role was to make Eno... To make her what? Asuka knew that Eno would pose a threat if she ever awakened. So he created a Jacko to prevent that. No, in order to save her. That other Jacko... ...was given a name to distinguish us. Happy Chaos. What are you saying? That the Gearmaker created Chaos? No, more importantly, is Eno trying to become a normal human? That's what I don't get. The plan was kept secret. Eno shouldn't know about it. And weirder still, even though the Gearmaker was making Happy Chaos, he never finished. Two oh, different no. parents gave their kid that name? The world really has gone to shit. This is all <laughs> new to me. You said Eno's incomplete, right? Why? Tell us everything you know. This is a good opportunity for you, too. chocolate wife's haunted dude <clears throat> the world in which we live is governed by a programmatic space that controls all of creation this space is known as the backyard one day however the backyard got sick oh yeah her nails are you on her gloves you know how they say dolls can get possessed by spirits it's like that Though in this case, the world got possessed by humanity's emotions during the war. So, the backyard cut off the source of the illness. That was the first mistake. The part that got cut off was given tremendous authority. And became all-powerful. And that's Eno. To be precise, it's Axel, too. Asuka's teacher was the first to discover Eno. He decided she was a threat and took away her power and her sense of self. So he gave her power to Axel. <clears throat> then if Eno isn't trying to become a human, but rather her original self... She'd need the other half she lost. Is that what she took from Ariel's? If it was, then why isn't she complete yet? Oh shit, Axel's the Perhaps other half. She requires something else, an energy source, or even a specific moment. No matter what she needs, there's something that can give it to her. Asuka's tome, right? Looks like I'll be taking Vernon up on his offer after all. Let us take care of Eno and Chaos. Chip seems to have vanished, but he may know something as well. This is just a hypothetical, okay? What if I could stop Eno? But if I did, Arya would never be able to wake up. 
What would you do? Is that part of your role too? Huh? What would happen to you? Never ask me that again. Not even as a joke. I will not let you erase Arya on a whim, no matter what. Not kill wife again, dude. It's, it's like, it'll be the fifth time. It's only a hypothetical. Just forget about it, okay? Huh. Think about wife. Regret. Do you need a map? Only if it can direct me away from trouble. Trouble's like your persistent ex, isn't she? You tried ending things, but she's always hitting you up. Well, that was an awfully short vacation. On the bright side, it was your longest yet. <laughs> Got me there. Say, that isolation zone, Iseo, what's it like? Empty. It's just mountains, a big old field, and a lake. But the floating island reflecting in the lake at sunset made it popular with painters. I decided a long time ago that that was where I wanted to live. Sorry. About, you know, just now. When a woman makes a face like that, a man's to blame. Asuka told me that way back when. Do I look sentimental to you? I can't cry. Or even feel. If I go to the White House, I'll see Asuka there. And I'll give him the ass kicking he deserves. Feels like that'd be a faster road to forgiveness than some drawn out heart to heart. Forgiveness? That's where people belong. So listen up, this is important. Your past is kept up in here, but the present, this very moment, is in here. This and right is now, in this necklace. Ari is there too. <clears throat> Whenever you're feeling lost, this is what you should trust. You must be aware of it by now, right? Wife still haunted. <clears throat> yeah. Why fucking haunted? Chat, next chapter break. I'm gonna make a cup of coffee, okay? Where the models are good in this? Yeah, they're really good. Understood. I'll leave an opening in our security on the day of the event. Not only can you control people's actions, but their minds and appearance as well. Anyone but you, yes. Using those fancy eyes of yours? Why do you let me live? You're the only one in the world who knows my weakness. That makes things interesting. You could be the key to real drama. That, um, well, honestly, I like you. There aren't many folks out there who hold themselves to their own standards. You baffle me. One cannot go far without a destination in mind. Without that, how can you ever know if you've arrived? And yet you see me impressing ever on this. Just like you should. I just want to go someplace that's not on the ground. The United States of America. You've only ever seen the world before the revival. It's you could say it's a work of art Holy fuck. by culture and civilization. <clears throat> but as of tomorrow, it might be called hell. So a path without morality leads to the root of evil then. Wait. Was he showing him what America used to look like? Or does America still look like that? I thought it was basically a wasteland. Good luck.
I'm that's the current America. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that was no easy task, I'll tell you that. They don't build them to this standard anymore. Well, I can't imagine they'll be necessary for a summit on world peace. They're not for the world. They're to protect you. I need you to know what we'll be packing. Erica, it's not like G4 is a war. For me and Dickinson, it is. Do you know why I grew my hair over my ears? Not a clue. Because Dickinson talks too loud. Maybe it's old age, but he's been telling me the same thing for three years. Listen, Erica. To our mission, we stay true. Whether, Whether the, the president's, president's tie is red, red or, or blue. blue. Ha. <laughs> Still saying that, is he? What kind of laugh was that? <laughs> I want to put an end to the era of might makes right. To let the people look to the future and see a newfound hope. To bring about an era where the president designs the badges of his secret service himself? Exactly. And the thing that'll save the world? Is football. Football. They say that sports. Yo, just spike that ball in her fucking all face, man. From all over the country. Right now. Throw it long. Thinking about how best to enrich the time we spend with our loved ones. Let's fucking go. Isn't that the world you dreamed of as well? Coward, dude. He just holds the ball. He doesn't throw it. Let's go greet our hero. How does it feel being back home again? Well, it's not exactly Turin in November. <laughs> what do you think of the White House then? Same shit as the Lyria Castle. Now I see why taxes are so high. The laws of this country are grand, you see. If you steal something, you gotta put it to use. <laughs> okay, be frank with me. I thought we knights were supposed to guard the conference room. Why am I the only one on standby? On the day of G4, each country will bring along their most highly accomplished knights. If our country were represented by a world-renowned hero, it might appear we're making a mockery of the others. So, what, should I nap through the thing? That's our hope. If you slept here through G4, then headed home when you woke up, that would be our ideal outcome. Vernon, you know you can be straight with me. It's Asuka who wants me here, isn't it? You knew that all along, and you still came. Yeah, well, this is between him and me. You just got caught up in it. Do you know what he's trying to do? Can I see him? <coughs> Can I see him? Why didn't you go with Frederick? Because I'm the only one who can stop Eno. That's not true. You want to learn about Eno, don't you? You're projecting yourself onto her. You can't make friends just by looking down from the top of your castle. How long do you intend to stay in here? Aria, you finally came to see me. Because you wouldn't come out. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. But we both need a future, don't we? Are you saying you called me in here? We both called out to each other. The two of us are a single Aria. But it's about time that you remember what I'm Do you ever intend to come back? Arya's mind was destroyed along with the world, back before the Crusades. We can no longer be sure of her intentions. But you're Arya, aren't you? A piece of her. Just like you. The only difference is that you have emotions. Artificial ones, sure. Is your love for Frederick artificial too? Uh. <gasps> New wife? 
hell would I even know if it was? Why don't you take off your halo? It's from before you were human, is it not? Is my ego starting to become independent? That may be so. Or perhaps... Even after she lost everything, Arya refused to throw everything away. Ja I'm just gonna say it. Jacko is a hard upgrade to Arya. In every way. Do you feel as if he's rejected you? For living only to fulfill your role? We're all searching for our place in society, aren't we? For me, it's saving the world. So what's the difference? Nothing at all. Provided that it's what you wish for. What this is such a cool scene, though. For? There is not merely one world. In fact, there's one for each and every one of us. Your world hasn't even existed for an entire year. What value does it hold for you? You don't yet have the courage to accept yourself. If you can't find your answer, then Aria will disappear. But in order to do so, you need to be prepared. To do what? Destroy the world. Yeah, I think when she says destroy the world, it's a metaphor for like absolutely anything, you know. So you'll have to settle for this. It'll do. Right, right, chat. Right. First, you're that man. <laughs> Please don't make me kill wife again. Maker, and now the devil himself. How many names does one man need? As of right now, none of them apply to me. Then who the hell called me here? Just Oscar. The boring man with a fondness for math that you know so well. <clears throat> Let G4 end peacefully. Once it does, I'll kick the shit out of you and head home. Frederick. I've never decided anything for myself before. I followed the influences around me, tried to adapt myself to them. My long list of aliases is a testament to that. I've never truly been myself. Thinking back on it now, it seems the same could be said for my becoming a scientist. In turn, I've always pushed the responsibility for my presence in this world. Onto everyone else. But that changes today. Shit, the music, dude. <clears throat> Manka, Manka, Manka. All right, it's big boy. Same token, you never met an individual who could take down the entire goddamn Union fleet in the end, now have you? I have not. If we make it to tomorrow, you'll have someone else standing next to you, Lincoln. Huh? 
Exclamation point. What's up with the scent? She's just smelling the game, chat. Just smelling that game. All right, chat. Quick break. I'm going to grab some coffee and then uh, we'll keep going, all right? I'm not even going to switch screens. I will be like two minutes. Tops. Oh, I lost the mouse. Shit. Fuck it.
I got a nice little pot of French press. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Mm. All right, let's go. You guys ready? As we've previously reported, it appears the gear maker will indeed be participating in G4. Originally centered around peace efforts, the summit was rumored to include an announcement of America's demilitarization and discussions of human gear coexistence. However, with the interference of the gear maker and the questions about security, the current plan for the conference is unknown. All we do know is that the whole world will be watching. Against expert I so so far. It's good, man. <clears throat> it's definitely starting off a little slow, right? Compared to some of the other shit we watched. Thank you for coming, everyone. Though the last minute inclusion of the gear maker has changed today's schedule somewhat. The purpose of our meeting today remains the same. A new peace for a new era. And with our allied nations and the gear maker united around one table, I firmly believe that this day will be one for the history books. Now then, allow me to introduce you to the man who will be acting as our moderator in my stead. The gear maker, Mr. Oscar R. Kreutz. Thank you. I don't intend to waste your time by introducing myself. Please turn to your pre-provided materials and... Oh. Forgive me, I couldn't help but notice that there was no mention of certain recent incidents. So I went ahead and added that information personally. I attempted to maintain objectivity as best I could. I trust you'll find it agreeable. Uh, thank you. But when did you have the time? <laughs> he lives up to his nickname. People call him the king of groundwork. They do. He's awkward. Yeah, whatever I imagined, it wasn't this. May we continue? Oh, Daryl's so cool, doing all the fucking paperwork. What a great guy. Third king. Third string. That's what they say. Eno could escape at any time. I assumed she'd vanished the moment Soul set off. Should I go get you a blanket? Only thing you'll catch in here is a cold. Asuka wanted to save you. What, did you forget? You're the one who changed me. I didn't change anything. I merely showed you the truth. Well, that explanation sure takes a lot of responsibility off your shoulders. Then what would you say I did? You showed me too much. I realized that I am the world. And because you fear me, you're trying to make me a simple human. You knew? Yeah, learned that along with a whole lot of other shit I didn't want to know. All thanks to you. I also know that you can turn me human at the cost of your own life. Want to give it a try? Maybe before G4 ends? I could, if you'd like. But there's something I have to ask you first. This world you're after, what exactly is your wish? It was around the 20th century, I guess. There was a man in the slums named Will, the son of some rich guy and his wife. I can't even remember his face, but I recall he had beautiful blonde hair, like a woman's. He was a weird one. He'd always get into fights, but he'd cry after he hit someone. Wait, Told she's talking about Axel. He lost the strength to throw a punch. He couldn't get anything out but tears. And I couldn't say why, but everyone always ended up on his side in the end. That included me. Well, 
Wait. Our relationship was a little closer than She's that. Axel's girlfriend? We swore. And neither of them know? Throwing away our old lives. Oh my lives. god, dude. What? I'd like to say we were happy. Until one day, Will suddenly disappeared. Didn't say a word to anyone. And he never came back. No cop or journalist could ever tell me why. I didn't plan on giving up on him. But I made myself a promise anyway. No matter what happened, I would never forget my memories with Will. And yet, all those memories are fuzzy. Any guesses why? Because they never happened. Not in the second version of the 20th century. I have no past, which means Shit. I have no future. <clears throat> I just want all the people except I'll tell you the first one to get it. I'm pretty good at putting plot Even points together, but I'm surprised that no one else got that. That's really obvious. A deer runs and a lion chases. Which one would you say God supports? I can only measure things in terms of loss and gain. Then mind if I ask you something? Is your world so valuable that it's okay for you to crush mine? Nothing is mine, nor yours. The world is simply the world. So if we do find ourselves in an era of everlasting peace, will there be any place for you in it? We need to go join Sol. Why? Eno let something slip during your conversation. She said, before G4 ends, it's likely that she let herself be captured so that G4 could proceed. That's when they'll make their move, I'm sure of it. But that means it's even more important that we stay here. If you were listening in, you have to know why. I do. Your hypothetical was true. You have the power to stop Eno. But are you really all right with never being able to see Soul's face again? My goal is to awaken Arya. But at my very core, my role is to protect the world. Uh, then why did you ask Eno that question? As I thought, you can't save the world as things are now. Owned. This is most puzzling. This story of yours conflicts with history as we've come to know it, and the incident reports we've seen. Indeed. According to these documents, you're more of a guardian angel than a devil. I'll give you this much. Regardless of the veracity of what you've shared with us, you do have a way with words. This is incredibly detailed and easy to understand. Which raises a question. If you merely wish to share this information with us, you easily could have written this up, signed it, Sorry, tossed chat. it in the mail, and been done with it. I believe that a document alone might have been somewhat lacking in credibility. Not to be rude, but I'm sure you realize that we can't take your words at face value either. <clears throat> so why risk a lifetime of imprisonment by showing up here? I must admit, it has us curious. That's certainly fair. I'm here because... I have a request for all of you. A request? That's right. Though having this conversation may bring us rushing to our main point of order. Is that all right with everyone? How ominous. You make it sound like we should batten down the hatches. Very well. Tell us. A suspicious man is approaching the front entrance. He seems to be accompanied by a soldier. Have you received word of this? Moving to confirm. Hold it. Who is that man? Where are you taking him? Ah. Sorry to bug you, but could you tell me the location of, uh, every guard in the White House? What did you say? <laughs> Understood. 
Oh, oh no. Octogod. That's a nice jacket you've got there. The Tome of Origin. As the name would imply, everything sprang forth from its pages. This book makes anything possible. It granted magic to mankind, crafted our future, and with it, the risk of our downfall. The tome itself, however, has no will. It provides what is asked of it, urging caution as it complies. Of course, its power is too great for mankind to wield. Under my authority as its current owner, I intend to dispose of the tome. We obviously understand the dangers the tome poses. But is such an extreme measure necessary? Could we not conceal or protect it? Perhaps, if not for those who would desire and seek it. The tome has such tremendous potential. It could help us build a better future. You would toss aside its value as well as its danger. Value. What value could it hold that we currently lack? For example, what value does this $10 bill hold? You could treat yourself to a little something. Well, to the extremely rich, it's hardly worth the paper it's printed on. On the other hand, in the country of Valupia, this one bill could feed an entire family for three months. Value changes based on where you stand. Before we seek out an uncertain future, we must attend to things in the present. Well, aren't you a romantic? Is this meant to be your atonement? No. My venture. My final venture as a scientist. And so begins how we will last. My world peace experiment. God, the fucking things they name in this game, dude. My world peace experiment. Gasp! Wait, what? <clears throat> this is unsettling. I feel more anxious the longer things continue without incident. Even now that Jacko's gone, Eno shows no signs of movement. I can't imagine our worries are baseless. I hate to admit it, but it's actually quite reassuring having you here with us. King Leo. Do you know why I decided to come back to work here? Or rather, why my friend gave his all to protect the post-war administration bureau? Milia and my subordinates... Is he a friend of Venom? Judgment. In fact, we are ready to accept it. We did not choose this path to evade your punishment. If those who have sinned do not seek forgiveness, then they're just like me, walking corpses, lesser even than the lowest criminals. I came back because they wish to remain human. Does that mean I can mercilessly boss them around? By the way, what shall we do about the treasure? Leave it be. No matter what we find, it won't be something we can discuss today. I suppose you're right. All we can do is leave things to Sol and the on-site security. Hmm? What's wrong? Well... What the hell is going on? The black box is opening. What? We've been hacked. Someone has stolen the data. I don't care how. Just put a stop to this. No. It's already done. I fear they set up the hack to display this now. For whatever reason, the perpetrator wants us to see this. He hacked you hours ago, you dumb bitch. Hackamans. Tell me this is some sick joke. He, chat, he must still be able to, like, see to an extent, right? He's not, he must, he, he can't be blind blind. Eddie must give him some kind of sight. <laughs> he 
he didn't see it coming, so he must be blind. True. <clears throat> oh my god, he got every guard? Hey, I'm not getting any contact from the White House. Group 2, report. I'm not sure you know how tense things are getting in here, but you've got everyone on edge. I'd like to hear more. In that case... Hmm? Asuka? Oh no, he took Octo's jacket! What a show. Identify yourself. Happy Kings. That voice. Who are you? Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten about little old me. I suppose that's fair, given the state I'm in now. Man, do I ever want to have a nice long chat with you. But that'll have to wait. You really gotta look someone in the eyes to communicate. No more phones. Damn it. It's not connecting. Did he truly shut down the system on his own? But how is any of this possible? Not only did he know of Hacker Chaos, he even knew my name. World peace, huh? Neither optimistic sermons nor genocidal weapons have unified us just yet, I suppose. Hey! Where are the guards? Who let them in here? The guards? You mean like the guy who gave me this jacket? Give the guy a day off. Yeah, so anyways, first I'd like them. Perhaps you took a wrong turn. The exit's behind you. What did you... Stand back! It's a weapon called a gun. When you pull the trigger, a bullet comes out. Those bullets can be. Let's try shooting that scary looking guy right there. No! There's no way I could ever. Oh, I'm quite sure you can. Just trust me. I can't! I'm gonna kill it. And if you don't shoot by the time I'm done, everything will be Please! One. I can't do this. I won't. You can't be serious. Three. Ah! Axel. Oh, you missed. <clears throat> Way to go. You made the best choice you could, given the situation. Oh, he just came to the shit all Feeling over the peace talk. Now? Hmm? All right, then. Let's all give Oscar a hand. Hey. Hmm. What? Whoa. What is this? World peace. Ready in just five minutes. Oh, no. <clears throat> He's the... I'm a dog chasing cars. Wonder what to do if I caught one. What the? Oh, I guess he's gonna make them all fire nukes at each other. That's his variation of world peace. Now, an unregistered weapon of mass destruction has been activated. A weapon of mass destruction? Y yes, sir. We're getting a signal from the level five sub basement. It's a strategic weapon. This is impossible. 
It's cleared all protocols simultaneously. We're getting external interference. It can't be. Is this the work of that hacker? What's the target? The United States. Cut the main power. Oh my God. You can't shut it down or restart it. Has he hacked every other out. nation to nuke the United madness. States? Do something about it. This is about to start another world war. Prepare the auxiliary power source. It'll be faster to do this manually. What do you plan to do? Take care of this myself. Yo, yo, I love the way he just faces into the floor. <coughs> what in the Sam Hill is going on? Albatross has been launched, and without the president's authorization, have we been hacked? But we just changed the damn launch code 30 minutes ago. in the castle. Every other weapon in Illyria has been launched. Alert! The United States has launched weapons against Illyria. The ultimate magic-based anti-gear weapon, Albatross. You guys dreamed that one up, right? I just fired them all. No way. You're insane! Do you realize what you've done? What the hell is this? If you press that button, the missiles will self-destruct. Press it or don't. That's up to you. But if nothing happens in the next five minutes, we'll be starting over from the stone page. It worked? Oh, he's so smart. Congratulations. <clears throat> you just created a world with no weapons. You just made them what destroy all of their weapons. Can't you tell? You didn't need to offer us that choice. Was all this just to show off your powers? Yep. But I'm not after your fancy watches and rings. So whatever could I want? Except the ones in the Lyria console, which they disabled in time. He's a magic wielder, with skills far beyond top class. There's no way he's... All Albatross missiles have self-destructed. Wait, chat, could this be like the guy with the faceplate that had the four on it? This is a D1 order. Enter the White House and confirm the safety of the president. Now, damn it! No? He died? Yeah, exactly. Didn't he, didn't the lady send him to the the book? Book? Other place? The one Oscar's got. Only problem is little rascals hide behind the door I can't open. And the only one who can open it is me. And you expect me to just quietly obey? Do you need me to reintroduce myself? I'll do it. I'll do it, so just stop. Oh. Mr. President! Oh, I did. Oh no, hang on. I think I just skipped a voice line. Shit. I accidentally pressed something. I was trying to rewind it, but I don't think I can. Burn. Get down. <laughs> There's my boy. <clears throat> now there's a freelancer who takes pride in his work. Good. Things are finally getting interesting. He says, make Vernon open Asker's bunker. Yeah, I know. I know that he said that because he wants the book. <coughs> You 
you were just in time. I can't thank you enough. Save it for once we're outside. Where's the exit? What? I can't leave the other representatives behind. You can't afford not to. It's all over if he gets his hands on you. But... <coughs> You realize he's not healing. You all right? I'm fine. I know it. It's taking me longer to heal. <laughs> nice work. It won't go as well for me. Find us. Can we get somewhere safe? Safe? Hmm? We're in the White House. The whole place is supposed to be safe. Shit. I don't care where we go. We just need to move. <clears throat> Chairman, we're still unable to make contact with the White House. Send me an echo team. Continue calling and send reinforcements. Just Wait, the, the entire story is done by only three people? <clears throat> the government has not yet issued a statement, but it seems as though the army is investigating under the presumption that the launch Four? was some That's sort of fucking accident. crazy. However, the possibility remains that this was some sort of demonstration against G4. Security around the White House has... Are you guys selling those uniforms for a gift shop or something? And where the hell are your guards? I saw it with my own eyes, but I still can't believe it. Chaos has the power to manipulate people's appearances and minds alike. He's brainwashed our entire security staff. There's no way I can leave everyone behind. We need to let people know what's going on in here and call for backup. I'm not running until that's done. Trust me, if it were possible, they'd be here already. <clears throat> I haven't tried contacting Khan, but none of my calls connect. It's likely that all transmissions are being jammed. Uh. What about a hotline that doesn't use magic? There's a country that continues to use forbidden machines. Yeah, cool zap. How can you contact them? We need Potemkin! This building is an antique, you see? It's in the air command post. Send in the You're big guy. Bastard, you know that? It's how I won the election, actually. Bro, I swear. I hope they send Pa in, dude. <clears throat> What's that? That was a close one. There's a guard bot up there. They attack anything that enters their line of sight. <laughs> Look at him! Hey, Okta, I'm really proud of you, buddy, man. You killed it. Echo team reporting in. We've arrived at the White House. <clears throat> That's my fucking friend right there, man. That's my it's friend. I know that guy. Soldiers are continuing to patrol Area 4. It seems they're unaware of the situation. Make contact, but use caution. Understood. Moving to make contact. This guy's wearing your jacket, dude. It's fucked up. pursuing <clears throat> the president? Wait. You can talk? Yes, I believe I just did. Wow, you could even hold the conversation. You seem quite comfortable for a man in a stranger's home. I take it this is all going to plan? <laughs> Not quite. The perfect plan never beats an improvised one. That's how I work. Clearly. Normally a plan so brazen would never work. Normally. On that note... That knight from the Chinese Federation will die if you leave him be. 
We got terrorists in the White House and just fired every WMD in the world, and yet no one's come to save you. Are these normal occurrences to you? <laughs> Wake up already. We left normal behind a long time ago. What's with the mask? We've issued an emergency order. Why have you- Open fire! Why are they why are they like AKs with crossbows attached? We seem to be witnessing a firefight on the perimeter of the White House. It's chaos down there. There is still no official word about what's going on. Or whether it's related to the weapons of mass destruction. What just happened? I was pouring coffee, what happened? <coughs> oh shit! They RPG the Yeah, there he is. Bro, he has to be a playable character. Look at his coffin. Area 51 coffin is so metal, dude. That's so metal. He knows how to FD, bro. He's a playable character, I'm telling you. <coughs> Let's keep going, man. I'm into it. <clears throat> What's going on out there? A D1 order must have been issued some time ago. From the sound of things. I would imagine Chaos has backup troops outside as well. You hear that? Something's going down outside. Stop. If that gun notices you, you're gonna be Swiss cheese. Don't move a muscle. machine wouldn't come our way. My gut. Your gut's gonna be all over this vent if you're not more logical next time. <clears throat> well, so you literally only operate based on gut. Why are you talking shit to other people? You told me I couldn't save the world. What did you mean? You don't even know what the world is yet. But I could still stop Eno. Then why did you come with me? I don't know. As I am now, I can't really do anything. Yeah. You're human. A regular human. Which is why you don't always act logically. Quite some time ago, Soul went into the castle's food storage area. Broke in, to be more precise. Since I found the door in shambles. In any case, I came running when I heard the noise. He calls it a refrigerator, 
But as with all of the castle's facilities, it's spacious to the point of absurdity. Even finding someone in there is no simple task. In time, I found Sol in front of a wall of 5,000 liters of liquor. 84 varieties, all lined up and organized. Now, I can't judge the cost of alcohol by sight alone. But I did recognize the bottle he held in his hands. It was the same kind of cheap liquor you can find in nearly any restaurant. I told him he could have at least chosen something worth the cost of repairs to the door. How do you think he responded? There's hundreds of better drinks out there, but I always end up choosing this one. Choosing? That's right. He chose it not for its quality, but because it fits his tastes. You'll understand that, eventually. Saul's a fucking king, dude. <laughs> and a day will come when you find that contradiction beautiful. People have their necessary frivolities. Necessary frivolities. He's some fucking spacious vents, bro. Crazy that they just made vents the size of like fucking multiple humans in this building that you could just go through. This is it. <clears throat> American vents bigger is bad, He's on dude. Patrol. He'll be <coughs> Oh my god! It's an unregistered number, sir, so, frankly, there's no telling who might be calling. What? Trace the call. Yes, sir. They picked up. I don't know who you are, but this is a private line used strictly for matters of national security. If you intend to keep it busy as some sort of childish prank, we reserve the right to take all necessary defensive measures. Within five seconds, we will have your location traced. 
Within 15 minutes, the tactical nuke should arrive. If you feel any responsibility whatsoever for the poor souls within three kilometers of you, then don't ever call this number again. Whoa. <laughs> How'd it go? <laughs> They're gonna drop a nuke on us. Huh? <clears throat> Did you find them? Yes, sir. But, uh... The call came from the White House. There's currently so much gunfire around the White House that it could safely be called a war zone. With no information regarding the dignitaries of each country inside, many are concerned for their safety. Ugh. <sighs> White House just contacted Zep via the emergency hotline. They'll be sharing the call with major organizations from each country. The president is unharmed! Fantastic. My apologies, bro. Glad to hear you're all right. For now, yes, but we don't have much time. I'm gonna tell you all I know, so listen carefully. The White House has been taken over by terrorists. I managed to get away, but the others are being held captive in the conference room. Someone's injured, too. If you can, please, send back up right away. Do you know who's responsible? Only his name. He calls himself Happy Chaos. Happy? He's after Asuka's tunnel. <clears throat> and to get it, he needs me to give him access to the PEOC. How many troops does he have? I can't say. They're everywhere, heavily armed. That doesn't make sense. How would they get past security? I don't want to admit it, but most likely. The security officers were brainwashed. Dickinson! Echo Team and I saw it with our own eyes. I'm sure of it. Do you understand what this means? In this complex alone, we have over 300 station officers. It's not safe to stay here. The moment this call's done, we're going to try to escape. But we will need backup immediately. Hold your horses. It's just as dangerous outside as in. Mr. President, I believe it would be wise for you to retreat to the PEOC until backup arrives. Not a chance. We can't let Happy Chaos gain access to the PEOC. You don't have to worry about me. I'm with Soul Bad Guy. Oh, is that Soul Bad Guy? Yeah. In that case, head to the parking lot from the West Wing. That should be your quickest and safest route out of there. That's where I'll pick you up. Signing off now. Send in the reinforcements. All right, hey guys. Yeah, just walk. Don't. No urgency. Don't fucking run. So, what do you plan to do after this? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Will you be reading that book in your jail cell? I can't say I've ever heard of a case in which a single criminal successfully overthrew a government. Nor has the White House ever been taken over. There's a first time for everything. I just find it a tad curious. You could have made your demands after launching the missiles. <coughs> Why didn't you? Do you have a name, O King of Illyria? Daryl. All right, Daryl. I'll indulge your question. The fucking Chinese guy's still lying there. I want to make history fun. I want to write a script for reality and enjoy some authentic drama. Haven't you had your fun already then? Look at the state you have us in. Oh, don't get me wrong. I take no joy in seeing people suffer. I want to see them struggle. Semantics. Not at all. A wax figure and a human being. At a glance, it's hard to tell the difference. But the two are entirely different, no? Let's say my goal was to create the strongest shield ever. How would I go about doing that? By creating the strongest sword. A sword justifies the existence of a shield. Humanity has always exhausted every possibility. That's the exact sort of drama I want to see. What was the motive behind your initial goal, then? Without the sword, the shield would be unnecessary. The motive? Sorry, to me, the very idea of a motive is nonsense. Because I'm a wax figure, you see. 
I really like the dialogues, dude. <clears throat> it's well written. It's like just corny enough. It's very fucking anime, dude. Yeah, the VO is great. Seems safe enough. <coughs> First, I'll take out the guys by the side entrance. I'm <laughs> sure someone will notice the noise, but I'll deal with it. Well, I've got them distracted. You make for the exit as fast as you can. Can we pull it off? Brown bears don't give birth to pandas. If you believe in that, you can believe in me. Then what will you do? I've got unfinished business with. I'm sorry. Man. I take back everything I said about the line I'm delivery sorry. and writing. Off to that one. Thank you. You've been an immense. These motherfuckers just gave me whiplash. I'm not a handshake kind of guy. This world is brimming with potential. So long as humans put in the effort, they can realize true greatness. Make it a reality. The miracles of nonfiction surpass even the most masterful works fiction writers can dream up. However, if some lady of the lake rose up out of the water and offered you any book in the world, no one would ask for a history book. That's because reality isn't very fun. Can you truly say that a reality you're scripting is non-fiction? Is a robbery happening on the other side of the world right now real to you? We all write the script of our own lives. Our reality is what's written on our own page. Nothing more. The important thing... ...is whether or not we can experience it for ourselves. I'm going to write the history books of the future. And a hundred years from now... Kids won't be falling asleep in class anymore. Huh? The sensors have picked up on a heat source within the White House. You activate the black box. Heat source? <clears throat> Don't tell me. The myth that they thought was a myth is real. Well, this is a mech. It's probably a ship. Big boy! of the White House. Suffice it to say, the safety of the president and I those inside admit, the White this House turn of events remains surprises me. During the war, there were military industrial complexes the government didn't know about all over the world. And this White House here was built to shelter a small number of the villains who ran them. A Noah's Ark of their own. Chat, my assumption is that this guy isn't Happy Chaos as it was originally intended. He just heard the name and thought it sounded cool. And I think that is that whole element is designed to throw you. I think it's someone else entirely. The 
White House has completely left Giovanna's still in the White House, by the way. She's gonna pop the fuck off. I've checked, but they seem to be using stealth magic. So we have to rely on our own eyes. Set up anything that can fly. Don't let it out of our sight. Secretary Gold. Second King. You have any information on that aircraft? Last time I checked, the White House couldn't fly. Civilian was right. Do you know something? I do. If you're going to pursue that thing, you'd better be careful. It's not exactly an airlift. Secretary, one of our planes has visual contact. It does. It's a Firefly 3 reporting in. Unable to establish communication with Apple. I'm going to attempt an in air landing. Did it. Great. Did it. No, wait. Don't get too close. Oh, shit, dude. What is that? <laughs> So this guy has tapped into an old fucking like a hundred year old <laughs> forgotten tech that turns the White House into a warship, a war airship. And the only people on board This is great, dude. This is great. A call? Do we have reception now? No. This is a magic signal intrusion. Only one person can pull this off. Right, Oscar? True. Are you all right? I wish. They got me locked down. I'm here with Bernard. Good to hear. You rescued him, I presume. Keep him safe at all costs. If the enemy truly is after the tone, we cannot afford to let him have it. There's something I gotta know. Can just about anybody read the tome? They cannot. Only me. And chaos. Just what are you? You really want to know? That man, chaos. He's my teacher. He's, He's the original. The first and strongest magic. <laughs> oh shit. The original. The original? The man who introduced the world to magic? But... The gear maker's teacher. The author of the Tome of Origin. The father of magic. And the savior who opened our minds and spearheaded mankind's revival when the world lost its science. Only one of you is telling the truth. Is it you? Or these documents? Neither. <clears throat> Back when I was the person you and Oscar knew, this and this weren't broken yet. Hmm. You sure that guy's your teacher? His appearance and demeanor have changed considerably, but his aptitude for magic is undeniable. Uh, great. So he was in the, the worst case scenario. He was in the backyard so long. He just that fucking. Kind of joke? How could things get any worse than they already are? Chaos's goal is to make Eno complete. He must have kept Eno. himself inside the universal world. I'm thinking, Chaos already has yeah. Eno's other half. There's no way. My teacher would never do such a thing. Fine. Then what do you think his next step is? <sighs> All right. I'll give it some thought. Meanwhile, please try to stay safe. This wouldn't be a bad place to fight. We don't have an escape route either. We might end up moving, depending on how things shake out. Yeah. So he's been in, he's been in the backyard so long, and he's gained so much information that he's lost his morality, his sense of like good and evil. It's just it's just like he's just become crazy. Hey. Yeah. 
I can see what looks like an aircraft up ahead. Are we on the right route? Uh oh. Let me confirm. <clears throat> this is TH 10 8. We have eyes on an unidentified aircraft. Requesting information. Over. Mm, that's not right. There are no flight plans that should be overlapping with TH 10 8's route. We're not showing anything on radar either. Over. This is the captain speaking. Respectfully, that's impossible. I can see it with my own two eyes. It's a massive aircraft. At this rate, we're at risk of impact. Requesting evasive assistance. Over. That's odd. Is there any response from the TCAS or ADS? TH-10A should be the only aircraft in your Holy vicinity. shit. Wait, does it not show up it's on the their House. radar because it's all tech? The aircraft ahead of us is the White House. Coming in. Taking evasive maneuvers. with a system that detects aircraft transponders and automatically intercepts. Stand by outside of the effective range and avoid contact until further orders. Dude, I did not see this story going this way. I'll give him that. Located it, we face a new issue. <coughs> We're unable to act until we make contact with the inside or it runs out of fuel and crashes. We need an aircraft that the White House cannot see. I believe we could be of service on that front. No, it's not a suitable craft for hostages. And I can't guarantee it will make it in time. It's better than sitting here twiddling our thumbs. Please send it right away. We'll work on what we. Please can tell me the aircraft is Fly just White Potemkin. Based on its current vector from Washington DC. Chief of Staff. Oh, it's got to be May, right? And May the. It's got to be the jellyfish pirates. Conventional cooperation. We will now proceed with our analysis of the black box. Hopefully, we'll find a clue. Here's hoping. What's the damage report? Initial reports say 48 police and soldier casualties. But that doesn't account for the numerous civilians caught up in all this. <sighs> Was this a political group? Some single ideologue? Valeria tried to warn us. I downplayed the danger because Eno was in custody. These deaths are my responsibility. Yes, they are. They are. I don't know who they are, but the enemy is in there. This is no time to beat yourself up. He didn't say she was wrong. For a long time. <laughs> I know you could do this on your own. <laughs> Only if blaming you for this made me twice as efficient. Listen, if working together for a long time builds trust, then there's no one you should trust more than yourself. Hey, that's some real shit right there, big fella. That's some real shit. All right, chat. Would you like a break or would you like to keep going? I'm da I can. I'm da forever. <clears throat> Break, please. All right, we'll do a quick one. Two minute break. Everyone just do a little pee break, get some water, all that good shit. All right. Look, chat. If one person needs a break, it's worth taking a break. Okay. We're watching this together. Okay. I'll be back in uh, two minutes. I'll take a piss too. Why not? All right. Don't run. Uh, don't run six minutes, Rock. Just run like two minutes ads. <coughs>
Ooh. All right. Chat, I just want to say it's been really fucking cool watching this with you guys. And uh, if you're down, let's, I'd love to do more content like this in the future. I never really thought about just like, you know, I don't want to be a React Andy, you know, but I've never really thought about just like chilling with chat and watching something together. And it's, uh, it's been real fun. It's been fun. So we can do more of this in the future for sure. <clears throat> it's a good time. Plus, it means I get to like consume Guilty Gear content and also give my hands a rest because they definitely needed a rest for a day. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, I'm not coughing my ass off because uh, I'm not talking that much. It's great. Good times. Our <clears throat> right, watch pipe would be sick for chill stream. This is great. <clears throat> React Andy. Uh, come on, man. I made a peanut butter sandwich. Is everybody ready? Rock, how long we got left on it? Ads are done? All right, let's do it. We got like a good few hours left, chap. Good few hours left. Like what? How, how far in are we? We got like at least three hours left, right? All right, time for our in-flight announcement. Greetings, passengers. Thank you for choosing Chaos Airlines. This is a direct flight to... Well, let's not spoil the surprise. Allow me to explain the safety equipment on this vessel. In the event of decreased visibility, the lamps on your seats will blow up. For emergency evacuation, feel free to fling yourself out of the vessel. You will be sent straight to heaven. Due to company policy, oxygen masks, life vests, and parachutes are not available. Our crew will attack passengers on sight. We ask that you run and hide if you hope to survive. In addition, their weapons are custom jobs. So, so, your immortality won't help you here. You'd be best off avoiding combat however you can. Oh, I almost forgot. Your time limit is... Well, you'll find out soon enough. All right, then. Relax and enjoy the flight. Yo, this flight fucking sucks, bro. He's toying with us. Screwing around like this. What can we do? Would we be better off staying here? Might be smarter than running around aimlessly. Oh, oh, oopsies. oopsies. One last nice. thing. Be on the lookout for our samurai. He can, he can sense, sense auras, auras, so I wouldn't recommend waiting it out. Uh-oh, this is that Nago? It can't be. Oh shit! I guess it could. So he made bullets out of your blade, huh? Your technique is lacking. You rely too heavily on your immortality. I get that a lot. Oh, this is hype. This won't do. You're too powerful. The Nightless. Little Dandy isn't the only one left, huh? With one fucking hand, dude. Assault-type recon aircraft. Chad, I tell you- Oh, here he comes! I knew they were just gonna send Potemkin. Tested yet. Our only testaments to its safety are simulations. Then this will be its first test flight. You'd better record the data. Besides, I'm the only one who can pilot it anyway, right? 
Oh shit, dude. <coughs> I love Pot's voice. Yeah, that's great. Chat, I'll tell you I bought a hitbox a couple days ago. Should be coming soon. Okay, starting tomorrow. I'm hitting the gym. Planning to get jacked by the end of your term? Yeah. I'd settle for not dragging you down right now. I want my weapon too. Let's head for the Oval Office. Let's save your thumbs? Yeah, that's the plan, man. Vernon! What the? President? M M Mr. P -P President? This guy's gonna need some more fuel. <laughs> Nano machine, son. <laughs> Mr. Secretary? Yeah? The White House is currently <coughs> moving in a straight line. At this rate, it will be directly above Neo Phoenix in 10 minutes. <clears throat> That's a major city. If, God forbid, the White House were to crash land there, what kind of damage would we be looking at? Given its size, why would you ask and this? In the of why would you ask fire, this? It may well wipe out the entire city. There's not enough time to issue an evacuation order. All we can do is pray that that's not what <clears throat> chaos wants. Dickinson, given that we cannot confirm the president's safety, we may want to start thinking about passing the office onto the VP. No need for that. We know that the president's in there. And so long as the tone stays out of the enemy's hands, we know that he's alive and kicking. That's precisely why. Pardon? In the event that chaos were to take a major city like Neo Phoenix hostage, do you think the president could make the decision to let them die? Wait, not seriously. Are you suggesting we attack the White House? He's got points. <clears throat> one possibility. What the hell's wrong with you? Do you even realize what you're- The White House is a residence of our president and government itself. Attacking it would be an assault on its staff, as well as the heroes and dignitaries of each country. I know exactly what I'm saying. That makes your suggestion all the worse. Are you planning a coup d'etat? If he gets his hands on that tone, you'll be wishing a coup was all we had to deal with. Though frankly, I'd rather have neither. However, Something this guy's just like the realest in the room. <clears throat> that would be negligence on our part. <clears throat> Erica, he's got a point. I know. <laughs> he's the Daryl of America. <clears throat> he's Daryl. Oh, bitter. What do people like about this coffee stuff? You want the rest? Now this stuff's much more my speed. I'm surprised. How did you know I was a coffee addict? You just told me. You also just told me you're not a germaphobe. What do you intend to do with the tome once you have it? Jeez. People these days are always in such a rush to get answers. Think for yourself, for a change. I don't like people who speak to an author as if they understand their work. Hmm. Well then. Right now, Eno is only half of herself. Oh, yeah. Don't worry if you don't get it. That's just how it is. In order to get her other half back, we need the book's power. The end. That's all. So that's what this is. You're trying to give Eno some sort of power. A power that will make her a greater threat than any missile. In any case, I'm going to have to give this back. I don't drink cold coffee. Yo, my man Daryl, let's fucking go! What's this? Are we fighting? That's up to you. Oh, interesting. What's on your mind, bud? Let's make a deal. 
I actually really like Daryl, dude, as a character. It's weird they only gave him, like, one name and not a surname or anything. And, like, he's just, like, got this weird fucking, like, quiff mullet and, like, hair horns. But, like, he's kind of cool. I would like you to temporarily disarm that system and release me and the other hostages in this room. And what do I get out of this? Nothing. Funny. I've never heard of a deal like that before. There's a first time for everything. Sole bad guy is aboard this ship. Which means you're going to lose. That's your fate. I don't like that word. Fate. That makes two of us. I don't believe in coincidences either. Soul has saved the world many times. So many times that it would seem statistically impossible. And yet, it's the truth. The record should be enough to convince you of that. Fate is simply the most appropriate word I could think of. It's clear he's going to come out on top yet again. So I give up my hostages and whatever info I'm possessed. It's the only way to improve your fortune. The lives of a few hostages are worth very little when weighed against the threat to the entire world. If I were to sacrifice everyone here in order to put the smallest little crack in your plan, Sol would see that crack and smash right through it. And what if I blow your head off right now? You'll lose a hostage and some ammo. That's all. Oh. <laughs> you are good. Dude, I actually like how composed he is. His balls are... He's got space hoppers for balls, man. I swear. He lives for drama. <clears throat> Actual Chad Daryl. The third king called us to confirm that the dignitaries of all countries except the United States are unharmed. He released the hostages? What is Chaos thinking? He... he really let us go. We aren't the main characters in his play. He didn't need us. This may be hard to swallow, but Chaos is only here to have fun. Regardless, your quick thinking saved us. I'm deeply grateful. I don't deserve your He's the only king that can't head through a metal door? Yeah, it's cool to I give him a little a moment like this. My own goal. <clears throat> then what did you... Chaos made a call from the ship, even though all transmissions were supposed to be restricted. Yes, and? I've been called the king of groundwork. And I can't stand coffee. Did he... Did he put a tracker on the cup? It's so lonely in here. I should have kept Daryl at least. He definitely put a track. Yeah, look at that! <clears throat> yep, still bitter. <clears throat> We've received a report from the third king. It would seem that during his escape, he jacked the enemy's transmission device. What? Is that true? I wouldn't expect any less. He's a shrewd one. Let's get our talking points together fast. Do we have an analysis of the facilities? The Pentagon and Zep are working on it as we speak. But Chat, I'm so excited for Potemkin to just fly at the White House. And the White House is great. <clears throat> They've passed through Neo Phoenix airspace without an incident and are continuing in a straight line. That's a relief. It is odd. If it were me, I would make use of everything at my disposal. If the president can run away until they're out of fuel, that wouldn't benefit chaos. But what if it would? What? Who's that? Chip! Chip? <laughs> When did you... Friend of yours? Hold on. Chip? As in president of the Eastern Chip Kingdom? Officially speaking, no. Don't sweat the small stuff. I came to vanquish a demon, but it looks like my target ran far out of my reach. So that transmission is our lifeline. <clears throat> Dickinson, I 
promise I'll get him out of here shortly. But before I do, could you spare a minute to hear him out? Shouldn't take long. Dude, I hope they make Dickerson a playable character. <clears throat> First off, I don't plan on making any deals with this chaos punk. What do you mean? Can you imagine what he's going to use the tome for? I assume he'll be using it as a weapon somehow? That's what someone with demands would do. Or a guy with a grudge. Either way, they have made a statement by him, right? So, the way I see it, no matter what it is Chaos wants, he can finish it up there. How can you be so sure? If the White House stays on this course, they'll eventually cross the border. Given your national responsibility and the whereabouts of the tone, you'll have to shoot it down first. So why hasn't this guy made any demands? You think he wants us to pull him up? I don't get it. Why would being shot down? It gets rid of the guy protecting the book. Pretty convenient solution if you can't die. Can't die. Anji? Forgive me for the sudden interruption. I'll save the introductions for another time. Hey! The truth is, I've been <clears throat> pursuing chaos for many years. In the interest of time, I'll be direct. He is that man. Rather, that man was a title created because nobody knew where the blade really lay. But it applied to more than one person. He was the original that man. Your maker and one other. He's a monster who wreaked havoc during the Crusades by possessing people in his spirit form. Tell everyone in there that they're on a time. That man. Good idea. Mm -hmm. If he knows we no longer have hostages, the president may attempt to escape. Why not detach the PEOC now? Why? What do you mean, why? I don't understand you. Your plan is nothing but detours. For one thing, why am I able to question your actions like this? You wouldn't be a good scriptwriter, you know that? I see. Oh, just one more thing. While you're here, you would make one hell of an actor. Ever see that play about the double agents? You look just like the leading man. I see. So why don't we make you a triple agent? <laughs> triple agent, man. Where's Potemkin? <laughs> I need him to pop bust of the entire White House. <clears throat> oh shit, come on, Sol. Do some cool shit. <clears throat> Any chances another route? Could we use that? You sure? He's the tallest president we've ever had. What the fuck? <clears throat> oh my god, dude. A fucking Lincoln.
Where to next? Left or right? Right, but... <laughs> Down is faster. <laughs> oh, fuck off, Kraken. <clears throat> Here we are. Are these? Huh, don't see that every day. Spiritus Type 48. A stupidly big battery with poor energy conversion efficiency. If we set all these off, we could blow chaos away. Along with the whole damn White House. I can do you one better. Here we go. <clears throat> I just removed the limiter. Now this balloon could take out the White House. If I did it for all of them, we could destroy half the globe. How, how dangerous are these things? <laughs> the more zeal they use, the more they can sell them for. Doesn't make them perform any better, though. Arms dealers are a tricky bunch. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> That's like Dave loves like that <clears throat> when he said. I had a bad habit of breaking promises with my daughter to focus on work. You wouldn't believe how mad that little girl got. <laughs> Wasn't afraid to cuss me out over it, too. Where'd she learn that kind of language, I wonder? I swear, my wife would have fainted if she lived to hear it. But last time I flaked, she sent me a letter. Good luck with work, it said. To be honest, it was a relief. I knew my little girl was just trying to be thoughtful. But even so, it felt like a weight off my shoulders. Great. That's one fight I don't need to have, I thought. But now, I wish we could have had that talk, even if it was just a fight. Why did I become president? What did I want to protect? Sometimes you tear apart your house looking for your keys, only for someone else to find them in a second. That ever happened to you? And sure, they might get annoyed or make fun of you. But no matter how things ended up, everyone involved could clearly see that you were giving everything you had. Even if your ideal future had wheels attached, all you could do would be to push or pull it. No way. Are you trying to cheer me up? <laughs> I'm sure the analogies make more sense in Japanese. <clears throat> and then they get translated and it gets a little bit weird. Gear maker? Did you make this call? No, it seems to be some sort of special open channel. Is the president there? Dickinson. Oh, thank God you're safe. How did you restore the communication lines? That's not important right now. First, I have some good news. The hostages have been safely evacuated. All thanks to the third king. Really? Wily bastard. But please, Mr. President, tell us how you're doing. Our pursuers have gotten aggressive. It's getting difficult to stay hidden. I see. All right. Please listen closely to what I'm about to say. <clears throat> the White House is currently en route to the border of old Mexico. What? Right now, the White House is essentially a flying bomb. I've got no doubt that it'll be shot down if it enters a neighboring country's airspace. Not only will we lose the symbol of our country, but we'll have no control over who ends up with the toe. We need to shoot down the White House ourselves before that happens. How much time do we have? At its current speed, about 50 minutes. He's written the hell out of this script. Knowing what we know, we can either surrender or destroy the POC after it's been shot down. Either way, chaos comes out on top. Hmm. Did you know about him being immortal, so? Yep. Spares me an explanation. Even if you run into chaos, do not engage. We're looking for a way to get you out of there, so just hang on until we find one. You really think there's a way out? 
Considering that the White House is an aircraft, there's got to be escape pods. Any idea where? The PEOC, most likely. It's nothing but locks within locks. A regular Matryoshka doll. And the codes are in a language I've never seen. Sounds like we're in for a long 50 minutes. Got any other info on chaos? We do, but... Chip? Hey, this is just my gut feeling, so don't get your hopes up. Better than nothing. Is that giant samurai guy up there too? He is, and he's a pain in the ass. I'm not sure, but I think he knows Chaos's weakness. He what? I'm not just blowing smoke here. Listen, I saw Chaos too. He defies all common sense. The guy's just in this for the thrill, and he's intentionally giving everyone a chance to kill him. So you're saying I need to get the samurai to talk? I have followed the will of my teacher for long enough. Chip's just meta gaming. My understanding of Chip is like he's kind of like a Batman. He's like hyper intelligent. I'm not sure if I can pull it off, but I'll try to take control of the aircraft. I'll buy you some time. Him and Andrew have also been chasing this guy for like years, right? They said. Oh shit, this is gonna be cool. He's got a hundred years of experience on me. Can I make up the difference? <laughs> oh, Daryl! You should have told me you were an actor. What the? They're altering our route! <laughs> Oh shit, he's trying to use magic to change the ship's route. <clears throat> Here we go. The White House is decelerating and has started to turn. Hold it off. Hopefully he can maintain control until they can land. Looks like they realized where we were heading. And if he's making a move now. So, Asuka, you finally remembered me. It's been quite a long time, teacher. <laughs> this isn't how I imagined our reunion. What in the world happened to you? Where have you been? Why are you trying to grant Eno power? <laughs> I remember teaching you to ask one. It's a digital clash chat. It's a hacker man battle. You, you know the White House is even bigger secret, don't you? What was your plan, I wonder? You taught me not to answer a question with a Chat, give Give Ask a power chat. Send him hacker mans. Humans can't stay sane in isolation. Gave me a few epiphanies though. What do you think a sane person is anyway? Someone who wouldn't try to take over the White House. Should I be proud you've learned to banter? Let me rephrase the question. Say someone is locked up in a small, pure white room with no doors or windows. For a year. No, maybe even longer. They've got food and drink. No illnesses or injuries. They can even make calls to whoever they'd like. He's just describing COVID. The speaks to them from above. <clears throat> you must not leave. No one else can, so you mustn't either. Then one day a door to the outside suddenly appears. And now my question, what would a sane person do? Well, the way I see it, this era is making a ton of these white movements. There's certainly a better solution than breaking down the walls. You've learned to talk back. You're not the only one who's changed. I've become the devil. Oh, shit. <clears throat> he 
knocked him the fuck out. <coughs> you must reconsider the risk this poses to mankind. You dare stand against humanity? Universal will. A robot of your own creation. I became human so that I might understand humanity. My mission was the realization of eternal joy for all mankind. But I made the wrong choice and failed to see my mission through. Oh, yeah. That sounds right. But were you always this nice? The poison within me left when you did. Poison, really? You are unbearably pure. Hino's other half is formed of mankind's wishes. Undiluted spirit. Both the evil that denies our existence and the justice that affirms our lives. That and writhing, unthinking malice. God, this is such a cool, like, scene. Tell me, <clears throat> have you discovered your path? There's no answer to that. Mankind is not a collective of humans, but just one single element of humanity. Hell, the definition of human is hazy at best. So you choose to agitate the situation after all. If Eno transcends the concept of time, she could become the creator of the world. We may be consumed by a paradox. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm not here to win or lose. I'm just here to be here. God, he's so cool. <clears throat> oh no! Oh no, he's popping off! This power... It can't be... You. You're Eno's other half. You're so perceptive with everything but relation. Oh shit! But why? <clears throat> if you do this, you'll disappear in the end too. Why would you go so far to help Eno? You still don't get it, do you? You still think of me and Eno as your enemies. I thought I taught you to be open-minded. Eno was born. I'm so confused. And she's been in the heads of this whole time. She can protect the human, but her feelings dried up long ago. She shows us where the humans are headed. They do them to an insatiable thirst, affirming ourselves when we lose all. When everything became possible, we lost our ability to accomplish it. She still says she wants a future. If this world holds value, I will show it to her at all costs. Ah, right now, I exist. How could he be the original and half of Eno, but Eno is like a person from 1998? Is it normal to feel earthquakes in the sky? Only when you're hungover. In this case, though, that's our course changing. Looks like chaos got the better of him. Damn it! <laughs> oh, shit. Don't move. Stayed put for too long. So, you move and Vernon takes a bullet. Don't get too close. It would seem his right arm is a weapon. I know. Stay there and slowly lift both of your arms. So. Ah. Brown bears don't give birth to pandas. Football! 
is going to save the world. Huh? huh? That's all you're gonna you're gonna say, huh? <laughs> Doesn't he have a projectile in the game though? It's kind of fucking hypocritical though. Are you alright? Well, I'm not about to tell you we're gonna be fine. Yeah, but it's gun flame. I mean, a projectile's a projectile's a projectile, okay? You see. Where the fuck has Geo been this whole time? Can we talk about that? She was on the roof of the White House. Are you fucking kidding me? Where's she been? Just napping? <sighs> Look, I don't know. The, the, him being him being half of Eno doesn't really make sense. They established that he is the original. He's the master of Asuka. And then he's like, I'm half of Eno. Like, all right. Okay, bro. That's a stretch. I think, you know, maybe they ran out of ideas at this point. Because she has memories of Axel and her being together. Oh, okay. I'm, I can, all right, okay. So he took, he took half of Ina's power and put it in himself. He's not actually her other half. He just took it, which is why he's so powerful. And why he was like the father of magic. All right, that makes way more sense. That makes way more sense. <clears throat> As the original, he stole half of Eno's powers and made it his own. Now he's fucking insane. Yeah, that makes way more sense than him just being Eno. All right, that's good. Let's go. <coughs> We're popping off now. I swear to God, if I don't see some, some fucking Geo pop-offs, some Potemkin pop-offs... Oh no, not now. Vernon, you better go. But. Ugh, move, damn it! You're wounded, I see. Do not push yourself to fight. Run. I cannot stop of my own accord. You can't talk, though. You probably can't answer, but it's worth a shot. Do you know Chaos's weakness? I do. But I cannot tell you unless you defeat me. Why does that sound like a goddamn video? <laughs> it is not like a game. It is a game to chaos at least. However, now is not the time for us to fight. I'd really like to agree with you on that one, but... What, what should we do? <gasps> Geo! Who are you? I'm a secret service agent. Can't you tell? Giovanna, you're all right. Where have you been? I've been tailing you this entire time, Mr. Pudd. This entire time? Then why didn't you show yourself soon? You know what they say. Save the best for last. What? Forgive my language, Mr. President. But I'm about to make sure this son of a bitch can never fight again. You and Sora should run. Let's fucking go, Geo. You see. Is she one of the the forbidden beasts? Wonderful. Our story has reached its climax. 
No? Are you sure? She has to be, right? Yeah, only four animators, by the way. <clears throat> we have no idea what she is. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. We've only we only know of like two, right? Of the six they mentioned or whatever. <clears throat> is this three? Yeah. Oscar, Frederick. You all right? I passed out for a bit. Where's the president? Right here. Oh, thank goodness. It's the Pentagon. I'll pick up. So, the White House has changed course again. Did the gear maker fail? Yeah, he got wrecked. <laughs> 20 minutes. You're kidding. How did Chaos predict all of this? If only we had known things would turn out this way. Huh. He knew. Huh? You're right. Chaos knew how this would all play out. But if he did... Then why can't he enter the PEOC? The door to the PEOC won't open without the President's biometric authentication. That's why. Sure. But why can't he hack it, though? We're talking about the guy who got through the security on the WMDs here. Fair point. It's got a mechanism that not even the greatest magic wielder in history can open. And what's that? The PEOC is controlled by old era technology. Am I wrong? Yeah, his arm's old tech. <clears throat> I suppose this is no time to be keeping secrets. It's true. Thought so. Gabriel, are you listening? Yes. Those Matryoshka codes. They aren't an unknown language. We just can't translate documents that old. Try converting the notes back into letters and numbers. Should be readable enough for anyone from Zach. All right. Give me a moment. This is machine code. It's Rose. What's it say? We don't have it all converted yet, but... There we are. The PEOC is the escape pod. There's even a manual for activating it. <clears throat> God, Gary was so dope. <clears throat> True. Since we've lost control of the craft, we have to activate it directly through a bypass. Be at the control tower, visible from the east gate, in seven minutes. How you get there is up to you. All right, let's see if the gods are smiling on us. Hope you've said your prayers. Are we really doing this? What? There's somewhere else you'd rather go? Yeah, back to yesterday, please. Yo, the president's fucking arm is sick, dude. So, the control tower is back there. Once we're out of the garden, we won't have the air pressure shield to protect us. We're going to have to calculate the wind resistance. Hmm? Calculate, he says. You're not just trusting your gut? It's all I've been able to count on today. I knew it. Hey, hey! hey! Holy fuck, dude. Pure gorilla. Vernon? I'm alive.
is all that I am currently capable of. Victory is yours. Hey, let's fucking go. <clears throat> we got it running. How are things looking, Gear Maker? It's been activated. What's next? Please head to the PEOC and evacuate with the Gear Maker. Our only option is to force our way through. Once it's within five clicks of the border, we will shoot down the White House, whether you're evacuated or not. We may be able to buy you some time if our aircraft makes it to you. Yeah, let's go, Pot. <clears throat> Make haste. You ready for round two? He's gone, bro. So ends the circus. <laughs> oh shit. He grabbed onto Pot's fucking plane. Does he just steer it with his mind? <coughs> He's actually slowing the ship down? He's grappling the White House. He's actually grappling the White House. <coughs> What's this? Please tell me we're gonna be fine. I'll see if I got any of those left in stock. Oh shit. If you hadn't shown mercy, you might have won. What? He played dirty, dude! Motherfucker. Whoever's listening, we need more time. Not even a please. Huh? Secretary Dickinson. I'm sorry, but we can't wait any longer. I understand the risk you face. We have little time, but hear me out. Today, your albatross weapons were detonated. But our own weapons avoided that little mishap. So if you shoot down the White House, we will launch an attack on the United States. What? What a goddamn... No, there's no way you'd risk it. Maybe. But perhaps the same could be said for you. Hmm. 
I'm not saying it's the smartest move we'll ever make, but I'm still willing to make it. So let's hear it. What happens next? Mm -hmm. Do you know? I don't. But if all we can do is pray... Gorillas stick together, dude. Then I'm placing my bets on Sol. <laughs> that is an absolute gorilla negotiation as well, yeah. You shoot ship, I shoot you. I'm a realist. I don't Me by other gorilla time. Ape together strong. I can't say this much. Not one of us has ever performed a miracle that changed the world. But Soul Bad Guy has. So, your wounds have healed. <laughs> All thanks to you. Then this is your last chance. Chance? Fortunately, I am Vernon, if you get a shot at an escape, take it. Can you beat him? He's a monster. Mm. So am I. <clears throat> I've been running around so much, I almost forgot. I'm a monster too. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be so reactive. Go gone. Naruyuki, stop talking while the fight's happening. Make sure to protect your leader. He managed to let go of his sword. He fought the control. That's pretty pog. Did you beat him? Yeah, but... I didn't learn a thing about Chaos's weakness. That doesn't matter now. Let's move. Wait, he literally showed you his weakness, bro. Think! He showed you! Think! They just left Geo on the floor, by the way. Master and disciple doesn't make a terrible enemy. It's true. I 
would have liked to have spent more time together. But that will have to wait. What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, he actually got Uno Reverso. That's one sturdy ass door. Where can I get one? It can't be that easy, surely. We've just received word from the White House. It would seem that the PEOC launched with chaos inside. It did? And the president? Safe, sir. Everyone is. We've regained control of the White House! Man, that guy sounds an awful lot like Leo Whitefang. Just can't put my finger on it. <laughs> Looks like they're still breathing. Will their faces return to normal? Hey, I'm just glad they weren't set to explode once the mind control ended. <laughs> I've had about enough of Chaos's traps. Mr. President, do you have a set destination in mind? Not at all. It doesn't matter to me how long it takes to get there, so long as I can get my feet back on solid ground. Something wrong. This craft doesn't have enough power to take off again. I'd ask you all to take rescue crafts away from here. Asuka. Can you not touch back down? Or do you not want to? Please believe me. I didn't want to do things this way. But you will have to suffice as my witness. What the... Witness? <clears throat> Mr. President, Tir Nanog was not designed for air travel. The true purpose of this craft was interplanetary transportation. Interplanetary? Correct. When things were looking bleak during the Crusades, some senior officials planned to abandon our planet. So that's what Project Tirdanag was all about. The space colony it was intended to dock at is already complete. It has enough supplies to take care of 400 people for 120 years. I... I intend to take the tome there. But, but why? No one there will seek me or desire the tome. I can discard it at last. Then we can just stuff the tome in a spacesuit. There's no need for you to go with it. I appreciate your kindness. However, Forgotten my other goal. Getting rid of soul. Whoa. But hold on, Asuka. That was just a hypothetical, wasn't it? You promised you'd give me a proper explanation. As with the tome, our world has no need for his power. Bullshit. Tell me, who is soul gonna hurt? Himself. Huh? Where the 
if I said it was none of your damn business? I may craft a persuasive dissertation, but I've always had trouble choosing words others could understand. So I took a lesson from you and chose to fight. Let's settle things between us right now. Sure. Have it your way. I was all primed to fight a magic wielder today anyway. You're right. I've always wanted things my way. Even when I planted this divine seed in you. But now, I'll correct that mistake. If you don't want that, then don't hesitate. Shake off my hand. And kill me. Can't just unbad guy my soul like that, dude. Unconscious. <clears throat> it might be a trap. Approach with caution. Dragon uninstall. <laughs> oh man, they opened it. They opened it. You satisfied? Saul, are you alright? You tell me. It can't be. Are you human? Not entirely, I don't think. My greatest mistake was robbing Frederick and Arya of the time they could have spent together. However, now no one will rely on you as a weapon, nor as a hero. I should have done this a hundred years ago. Uh. Mr. President, sole bad guy, the hero, has perished. This is Frederick Bulsara, an ordinary man. And you wanted the whole world to acknowledge that? Shit. <laughs> Nobody told me there'd be an encore performance. You really do need to get better at expressing yourself. Gear make... No. Asuka, let me ask you something. Is this your accumulation of goodwill? Where did you hear that phrase? From Eno. No, that's something else altogether. Promise you won't laugh? Only if it's funnier than your space vacation idea. <laughs> Radio. I wanted a radio show. Sorry, what? People want the most beautiful fruit, so we spend our lives looking above us. We fail to notice that our baskets are full, and that fruit is falling to the ground and bruising. The people who have realized this have tried finding ways to help. Both the Conclave and Ariels were searching for something. And in their search, they created opposition and conflict. We often misunderstand each other's feelings. We don't always agree, but we can't reject the other's entirety. What we lack is accurate that knowledge. That man podcast. Accurate knowledge? 68,502,011 children, all under 14 years old, are being used for labor at this very moment. Orphans, slums, massacres, diseases, child soldiers, war. In the places we can see from up here in the sky, and across the borders we can only see on the map, every day people continue to be born. The Tome teaches about the nature of our world. What we need is not a call to action, but numbers. Just numbers, free from ideology, profit, and value. Clear numbers. The Tome grants the right to knowledge, and I simply observe those numbers. In the hopes that one day, I can call them the accumulation of goodwill. Is that what you meant by creating?
creating world peace. Doesn't exactly sound like it's gonna top the charts. Feel, you're not hurt, are you? What the Only fuck do you think? <coughs> Kai. Leo. I just got footage from the scene. They've captured Chaos. Good. What a relief. Are the surveillance cameras back up? Some of them. Why? I'd appreciate it if you could tell me where my boss is napping. I can't tell who's who. Will they ever recover from all this? I certainly hope so. Because I really don't want to hold on to that stupid badge as a memento. <laughs> huh? What's wrong? Uh, is that badge you mentioned a cartoony star, by any chance? How did you guess? Uh, well, just hold on a moment. Hey, rewind that real quick. Right away, sir. There. What about it? Was it the security chief's jacket he stole? No, it was Udo's. Chaos is able to freely manipulate people's appearances. The newbie's badges don't look nearly oh, that shit. dumb. Chaos is still inside the White House. Oh no. Hang on. Chaos is still in the White House and he just took Soul's I immortality. They nerfed Sol, and he's there. He's right there. Oh, fuck. Didn't nerf him in the fucking multiplayer, though. Huh? Maybe you should have thought about some consistency here. That's just how humans are. No! It can't be! As for me, though, I'm more than 100% pure, undiluted seer. And I'm not here for my own sake. I'm here... Because something wouldn't let the cup fill up with water. Chaos! <laughs> Axel, Axel, we need you right now, bro. Yes. Fine, you can have it. What? When did you notice? I wrote this thing, remember? I noticed right away. Oh shit, that's a fake. Real tone is inside him. Is right here. I'm here. 
just in time for the grand finale. And everybody on this planet can play a part in our special show. Looks like I'm an even shittier creature than I was before. Want me to sing you happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happy about it. God's all done with creation now. <sighs> you lost your powers? Yeah, a couple pounds, too. Too bad. I was looking forward to one final showdown. <sighs> Guess it doesn't really matter anymore. Hang on. Where's that damn smirk of yours? You finally became a god. Shouldn't you be thrilled? What does this view look like to you? What's something you don't like? Milk. Then milk. Even if I were to knock you down from here, you wouldn't die. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it looks like a one. It's all zeros and ones. That's just what it is. There used to be more zeros. That balance would create twos and threes. A beautiful mixture of discord and harmony. But now, my world consists of only ones. And you plan to make everything zeros? That would be pointless. A butterfly can't turn back into a caterpillar. You don't need Asuka, do you? Couldn't hurt to hold on to the tome. It ain't a gossip rag for gods. If you give him back, I'll let you go. Huh. Well, aren't you a stud? Run, Frederick. You don't stand a chance against her. Yeah, I wouldn't bet on that. Shit. This is a trick. It isn't right. If the moon were that close, our planet would be thrown into turmoil. Nice work, boy genius. You're right. This is a little trick. But the moon really is right there. Cities aren't being crushed by waves. The ocean isn't boiling, and the moon didn't break up in the Earth's atmosphere. Because I'm preventing it. You see, kill me and the trick all falls apart. 
so we can't attack you. <laughs> Kinda bullshit, huh? In my world, there's no more winning or losing. Jacko, don't do it! I don't want to kill wife again, man. What is Eno pleading? She's so hot. I haven't the slightest idea. But I know we cannot let her see it through. I'm not sure anywhere could be considered safe anymore. But you should get away from here immediately. You're gonna fight that thing? I don't have the courage to throw aside my hope. So I'd ask that you please stand back. I'm the only one who can stop Eno now. That's why I'm asking. Thanks to you, I started to understand. Like Eno said, I think I felt stifled in a world with no place for me. I may not fully feel them, but I do have emotions. But that's exactly why I never wanted anyone to notice. What do you mean? I'm in love with Frederick. And that isn't the future he wants. So I thought I'd do what you recommended and get one last look at his face. I won't let it be the last. Eno has already become all powerful. Only all powerful? Let's fucking go, Kai. Time to kill God. Is she just making everyone cry? Imagine the vanity, dude. Fuck is Axel? Boy, get my man Faust in there right now, bro. He will fuck her up. Double quarter circle forward square. He'll throw like five bombs at once.
You can still look at me with that fire in your eyes. I can respect that. There's no more need to put on airs. What are you trying to start? Nothing at all. I merely want to observe. I've given them opportunity, that's all. Opportunity? Once this is over, all of mankind will gain the same power I have. They will see everything I can. A world of freedom and equality. A world without hope. However, any living organism, when faced with the risk of extinction, gains an opportunity for evolution. Why don't they fucking say? I want to know the future that awaits us. All right, that's not very funny. After England actually drew with Scotland last night, so a lot of the uh, football fans are feeling pretty sore about that. You would know that if you were truly Axel, but you're not. I see. Magic is the power to bend the rules of nature. If all of mankind were to have unfettered access to power on the scale of Enos, it would kill this world and birth a new universe. And I'll repeat the process over and over, as many times as it takes until I've found my answer. Now I feel silly for getting so anxious. That does indeed sound like the work of a god. However... Do you truly know yourself well enough to look for weaknesses of all mankind? The only things that could stop me now are the flame of corruption or the scales of Juno. And they are long gone. <laughs> What? Not quite. Slight though it may be, it's right here. Dragon install. Oh shit. It's because of Sin's eye. Kai, you were doing so well, bro. Oh, fuck, dude. You got perfected in the second round. <coughs> Asuka, just give the corruption of Adam back to Sol so he can beat this bitch. Guess it's time for me to go. Oh no, Jacko, don't be like this, man. Jacko, don't go. Wife, please, not again. She even did a sexy walk as she left, dude. I got a favor to ask. I'll give you credit for one thing. You sent a little chill down my spine there. Hmm? Hey, not being funny, but where's After actual Dizzy? Done, is this really what you wanted? Ah, this is my man! Octa! Now you want to stand <coughs> in my way? No, I'm not here for a fight. Then why are you here? Cross, violent, a loner who isn't afraid of anything. You mean me? Actually, I was talking about Soul. But yeah, you two are really similar. Just with one key difference. Unlike Soul, you don't know what you want. <laughs> you once told me that people have to find their own right to keep living. I think they have to find their happiness too. We pick up a memory to take with us as we go. We carve the knowledge into ourselves that we were happy before, even if only once. So that we can remember it at the end of our lives. I'd like to see if you can remember yours. If I did, would it make you smile? 
Seeing the look in your eyes now. It makes me miss your sadistic look of joy when you'd say, you asked for this. Well, you and I have both been building our fictional worlds. Today, one of them comes to a close. It's going to be yours, Eno. Jacko? <laughs> so the band's all here. Hmm. So it was a question of loss and gain after all. Which should disappear? The world or me? What? It can't be. You! Hold on, Jackie. What do you mean, disappear? I can stop Eno at the cost of my own existence. That's my role. It's only natural. But thank you for your concern. How can that be natural? There's no gain in that. Does my lack of emotions deny me the right to save the world? Isn't that what you were trying to do? Uh, uh. What the fuck? <clears throat> Wife gone again, dude. Even if I'm just artificial, disappearing is scary, huh? Just give up after a one sided breakup, huh? Save wife, save you wife. Save the world. Screw the world. That's no good reason for you to disappear on me. No, no good reason. My man said, Fuck the whole world, you're coming with me. When you showed up as a part of Aria, that no matter who you really are, no matter what happens, I would always stay by your side. You decided it. You're going to drag all of humanity down with your own selfish choice? This is literally what Kai said. We all have our selfish frailties. The universe, the future. You didn't listen, bitch. Determine the value of humanity. <laughs> Isn't it selfish of mankind to survive in the first place? You're so strong. You really are. The only things I can accept are my feelings for you. That's, That's why, why it's, it's not, not a contradiction for me to save the world. Even, Even if it's, it's one I only just discovered. discovered. But, but you, you want to save, save Arya. Arya. 
Don't you? There's... I... I can't do it. Arya isn't coming back. But there's nothing else I can do. Nowhere else I belong. Have I ever called you... Arya? If Arya doesn't come back, that's her choice. But, Jacko, Arya wanted you to stay here. Like that hat of hers. So, even if it means the end of the world, I'm not gonna let you go. Even if it means the end of the world? That's a man right there. Now, do you finally see? <clears throat> this is the world we're supposed to save. If I... If I <laughs> that a man, free wife, can be by his side, beat the fuck out of Ina. The world ends. Now she gets it. That's what Arya said. Get that seed back in him. Put it in the point. It's not a goddamn maybe. You really pissed me the hell off. Answer me. What can you do now with your seed gone? Why the hell haven't you given up? <laughs> I got what I want. Now I just gotta put up the best fight I can. <sighs> Who's this? He's got the bombs. Looks like the world's still turning. Mr. President. That's going to power his weapon. I know those eyes of yours. Eyes? Yeah. They're the eyes of justice. What people have always fought. And the winners always got their own. Well, but for some reason. Now that I'm looking into those same eyes, I think we chose the wrong way to fight. Our trump card. Is that fool over there? No matter what you bring, I'm not going. 100% chance. Though I guess you can't even comprehend what 100% even means to me now. It doesn't mean shit to anyone but me. <laughs> just some tiny moment in your own world. The outrage. As long as the energy from the zeal pods last, it'll output an infinite amount of power. You have a shitty memory, don't you? That garbage doesn't work on me. <laughs> I see. Soul intentionally took a critical hit. Eno is a magic wielder. A logical magic wielder will continue to use the same method so long as it works. Was this how we plan to beat the gear maker? Anime of you, President. Thank you. Frederick Balsara, if you can prove that to me, I'll strike you. 
Eno, please. He's in a relationship. We just established that. Eno has regenerative capabilities. No shit. If I can't hit her weak point, she'll be right. It'll all be for nothing. Like I said, I'll put up the best fight I can. That's all I ask. And I'll do the same. He's still the he's still the guitar. <coughs> Four animators, by the way. Where is it? Shit. You're never going to get there, no matter how long. Gorilla math, dude. <laughs> <laughs> did you make it? Because it never bored me. Huh. I don't really care about utility or even the greater good. Like you said, I'm a goddamn idiot. <laughs> so, random things you value will pile up like a stack of unread books. Even if one of the books in the stack could impact you enough to change your life. You're gonna have a whole new stack before you ever get around to it. <laughs> That's why. Bro, these analogies are fucking whiplash, man. Some, <laughs> some of them are fucking <laughs> wild. Out there otherwise. <laughs> Maybe you had something like that too. <laughs> oh, Axel, you were right all along. I had everything. Both good and bad. But I can't remember any of it now. Even though so much must have happened. Did I somehow just forget? Wait! Wait with... Drinking tea! Fuck's sake. 
at the beautiful sea together, right? I was scared as hell of you, but you heard me out anyway. You... you made me so happy. Please, remember something. Anything. Why are you crying? I can't get anything out but tears. <sighs> Beautiful blonde hair. Like a woman's. We're in overtime, so it's too late. <clears throat> we technically still killed wife. It was someone else's wife, so it's kind of it's rough. It's rough life out here. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> Fast food, really? Hmm. When they rebuild the White House, we'll be far away from this place. It's a big fucking bug inside of his head. I look up at the sky every day. But from here, it looks completely different. <clears throat> Chad, do you think they'll put Should the seed back in Sol because it's the only way to save him? You didn't manage to headhunt him then? We did a lot of sightseeing together, but fools always like to follow their own maps. Smile. <laughs> we finished compiling the data from each country, as well as drafting up non-disclosure agreements. After the funeral this evening, this incident should be finally settled. A 21 gun salute to send our hero off to heaven. <laughs> oh, okay. I hope that today we can all look up at the same sky. I imagine the other countries will be scratching their heads over these incident reports. In the end, what was the future Eno wanted? You should know. Or rather, we both should. Hmm? The one thing that can offer us fulfillment. She was never able to find her own. What she lacked wasn't a past, nor a future. But rather a present. A past and a future, their hope and their foundations. None of that means anything without the present. People only ever look at themselves. Yet they can never fully know themselves. It's the hard truth. And I know it all too well. Okay. Hello? Are you open? Soul guy? God damn it. Your eyes work? Huh. Couldn't you see the business hours? Is this rundown place really jazz? <laughs> There's a bookstore in the town 40 kilometers from here. Go find a book to teach you some damn manners. Now I get why this place is so rundown. Ugh. It sounds like the words of someone with no taste. You steal that line from one of your precious books? Can't imagine that one got a second printing. <laughs> what size? 201Z. In-wheel type with five pins. 
201Z? Where'd you come from? How'd you even get here without a jacket? Not a fashionista, huh? It'd be a waste to cover up this shirt with a jacket. <laughs> this place is 28 hours away from the city by car, see? It takes 28 hours for the latest trend to get here. Here. No freaking way. You've really got one. Mm -hmm. That's a Spiritos Type 48, right? What about it? I knew it. I knew you'd have one. Hey, you don't need your 201Z? Have you heard the rumors? They don't make the Spiritos anymore. You can't get them anywhere. They say it's because the American government gathered them all. Then, out of love and anti-war sentiment, the president buried them all in a grave of a certain hero. After a while, one young man came to that grave. He refused to accept his hero's death. So, even knowing how crazy it was, he dug that grave up and what is that this kid? <clears throat> was an empty coffin. No body. No spirit toss. I was a super fan, so I dug up the corpse of my hero, and guess what? He wasn't dead. So he now, great. I finally found you. It's me, the psychopath stalker, your biggest uh, fan. I think you'd tell me you never heard of him. <laughs> I'm gonna head home for today. For today, you planning on coming back? Well, I've got to go buy that book on manners. A country bumpkin like you may not realize, but it takes a lot of passion for a city boy to come all the way out here with no jacket. I'm not selling you the spirit toss, got it? I know. You're going to use it for what you've got back there, yeah? The hell are you after? I don't really know. I guess I want to be friends. <laughs> 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. What? Those are our business hours. <laughs> it's fucking absolutely shredded. <clears throat> Wife. Oh, Axel, man, he's got a guitar. I'm giving you my unfair way of life. You asked for this. Uh, I don't get it, but that's what she told me to say. Are you really Axel? What is peace? Some people know. Everyone wants an answer to that question. Why? It's simple. Because no one's ever seen it before. Even if there's no misery before our eyes, we know that it's out there somewhere. There are hills and valleys. But that doesn't mean we <laughs> you get a wife them. and you get a wife. <laughs> Mechanisms that simply prevent inequality take sin away from mankind. Where is biking? We belong neither in the wilderness nor shut in buildings. We belong somewhere peaceful. 
Peace comes to be when people forgive each other's sins. When all sin vanishes from the world, that's when peace will vanish too. And the gears that give mankind meaning will stop turning. That's Raven. Is peace just a dream then? It's not that simple. Just as every human face is different, so too are the worlds we all dream of. Some people are just incompatible. But if there's one thing I know for sure, there's no need to aim for a perfect world. As long as you keep trying, that world will eventually come to you. What matters is that before that happens, you know the meaning of your life. He said I've shot in front of a fucking old rocket. I will now begin my first radio broadcast. This is all new to me, so I'm afraid I may not be very eloquent. Yo hair touching me. So did Asuka go to space? Seems like it. Yeah, there's Okta, dude. If Asuka went to space, then Sol's just got the rocket sitting in his backyard in case he needs to go visit Asuka. That was really fun, man. Soul needs batteries for Rocket. He has them. <clears throat> Your arms holding That's great. Me. What have you lost? It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Your voice constantly. <coughs> There's a post credit scene. Cool. All right, we'll just wait. This was great. It was real fun. Yeah, it's 6 a.m. <laughs> Perfect time to stop. Time to play the game? We'll play tomorrow. We'll play the game tomorrow. So Dizzy can save the day? Well, not really, because Dizzy's not really a fighter, right? This is the whole, this is the whole thing. Shouts to Ram, May, and Faust for their roles in the story, dude. Yep. So, when they introduce DLC, is there another chunk of story? Or is it like one story per game, that's it, there's no DLC? Or is there DLC story? There is DLC story? Is it like... Is it like a side story that runs along parallel, or does it actually continue the story from where it ended? We don't know yet. Because they mentioned Biken in the story, right? Sign Rev 1 and Rev 2 were all chunks of Exod. That's true, yeah. That's cool, man. They shot a lot of old characters in the community DLC. Yeah, because they're like fully modeled, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be in those scenes. Are there any characters you want to try and play now? Who knows, man. Yeah, Faust has got the side story with the Japanese disease thing, right? I guess. <coughs> and Biken is Japanese, so they probably tie in together. And so is May. So I guess all those three will be in a story together, maybe.
Oh. It's a good, it's a good tune too. Man, this is great. I love this. That was like 20 years of lore we just fucking binged in a stream. It definitely helps you form more of an attachment to the game and the characters. Just going through all this shit. Like, I think Ram is way cooler now. I think Sol is way cooler. I think all the characters are cooler than I've thought before. The only one that stayed that, that didn't get any cooler was probably Potemkin. I already thought he was really cool and he didn't really do that much. But he did push the ship once with his hands. Except May, yeah, fuck May. I hate May. May's a shit. I'm here. Oh shit. Oh shit, I love that. So the original is still alive. They, yeah, they did. They kind of, they deliberately kind of left him out of the ending, and they make you forget about him. I, I'd forgotten about him in that until we saw that scene, because everything else is like so intense. <clears throat> cool. Nine chapters, dude. Well, that's going to be it from this stream. Check the M's. Wow, that looks really good, dude. Oh my god. So, uh, Dimmy animated the new intro screen, if you guys want to see it real quick. It looks really fucking cool. Finger twitch, yeah. That's really, really cool, dude. You see me in the background chat? Can you see me in the alleyway? trash yeah let's focus on chat I did not even 
there was not even any artistic expression lent to this. Manda did this all on her own. Oh my god, there's so much cool stuff to show you guys. This is the new ending screen. Last but not least, uh, one of our resident super ice, Manda, who actually drew the intro outro, <laughs> drew, uh, drew Eno while we were doing the story mode. There you go. Looks fucking cool. Well, chat, thank you very much for uh, hanging out with me for this. It was really cool. Um, we've got D&D &D tomorrow, but after D&D, &D, I'm, I'm going to be hopping back into Guilty Gear. I'm excited to play again. It was really fun. Thank you very Can anyone turn in fan art? Of course. Yeah, we have, a, we have a, literally a fan art channel in the Discord. I love fan art, man. If you ever want to do, do any fan art, just slap it in there, dude. I'll show off on stream. It's a good time. Yeah, it's it's probably hella late. We, this was ten hours, man. Ten hours of of big law. Uh, guys, let's get a round of applause for all the homies in the credits. Uh, thank you very much for the subs, resubs, bits, gifts, all that good shit. Uh, sorry that I didn't read any out today. I didn't want. I'm hoping this this vod will be very rewatchable. I didn't want to like you know cover it in fucking thank yous, but I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 claps in the chat for all the all the generosity. Appreciate you guys. Fuck is awesome. Thanks for the streams. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for joining me. And no, everyone was cool. Nobody spoiled nothing. It was great. I'm a dip. <coughs> I'm out of here. I'm gonna get some sleep. Uh, you get, you guys get sleep too. Well, uh, I'll see you back here in what's the time? I'll see you back here in like 12 hours. We'll play a little bit of Guilty Gear, then we'll do D&D, &D, and then we'll play some more afterwards. Oh, we're gonna hit floor 11, man. All right, I'm on floor 10 right now. We're hitting floor 11. I swear, I swear to God. It's time to ascend. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a have a lovely uh, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Have a good night. <laughs>